Today's date is March the 27th, 2012. Uh, we are at here in Sanford, Florida. What's the address here? Do you know? Rock top of your head? That's fine. Here in Sanford, Florida. Speaking is Special Agent Supervisor David Lee with the Florida Department of Law Enforcement. Also present in the room is Special Agent Supervisor Tony Rodriguez with the Florida Department of Law Enforcement. And is that correct, sir? You're right. I'm right. Um, uh, as you can see, the conversation we're having is being tape recorded. Okay. Can I need you to raise your right hand, please? You saw the swear or firm statement you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Okay. Um, what is your, uh, for the record, state and spell your full name? Okay. And what is your current uh, title? Yes, yeah. I'm sorry. Okay. How long have you been employed as a? Eight years. Eight years now? Mm -hmm. On February 26, 2012, a little after 1700, uh, 1900 hours, 7 o'clock, 7 p.m., um, you responded to a call involving a victim that was shot. Do you recall that incident? Yes, I do. Okay. From the, I guess, the time you received a call until you departed the scene, can you kind of give me a narrative of what occurred, what, your, what you did? All right. Um, well, we were already on the road when the call came in. We were coming back from Orlando. We saw the cops responding. You said big was happening because there was a bunch of cops. And not even a minute later, we got the call for the shooting. So we, we were on scene pretty quick, within three, four minutes probably. Uh, grabbed some equipment, and the uh, officer was waving us down, said that you know, he had one victim that was shot. And I uh, said, OK. So uh, we had got a call that was two people initially, but he said there was just one that was shot. So I said, OK. <clears throat> so we made our way behind the apartment where we parked and uh, saw the victim laying on the ground, kind of in the grass, off the sidewalk. And uh, police were there, they were already doing CPR, they were doing mouth, not really mouth, 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 the mask. So told them to stop, put them on the heart monitor, the heart monitor showed no activity, and just called it right there. Okay. You're responsible for making that, that call uh -huh. based on what you read on the heart monitor? Yes. And, and uh, what do you see on the heart monitor that made you decide that, okay, there's nothing we can do? Uh, it's basically flatline. Flatline? Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, once you made the call, what occurred then? Uh, as soon as we made the call, um, we just basically took him off the monitor and just left him the way he was. No one else touched him. We just kind of packed up everything and just made our way out of the scene. Okay, who is assisting you with, uh, the, the person we're talking about now would be uh, been subsequently identified as Trayvon Martin. Yes. Okay. Uh, who assisted you with your treatment or attempted treatment of Mr. Martin? Um, okay. But, like I said, we really didn't do really much hands-on at all. It was basically a stop CPR, put them on the on car monitor. What did, how, how do you do that? Can I explain that to you? Uh, well, Shirt is up because they're already doing CPR, so they have what they call um, four leads. It goes like left arm, right arm, left leg, right leg, uh -huh. basically. And then um, that would pick up his rhythm on the monitor. If he had some kind of rhythm, it would show a rhythm on the monitor. Okay, and he didn't show anything? He had a few little beats here and there, but it's basically flat line. Okay, so uh, enough where your training told you that it was. Yeah. Nothing y'all could do at that point in time. Yeah. Okay, once you withdrew from that scene, did you treat the other gentleman there, Mr. Zimmerman? Yes, I did. Okay. How did, what kind of treatment did you render him? Um, well, we made our way up to the police car. He was sitting in the police car. He was in handcuffs. Um, I asked the officer if he could uh, open the door and at least let him swing out so we can uh, evaluate him. He did so. Um, basically, uh, just evaluate him. He had. You know, cuts and abrasions on his face, his nose, it looked like he had some damage. He had a cut on the back of his head, and we basically just uh, cleaned him up. Did he make any statements to you as to how he received his injuries? No, he didn't. Did he make any statements at all while you were there? No, he was pretty, pretty silent. Okay. Did anybody ask him, how'd you get how'd, how'd you get this cut, or how'd you get your nose hurt, or anything like that? Uh, nobody asked him, no. Okay. All right. So, um, by the fact that there was no heartbeat, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Martin never regained consciousness, so no, no statements were made by him. Yeah. Uh, he, and you treated Mr. Zimmerman, but he made no statements while you were at the car, is that correct? Or is it correct? Yeah, he made no statements. Make no statements. Okay. Once you treated Mr. Zimmerman, 
what was, what did you do with that after that? Um, uh, we stood him up and we lifted up his shirt, kind of just checked him over real quick, and then sat him down, cleaned him up. The wounds had basically stopped bleeding. Uh, told the officer there that he was going to need to go to the hospital probably and get some stitches. The officer said, okay. And I said, do you want us to handle taking him or are you going to take him? And he said, we'll take him. And that was basically all we did. Okay. Said, okay. When you stood him up, what, what were you looking for? Uh, to see if any other kind of wounds or anything underneath his shirt. Okay. And, you know, any cuts or any other abrasions or any kind of bruising or anything like that. Do you recall seeing anything? No. Just basically from the shoulders up on the face and the head. Okay. Everything else was... Yeah, it's okay. No redness or anything like that? Yeah, nothing else. Okay. All right. Tommy, you got anything? Uh, it's just, uh, can you describe the, the wounds in detail that you saw Mr. Zimmerman both off? Uh, well, he had a definite laceration to the back of the head. I mean, it was, he had, like, uh, like, real short, like, almost, like, ball type. Mm -hmm. So you could tell, I mean, it was, it was pretty big. It was probably about at least an inch, probably about half an inch wide. So, I mean, it was a definite wound back there. Uh, he had some abrasions on his forehead. He had a kind of like a deformity on the nose, kind of look at swollen. He had some abrasions on his cheeks and his face. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. The, uh, how many abrasions to the back of the head? He had just the one big cut on the back of his one head. Was it straight, curvy? Uh, it looked like it was just straight up and down the back of his head. Oh, okay. Like almost southern. Did you have to examine his hands? Um, we looked at his, I mean, he was in handcuffs the whole time. He was never taken out of handcuffs, but basically what we did was, uh, he had blood on his arms and his hands, so we just kind of basically cleaned them off. Took some peroxide and some, some uh, gauze and just kind of cleaned off to make sure, you know, he didn't have anything else that was seen and just basically washed his hands. The handcuffs behind his back or in front of his back? He's behind his back. Okay. Yes. Yeah. hard over there. Yep. Yeah. Is there any uh, anything that we haven't asked you about that you think is important that we need to get on the record concerning this incident? Not that I can think of. Okay. You didn't really have much contact with Trayvon. Just enough to, you know, do the heart monitor. How long does that usually take to, to make an assessment like that? Less than a minute. Less than a minute. Yeah, I think I think within like a minute of us being on scene, or making contact, we I called it. Okay. So you basically sit down, put your pads, watched it for how, how long does it take to, for the pads for you? How long do you watch the monitor before you say okay? It's about it. thirty seconds. Thirty seconds, and then it was like done. Yeah, yeah. there's a button on there we could press different leads because it's in lead two. Mm -hmm. We can go through lead three, AVF, AVL, and one. Kind of just cycle through just to make sure it's, you know, a Sicily in all the leads, okay. and then we call it. Okay. All right. All right. It's uh, now approximately, well, it's now 2.21 p.m. That concludes this interview. Okay, today's date is March, excuse me, March 19th, 2012. We are at the Office of the State Attorney. Present is Investigator Jim Rick with the Seminole State Attorney's Office. Also present is Agent Dale Crosby with the Florida Department of Law Enforcement. And we are here interviewing Wendy Doraville, who is going to provide information about the Neighborhood Watch program. Um, Wendy, can you raise your right hand? Sure. Do you swear the statement you're about to give is the truth the best of your knowledge to help you, God? I do. Okay. Spell your last name, please, for the record. Dorival D like David, O-R-I-V like Victor, A-L. Okay, thank you. And we kind of explained to you before we went on tape that we would like you to explain the program, the Neighborhood Watch program, in general, and then uh, we want you to give us some specifics regarding uh, George Zimmerman as a participant in the Neighborhood Watch program in uh, the subdivision, the Twin uh, Retreat, Retreat at Twin, Twin Lakes. Lakes. Yes. Okay, please. Um, typically with Neighborhood Watch, what happens is um, someone in the community um, makes contact with the police department, they transfer them to me or get, get them a hold of me, <clears throat> and they have an interest in you know, what is Neighborhood Watch? A lot of times people, when they 
hear about neighborhood watch, they don't know what it is. So um, once I get a hold of them and I talk to them, I kind of explain to them the basic principles of neighborhood watch is to get to know your neighbor, is reporting, observing and reporting suspicious behavior or activity and calling that into the police, and then kind of building that sense of community. Um, so those are kind of the basic principles for neighborhood watch, and that's what I explain to them. So what I do is I talk to them about um, how to get st started up. It's kind of like him and seeing the neighborhood, seeing who else is interested, and to kind of get their interest revving on neighborhood watch, and kind of then schedule a date where I can come and do a neighborhood watch startup presentation, <coughs> which I have brought with me here, and we can run through as well. So to really get the rest of the community engaged and um, a stakeholder in Neighborhood Watch. Um, once um, they've got the volunteers, we pass out flyers. Uh, sometimes I'll create it for them because sometimes they can't, they can't do that. Um, and they'll pass out the flyers and um, then at whatever date and time that we've scheduled, I'll go out there, um, I do a PowerPoint presentation, and I t tell all the neighbors who show up whether three show up, 10 show up or 50 show up, I still do a presentation and, um, and we go over the basics of neighborhood watch, um, observation skills, recognition, um, what are the, the duties of neighborhood watch coordinator and the block captains. And then um, once I do that presentation, that's when we kind of recruit for volunteers. Typically at that point, people have already decided who they want their coordinator to be, or that person has already decided that. Um, certain cases, HOA sometimes assign people to be the coordinators and say, go with it. Um, but then block captains, because they're going to be in charge of either one or two blocks, those are people who volunteer to take those positions on. Um, so then once we get that people interested and wanting to engage and volunteer into these roles, um, everyone signs in a list that typically a neighborhood watch coordinator makes sure, or the liaison at that point, make sure that everyone fills out um, with their contact information, phone number, and email address. Because after that, we also create a telephone tree, and, um, um, and we also do an email listing, the coordinators do, so they can communicate information to their neighborhoods, the community in the neighborhood. Um, so once the presentation is over with, um, and I usually I hand some stuff out, so I'll, I'll, I'll show you that too. Um, and we talk about being the eyes and ears and just the basics of Neighborhood Watch. We also talk about different crime prevention techniques and burglary prevention. Um, but once that is over, I, we, just stick, we have a CSA officer there, um, community service officer who's also there if anybody has questions. Sometimes I invite the investigators to come out because there might be some issues that, or pending cases that they might want to know about. So I invite them to come out there. Um, in this case, I had um, an officer there and a sergeant. I didn't have an investigator in this case. Um, so once we do that, the neighborhood watch coordinator is supposed to get back with me a list of um, captains, who people who signed up and, and the registry of the people that are there um, so we can know who's going to do what. And I also um, encourage them to call me if they want me to come back out, do any other kind of presentations, if they want further training, if they want, um, you know, just need help really building a foundation for their neighborhood watch. So, but that's typically the run of the mill. And then once, just this January, I started doing neighborhood watch newsletter, um, which I start, which I send out every month to all the neighborhood watch coordinators that they can share with the neighborhood watch captains and all the residents, which also talks about neighborhood watch. Okay. Can you tell us specifically about the uh, neighborhood watch program uh, that you designed for the retreat at Twin Lakes? Um, I actually found a copy of one of the, the coordinator's handbook that I gave to Mr. Zimmerman because I put Retreat at Twin Lakes up here and I actually found a copy in my office so I made two copies and I gave him one. So I put that in here um, as well. But this is, I gave it to him and there's 
good 20 something pages of information and forms that he can use here. But my PowerPoint, which is here, is pretty much what I go through. It doesn't have notes because they're kind of cues for me. I say what's on the slide and it cues me to say more and, you know. But then, before I even go into my presentation, I, my biggest goal is to let the neighbors introduce themselves. And what I do is tell, you know, tell me who you are, if you want, if you're comfortable, tell me about where you live in the community, and then tell me your number one concern. Like, what is the number one issue? In this community, it was burglaries. That was the number one issue, because I had been hit with three burglaries before I got there, three or four burglaries before I got there. Wendy, how many, how many uh, residents were present at that uh, original meeting? It was 25. I thought it was 30, but then I just found an email that I sent, a follow-up email I sent to my lieutenant, letting him know that I had a good turnout, I had 25 people, which is not really a good turnout for 265 homes, but 25 people, that's a good turnout right. that I get to spread the word of, you know, report suspicious activity and be a community and get to know your neighbor. So, um, to me, that's, it's always uh, success in that do case. Remember, do you remember the uh, date that you did September the September 22nd, 7 p.m. I have a flyer that I gave him. There's some attachments to emails, and I have some emails here also. 2012. 2011. 2011. Yeah, 7 p.m. in the clubhouse. Not there yet. <laughs> okay, and Mr. Zimmerman obviously was present. Yes, Mr. Zimmerman was present. Um, the HOA president Don O'Brien was present, and I think there was. I think she was a secretary because she did the newsletter for the HOA. Um, she was also present, but she was also on the board, and I don't remember her name. And I think you said there were a, a few people there from the HOA board, or? Yeah, because I, I believe there, I think she was from the HOA board, and then Zimmerman, I think he was just a volunteer, but wasn't really on the board itself, and then Don was, but I think there was other people there, but they didn't identify that. Okay. And was there any type of neighborhood captain or leader appointed that evening? Yes. It was George Zimmerman. Okay. Was he named the captain or the coordinator? coordinator. Okay. Yes. That's one thing that the news media keeps saying, calling him a captain. But a captain would be a block captain. It would only, you know, encompass so many homes. He was a coordinator for the whole community. He was the liaison. He was the contact with the police department. You know, he was the one that if he, if he wanted, if <clears throat> his block captains wanted more training or anything else, he would have to contact me. Okay. So we usually have a coordinator. So, so the block captains would fall under him? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, in the policy that you have there, is it the policy of the Neighborhood Watch program to, if they, if they see a suspicious person or something going on, is it their policy to confront those people? Not at all. Actually, during the whole presentation and in the manuals, the <coughs> excuse me, the coordinator um, handbook, it says you don't approach them. You don't make contact, no confrontations. Um, don't try to get into a physical altercation with them. I mean, you kind of see that kind of wording everywhere. Um, pretty much what we tell them is, you're the eyes and ears. That is your, your position. You are the extra eyes and ears for the police department. Um, and you don't, you just observe and report. You know, and there's even a slide here um, that talks about not being the vigilante place. Not the vigilante police. Work with the police. Be our eyes and ears. Report suspicious activity. You know, and um, and we go through it. I mean, it's repeated several times. You know, it's. I mean, we it's we say the opposite of what you're asking. We tell them not to get into any kind of confrontations. Okay. Um, did Mr. Zimmerman, prior to this incident, had he ever called you and reported any issues as far as? crimes occurring in the neighborhood and things like that? Not specifically, but he did contact me through email, and I have it right here. And it was in October. Um, October 2nd, he sent me an email. 
Um, wanting to know, he says, I understand a suspect was arrested in the home invasion case that occurred in my neighborhood. Is that information correct? So I was out of the office, and I had told him I'm out of the office, but um, my volunteer will look into it. She wasn't able to look into it. So once I got back, I talked to the investigator um, who was investigating that case, and she told me that I could tell him that um, they had identified a suspect, but they haven't been able to locate him. And that's what I kind of tell him in this email. Okay. So you guys can have that. But, um, but yeah, that's, that's the contact that I've had as far as he had any issues. Um, and there, in that email, I also asked him if he knows what the process is with the board in reference to rental units, because at the, at the initial startup meeting, there were some homeowners who were concerned about the rental units, because they felt that the rental units were bringing bad, you know, bad activity to the community. So what I told them is, you know, one thing that I could do is work with the HOA to maybe establish some protocol to do different kind of backgrounds and different kind of um, just helping them with the interview process, the whole application process. Um, but I never got a response about that from him. So, so there, it's it's in there. Um, and then that was the last email I got from him. So I didn't get any other email saying, "Hey, there's this going on." Nothing like that. Did you receive any correspondence, telephone calls, emails from any of the residents? No. No. And Nothing indicating that they were upset with him or they didn't uh, think he was doing the, what he needed to do or anything no, like that? No, nothing. Nobody I didn't complained. get anything from the HOA president or anyone in the HOA or any one of his neighbors saying any bad comments about him or saying, hey, something's going on here that should be happening. No one contacted me about that community. Okay. As the uh, coordinator, Zimmerman being appointed the coordinator, what was his duties and responsibilities and what did you tell him? his responsibilities as a coordinator was? As a coordinator, he is the liaison to the police department. So instead of the police department getting eight different calls from that same community, if someone in his community has a concern, now this is not for specific activity, this is just for like concerns or education, mm -hmm. okay, that they will go through him, you know. Um, and that's one of his responsibilities. Another thing is to pass out information, you know, if there's crime prevention information, or if it's a neighborhood watch newsletter, pass that out. If there's new block captains coming on, then getting them um, brought into the um, neighborhood watch philosophy, you know, um, with, um, getting them involved in that, you know, and also getting new neighbors involved in neighborhood watch. So constantly also recruiting um, homes into getting into the philosophy of neighborhood watch. Did he ever provide you with any uh, information as related to block captains or coordinating no. people that he had recruited? No, and actually I got an email here that I sent to one of my lieutenants, um, and it was just a follow-up, it was the day after the, the event, <coughs> and, um, and I wasn't sure whether I had told him to get me that list, because I remember he was taking the list down. But I wasn't really sure if I remember correctly, but I guess I did because I wrote it in my email with my follow-up to lieutenant where I told him that he was going to provide me with a list of block captains and the telephone tree that I, because I gave him the forms, so he was going to provide that to me. But he never did. So we don't know if he actually had block captains? Exactly. Okay, what's the, uh, the policy on firearms? neighborhood watch? No, no firearms at all. Um, it's sometimes actual when you go there people ask about that, about personal protection. They say, well, you know, am I allowed if someone enters my home? And, you know, in this neighborhood they didn't ask that, but we never um, um, encourage firearms at all. In one neighborhood watch, I remember someone asked me about a stun gun or pepper spray, and my advice to them was, you know, you have every right to have any weapon you want. You know, that's that's your constitutional right. But just remember that that same weapon can be used against you. You know, and, and you don't know what consequences that weapon may bring to you. So um, that's um, that's kind of like my standard answer when people ask me that because they want to say, well, does the law protect me if I? And I don't want to get into that. I'm like, I'm not an attorney. <laughs> you know, but um, but that, that's my standard answer to kind of say, hey, that's a risk that you're taking. But I never, he never told me he had one, and I never knew. But it's, n it's not something that we advocate at all.
So again, the policy is for them just simply observe and report. Observe and report. Not That's follow, not no, obviously never. carry a firearm. No. And confront individuals on the property. No, not at all. Okay. At all. We always tell them, let the police do their job. Call us and let us take care of it. You don't have to confront them. You know, we don't want you to confront them because then we have to go there and there's more issues. But what we, what we always tell them is just call us. Call us and let us handle it. Whatever issue you think when is happening. When you're talking about calling now, I understand that for the most part he was uh, kind of trained to call a non-emergency number? You can call either one. When we do the... When we do the presentation, we talk about calling 911 versus non-emergency dispatch. And what I told them is, call non-emergency dispatch if a crime has occurred, like let's say someone, and I give them an example, someone took your bike out of your patio while you were at work and you don't know when it occurred. That's a non-emergency call. If someone is breaking into a car now, or someone is uh, breaking into a home, that's a 911 call. Where property, life, or limb is at stake, you call 911. And that's pretty much what I say. Okay. So from September 22nd, uh, the only correspondence you got from him was two emails. Yes. Well, I have them right here. Um, I have, let's see here. Yeah, he sent me the first email October 2nd. And then um, I replied to him October 11th, and he didn't reply to that. And then I had three different emails for him. I had one that was RTL Neighborhood Watch. And then in the beginning, when he first started contacting me, he had this one called um, GMZ Business something. And then he had another one, I believe. But I don't think it came out in this email. GMZ business at hotmail.com. All right. Just for clarification, on the first email you got from me, what was it in reference to? The f before the Neighborhood Watch meeting? I have some emails from before the presentation as well. Okay. Yeah, what were those? Okay. So here, let me get So the first few emails that we... I was, I was doing the flyer for the neighborhood watch. So one that says, hey, I prepared the flyer, and here's the attachment to it. And that was, that was back in August 31st. And then the next one was also August 31st. He replied, says, you got my name wrong on the flyer. And I, and I couldn't find the corrected one, but I found the one with the wrong name. Okay. <laughs> Where it says Greg and it's supposed to be George. Um, <coughs> and then there is... And then I did these um, contact cards for the neighborhood where it would list... Um, it listed him as a coordinator. And then they could put the block captain name, the block captain phone number, and then also... You know, to report suspicious activity, call 911 or non-emergency dispatch. A lot of people are not comfortable calling 911 even though. So I put both of them there. And then that was the next email. And that was the third one when you sent in? That was like the second. That was September 19th. It was closer to the date. I don't want him to... And I just wanted him to look at it. I you usually... Two, two emails on the 31st. Yes. And then one on September. 19th with the contact cards that I created for him. And then, um, I guess I had the phone number wrong or the email wrong. I don't know on that one, so he had me fix that. Um, and in this email, there's other talk in here because one of his neighbors called me wanting to report a suspicious person because we got the flyer, so they had my name there, so they called me to report a suspicious person in the neighborhood. And uh, so I had to forward it to dispatch. So I kind of put in here, hey, you know, I'll go over when to call 911 versus non-emergency on presentation day. So that's one of the emails in there. Um, and then the one, the email on the October 10th, which is the one about that burglary, the home invasion we're talking about. But I printed them all here. That's kind of, let me take this. He 
did send, before this presentation, <clears throat> he sent an email to the chief, a glowing email about me. Because he had just talked to me a few, a few times about just how responsive I've been um, and how he made a comment, and I couldn't find it. I don't know if maybe it was the chief forwarded to me or, or how it was sent, but how um, responsive I had been and how he was, because um, he was upset with the police department and the way they handled the um, Collison case. So he sent me that. He said that, you know, he just sent a glowing letter um, to the chief about me. So, okay. But, um, and then that when I, I thanked him for his kind words, so. But I couldn't find that email. Okay, so the initial meeting was September 22nd at 7 p.m. at the clubhouse, yes. right? Yes. Now, I, I may have missed something. Were, were there any meetings after that? No. Okay. Not at all. Just the email correspondence and things like that. Yeah, yeah. And in my packet, this um, folder here with this pen is actually the packet I give to all neighborhood watches. So this is what they get. They get my business card. They get how neighborhood watch program works. They get this card on our crime mapping so they can look at their own statistics. They get a burglary prevention guide as well. And then, um, actually there's a piece of paper here missing. Here's some more. I have some more here. Some neighborhood watch handouts. <coughs> There's this brochure on crime prevention topics I can talk about. So if they want me to come back into their neighborhood, we can talk about these things. And yeah, so everything that's in this handout part. And these are my copies, Wendy? Yeah, I didn't make any copies of this, but... Do you I need me to just make copies, or can I have all of this? Um, or is this all original stuff? This is not original stuff. I okay. can make more copies of this. Um, okay, I would appreciate that. Yeah, because the only original one that I have is this. So this is what I made a copy of, the uh, coordinator's handbook. This is what I made a copy of. I guess I had made two copies, one for him, and, and I forgot to. Okay. So, but this is, this is what, um, you know, like right here. It's already on the second page. What you will not do is get physically involved with any activity you report or apprehensions of any suspicious persons. This is the job of the law enforcement agency. Okay. And here's some references that you guys talked about. Um, a lot of the references for um, the National Sheriff's Association, the references are there. Um, you know, a lot of, there's been a lot of questions about, you know, are your neighborhood watch registered a U.S. on watch? And, and they don't have to be. You know, there isn't, it's not like there's some... Um, Kalia requirement to go through U.S. I mean, there's nothing like like that I that I know of. You know, and I've been doing neighborhood watch before Sanford Police, so um, it's just a matter of what that community wants. And thing about neighborhood watch, it's not cookie cutter to every community. Mm -hmm. It's very different. Mm -hmm. sure. You know, some neighborhoods, I go out there have a meeting, and they don't want nothing to do with it. You know, some neighborhoods get so involved that they have you know every quarter they have a potluck or something, something to get to know each other. So it really kind of depends on that community where they want to sure. take it. But in every case, that community chooses who their leaders are, their coordinators are. And was that the case with this one, or was he self-appointed, or was he... No. Uh, um, I believe the HOA assigned him to look into this neighborhood okay. watch. And, um, and then once... It was it was just a matter he, he even said it, the HOA wants me to coordinate the neighborhood watch. You know, I'm like, Okay, well I guess you're it, you know. Um and he was enthusiastic about it, you know, um and a lot of times you have people that hear neighborhood watch, they don't wanna get involved, like, Oh, I don't like the monthly meetings, all this other stuff and they don't have to do monthly meetings. Like I said, it's not cookie cutter. You can do a quarter meetings, you don't even have to have a meeting as long as you guys get to know each other. Build that sense of community. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't know if we started out, but did we get your name and where you work and your experience with community? Uh, no. Yeah, let's go ahead. Can you state ahead. that for the record for us, please? Okay. I've um, worked for the Sanford Police Department since March 3rd, 2008. I think it just completed my four years. Yes, four years uh, with Sanford Police Department as a volunteer program coordinator. Now, the volunteer program, and this is the thing, they're mixing it up. It's completely different from Neighborhood Watch. 
I, my programs are Citizens on Patrol and Office Volunteers. Citizens on Patrol is not Neighborhood Watch. Some agencies, I think like Orange County, they kind of merge them both. They're separate for us. Um, our COPs uh, patrol the city of Sanford and they go through a five-week training. Very specific, CPR, first aid, I mean, very specific stuff. Um, and those are our volunteers. Um, where Neighborhood Watch is community volunteers. Um, what was I going with this? Well, I was talking about experience. How did I get here? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but that's what I do. Recently, in August, I believe, the chief, who just came in, I think in April, assigned me to do crime prevention. Well, there's no one doing crime prevention. And I had prior experience doing crime prevention. So he said, Wendy, can you take on crime prevention? And I said, sure, okay. They didn't get a pay raise, but sure. I, I love crime prevention. I, I really believe in it. I believe in Neighborhood Watch. You know, so I said, yeah, I'll do it, you know. And I actually insisted I should do it, you know, because you don't have anyone else here that can. Previously, they had people in that, pos in that role, but they would come to me for information. So it's almost like, well, I'm already kind of doing it. So why not, you know, why not just put me in a position, you know. And um, so that he, then he put me through the training. You know, because I said, well, if I'm not going to pay, at least put me through the training, get me to the general accreditation or certification. So, um, so that's kind of my experience there. But I pretty much kind of been, I've had my finger in it ever since. Because as soon as I started, always people needed some help with it. So I've always helped them with it. Um, before that, um, my experience with crime prevention was I was with the Hillsborough Police Department in Oregon for about a year as a crime prevention specialist. And I did that for a year. Um, specifically, I did neighborhood watches um, in Spanish because um, it was mostly 22% Hispanic there. And I did that for a year. Before that, I was as an admin assistant for the Washington County Sheriff's Office, also in Hillsborough, Oregon. And I started working in 1998 to 2004. And the last, I think, Three and a half years, I was working in the crime prevention unit. I started in records. I was working in crime prevention unit where um, someone mentored me. And I went to every single one of their presentations. And I learned how to do crime prevention. And they had me go out there and do it. You know, and I, of course, I wasn't going to pay for that. So when Hillsborough came open, I took it. Um, but yeah, but that's how I got my experience. So. And what are your, what do you, you have some certificates? Yes, I just recently uh, went through the Attorney General's course, um, crime, um, crime Prevention Practitioner course. Um, and I started that in actual October, October, September, November, yeah. And it, it takes about four, it took about four months because you have to go through these four different classes. And I got my certification from Crime Prevention Practitioner in December. Then I did the SEPTED in January and advanced in February. And I got my certificate, my um, designation for that too, Crime Prevention through Environmental Design. Yeah, very good. I think we're good. Um, we appreciate you coming in, Wendy. No problem. Let me go ahead and close the interview. Uh, 319. 2012 time is 2.06 p.m. and this interview is concluded. Today's date is March 24, 2012. It is now 11.24 a.m. Speaking is Special Agent Supervisor David Lee with the Florida Department of Law Enforcement. Also present in the room is Special Agent Johnny Batchelor with the Florida Department of Law Enforcement and Firefighter Stacy Livingston with the Sanford Fire Department. Um, now, as you can see, the conversation we're having is being digitally recorded. Yes. Okay. Um, can I get you to raise your right hand, please? You saw this floor for a statement you're about to give be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Thank you. For the record, would you please state and spell your full name? Uh, Stacy Livingston, S-T-A-C-E-Y-L-I-V-I-N-G-S-T-O-N. And you're currently employed as a firefighter with the Sanford Police Department? Yes. How long have you been a firefighter, please? Uh, since May 18, 1988. Okay. On February 26, 2012, you were assigned to uh, Engine 38, correct? Yes. Okay, and approximately 7.30 p.m., uh, I guess your unit responded to an emergency call and retreat view circle. Yes. Okay. Uh, from the moment that uh, you were notified of the response, would you just kind of go forward and give me a narrative of what your actions were? Um, we just received a call. We responded to the scene um, 
when we pulled into the subdivision, uh, there was already several police officers there. Um, they advised us that they had two patients, actually. Um, I was directed to go to the patient up by the townhouse, I guess it is, in the house. Um, they advised that he had been shot and that their police officers were doing CPR. So we went to the patient, we assessed him. Um, it was determined through assessing him in the cardiac monitor that he had, you know, he was deceased. Um, and then I went, after that was determined, now do you want specifics like on what I did with him? What you did, yes, and, what um, you did. What was your job? Um, and, and let's just clarify too, the, the patient that we're talking about, the one that was shot, is, we now know is Trayvon Martin. Is that the patient you're talking about? Now no, yes. Yes. At the time, okay. we, we didn't. Um, Thank you. Um, I, when I got up to him, um, like I said, the police officers were doing CPR. Okay. Um, we kind of took over and uh, we checked for airway breathing circulation. You checked or somebody else? Um, I know that, um, I think myself, I know somebody else did, to be honest, I'm not sure. I think I was on his right side, somebody else was on the left. I think we were both checking, to okay. be honest. I'll find you um, I think we were both checking because we were just trying to determine what we had. Um, and I determined he was not. I think the other firefighter continued checking. Um, I was going to get ready to start CPR and I went to lift his um, sweatshirt and uh, I felt something big in it. Okay. So it was kind of in the way and I got a, a soda can or some type. I, don't, I didn't determine what it was. I just put it up the side and when we lifted up um, I saw a bullet hole in his chest and at this kind of the same time because you know often we're all doing different things. Mm -hmm. The paramedic that was in charge was putting him in on, on the heart monitor. And that was, the paramedic was who? Uh, Michael Brandy. Okay. Um, there were actually two paramedics there, but I, I believe Michael Brandy okay. was the one that put him on the heart monitor. Um, and just kind of through everyone doing their own thing, it, it was determined that it, it was not a cardiac arrest situation that we were going to do CPR, that he he, the paramedic determined through his training that it was. He was know, gone. He so was gone. So you guys were done at that Right. So at that point, um, we didn't do any. You know, he did what he needed to do medically to get the documentation for mm -hmm. the heart monitor, and then um, I'm not sure who, probably the lieutenant, but somebody said, "Okay, let's, it's a crime scene now. Let's just back out." Um, and then I went over, they had a, the police advised that they had another patient in the back of the police car. The one we now know as Zimmerman? Yes. Okay. And I went over to him and um, he was like kind of sitting sideways. I know the tape can't see me, but like I'm out, to, out of the car. He was sitting in his car with his legs out. In the police car with his legs out, gotcha. kind of, you know, just leaning. And um, I went up to him and, um, well a couple of us did, but I went up to him and um, yeah, I asked the officers, can we assess him, you know, because we had no idea what the situation was that it occurred and he said yes and um, he, from leaning forward, he kind of had blood going, you know, on his face and we just started to clean him up to see what his injuries were mm -hmm. um, and it looked like he could very well possibly had like a broken, broken nose. Okay. Nose is bloody and swollen. Um, cleaned off the back of his head because some of the blood had dried so we kind of had to get it off to see what he actually had, you know. And um, he had <coughs> two small, um, maybe, I don't know, maybe an inch, like lacerations kind of on the back of his head. Okay. One, one looked a little deeper than the other but um, we just cleaned them off with sterile water and stuff and uh, tried to get them from to stop bleeding. And um, the police officer that was standing there asked us, you know, does, does he need to be transported by ambulance? And we just told him, you know, we'd be happy to take him. Looks like he may have a broken nose and could possibly need a stitch or two. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know how the determination was made, but I know that we left and it was determined that the 
police were going to take him to see if he needed stitches. Okay. And that was pretty. Uh, was pretty much all that we. Did Mr. Zimmer complain of it? Of 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 any of his injuries? Did he say anything about my head hurts, my arm hurts, my knee hurts, something like that? Anything like that? He was. Um, gosh, I don't even remember exactly what he was saying. I know he was. He was complaining of his injuries. Um, I know he said, uh, I think one time, I think he said he was dizzy. Okay. Um, and we questioned him, you know, further, you know, about, you know, is your vision blurred, you know, just okay. some simple questioning. And he was definitely alert and not, he didn't appear to be impaired like uh -huh. his speech, you know, his speech was good and everything. And he really didn't say a whole lot when I was, I was more like just cleaning him up. He, he really didn't say a whole lot to me. I do remember him saying, though, that he was dizzy. Um, but I don't. Not like I said, there was several of us there. You know, he may have okay. spoke to somebody did, else. Did, did he, while he was being treated, did y'all do any other assessments of it of his other areas of his body? I don't believe I didn't. Okay. I didn't. Um, but he didn't make any statements that you're aware. Did he make any statements you were aware of that would make you look at any other parts of his body? I did not look anywhere else. Oh, let me put it like this. If he did, told you, if he just said, my knee really hurts, would y'all have looked at it? I mean, yeah, I mean, if someone complained yeah, of an okay. injury, so, you so, would look at it. So I'm just trying it, to remember what, uh, and I'm horrible. I can't remember what I had for breakfast, you know. <laughs> That's okay. Um, Neither can I. I. I just, I'm trying to really think of what. But yes, we would have looked at some other injury, but I, and I did not. But I know that he was complaining of the injuries that I was looking at. Okay. Like I know when I was trying to get the dry blood off where you have to push a little harder, mm -hmm. so, you know, kind of, ow, ow, you know. Um, but it wasn't, and I know he, he said his face hurt from his nose, but mm -hmm. beyond what I was treating, I, he didn't complain to me about anyone, anything else. See any injuries on his hands? I don't even think I looked at his okay. hands, to be honest. All right. um, other than his complaints about his injuries, did he make any statements about what occurred? No. no. And I didn't ask anything. Okay. That's I didn't. Yeah. You won't you I call him making any, just, just saying anything about what occurred or what, or any, no. any statements other than medical? No, not to me. Okay. And I'm going to back up just a hair here because I don't remember asking this, but I'm going to do it again just to make sure I've, I've covered it. When you were with Mr. Martin, yes. was he ever conscious? No. Uh, so I, I know this may seem silly to you, but so did he ever, so since he was never conscious, no, no statements were made by him, correct? No. Okay. All right. Uh, <coughs> the, uh, the victim we now know is Trevon Martin. Uh, can you describe when you first walked up what you saw, a, a clothing, a uh, wound, or anything that you know in, that you can put together? Um, he was laying on his back. Um, like I said, when we got up there, walking up, the police officers were doing CPR, mm -hmm. and then they, you know, backed away. Um, to be honest, the only clothing that I can tell you that I know for sure was some kind of sweatshirt with a pocket because... And like, you're describing the pocket as where? Uh, like waist. Is that one where you put your hands in here? Yeah, warm. Like, oh, I know what you're talking about. You know what I'm talking about? Like, yeah. kind of on your belly, on your stomach. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and the only reason I know that is because when I went to lift it to assess his chest, um, there was a can in there, and I had to get it kind of out of the way, okay. and I just set it next to him. I took that out, but I, I set it right next to him. Um, was this can heavy? Yes. It was full. I don't know. Well, now I know. Now you know what it is. But at the time, I, I just figured it was a soda or something, but it was, I know it was a, like one of those tall cans. I don't know, like an energy drink, you know, that okay. type of can. Okay. But, and I just put that to the side, and... Uh, but clothing-wise, that's, I couldn't even tell you anything about the shirt itself. But I think he had on a shirt underneath, but I just moved them all together. Okay. And then I looked at his chest, and he had a small bullet hole in his chest area <coughs> that wasn't even bleeding. 
Did you see any other injuries? No. Uh, when you were treating who we now know as uh, Zimmerman, who was in the back of the car, do you recall clothing that he would have been wearing? I don't. Um, I don't. I don't. I, I think he had on long pants and kind of like almost a dress shoe, but to, I couldn't tell you. I'm not sure. Do you remember the, the weather that night? It wasn't raining, but I, I don't know. It wasn't raining, I don't think. <laughs> no, I don't remember. Or the weather that day? I don't. It's fine. It's fine. I'm sorry. No, that's not, it's okay. You okay. want to remember what you remember. <laughs> that's why we interview everybody to get a little piece from everybody. Right, right. Uh, Ma'am, is there anything that we haven't asked you about that you think is significant that we need to add to the record? I don't believe so. Okay. All right. All right, it is now uh, 11.36 a.m. And that concludes this interview. Today's date is March 24, 2012. Speaking is Special Agent Supervisor David Lee with the Florida Department of Law Enforcement. It is now 11.09 a.m. Uh, we're at the uh, Sanford Police Department main station. Uh, also present in the room is Special Agent Johnny Batchelor with the Florida Department of Law Enforcement and Firefighter EMT Kevin O'Rourke. Yes, correct, sir? That is correct. As you can see, the conversation we're having is being uh, tape recorded. Or digitally recorded? I, I can. Okay. Uh -huh. um, uh, can I get you to raise your right hand, sir? You solemnly swear or affirm a statement you're about to give me the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Okay. For the record, would you state and spell your full name? Uh, my name is Kevin Patrick O'Rourke, uh, K E V I N P A T R I C K O apostrophe R O U R K E. Okay. And you're currently employed with the Sanford Police uh, Fire Department. Fire yes. Department. Yes, sir, I am. I apologize for that. <laughs> How long have you been uh, employed as a firefighter? Uh, ten years. Ten years. Um, on February 26, 2012, uh, uh, at approximately around 7, 7.30 uh, p.m. hours, um, did you respond to a, an emergency call on Retreat View Circle? Uh, yes, I did. Okay. Um, would you just kind of give me a narrative of, of, of what occurred from the time you, I guess, got on the truck to the time we, you got on the truck? We responded to that call uh, from on the road. We just returned from another transport. Uh, we were shooting down up Salem, headed back towards the station. We got the call. Uh, we went the, you know, the normal route to retreat via circle, given our circumstance. Uh, we arrived on scene approximately five minutes after we were dispatched. Uh, there were several uh, police vehicles already on scene. We were directed to the rear of the apart or townhouse building. Um, we were told that we had a shooting victim and that the police were performing CPR. We okay. got an arrival. That statement appeared to be true. There were several officers around the victim or the body, uh, and we arrived on scene. We placed our four lead on him, and we found that he was a systole in all leads. And the medic on scene, Mike Brandy, uh, called it right there, and we did a no vitals, no code, and uh, from that point on, we gathered up our equipment that we had brought. We were, uh, the best I can remember, they were uh, telling us that they had another patient uh, with the police, and he was sitting in the back of a cop, the police car, and uh, we treated him for, uh, he had one or two lacerations on the back of his head and what looked to be a uh, fractured nose and we cleaned the, the blood off of his head and face and we you know, treated him the best we could and once the bleeding was under control we, we left him with the SPD and 
we backed out of the scene and we went home. Okay, okay. let's back up just a little bit. Uh, when when you guys the the victim this gunshot victim is that the individual now known as Trayvon Martin? Yes. Okay. When when you say we person, you're uh, I, I say we as a unit. Uh, me and my partner Mike Brandy so rescue thirty eight. I you and Mike Brandy basically do the medical treatment only. Anymore. We all do the med uh, the entire. If we run calls with both an engine and a rescue. Uh, the medic on scene is in charge of that medical scene. Okay. However, we're on all hands involved sort of department. So okay. if I'm driving the fire truck or I'm driving the rescue, it doesn't matter. If I'm on that scene, I'm assisting in the medical call, you know, per the lieutenant's direct, you know, discretion, unless they, I'm, I'm told otherwise. Okay, so on this particular, with Mr. Martin, what did you specifically do? I got on scene, I grabbed the backboard and the airway bag, and we went down to the scene, and I helped pla I placed him on the monitor, if okay. I remember correctly. When, and that, when you say placed him on the monitor? I placed him, I, I put the uh, stickers on him that check his okay. his okay. heart. And you you got to remember, we... Okay, not, that's fine. I'm not a medic, so... We don't have to use colloquial speech. <laughs> uh, I, put the heart, I put the heart monitor on him, and we assessed him in, in the three lead. And okay. That's what, that's what I did. And then once that was done, I disconnected him, and... Uh, I walked away from the scene and went to treat uh, we now know Zimmerman. Okay. Um, earlier you, you said that uh, when you, you put him on the monitor and the monitor indicated what? A systole. Uh, it's a flat line. Flat line. Which indicates no heartbeat whatsoever. Which indicates no heartbeat whatsoever. And at that time we call a what's known as a no vitals, no code, which means he's DOA and we're not, uh, he was unworkable in the Right, and uh, the mm -hmm. paramedic Mike Brandy, he was responsible for making that call. Correct? Yes, he was. Okay, and that's his job. That's his job. Is he the only one who can make that call? Uh, on scene, yes, okay. he's 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 the one that can make that call. I'm sure under certain circumstances, the lieutenant could make that call, but you know we we uh, we allow our medics to make those calls. Okay, so Mr. Martin was never conscious, never made any statements. No, no, sir, he was he was DOA on our arrival. Okay, all right. All right. So you're through with him. Y'all back away from that. Realize it's the. Uh, let me ask you this: Did you know what caused his death? It was very evident that it was a gunshot wound. Okay. How do you know it was evident? Because we we saw. I saw it. Oh, you saw there it. was a gunshot wound to to his chest. I guess when you were placing the pads. I yes. Guess you had to. Did you lift your shirt up? Pull his shirt up? Roll his shirt up? Uh, if I remember, I think his shirt was already rolled up. Okay. I think they had already disrobed him at the time. I, we had been really busy that night, and it had been just pouring rain and everything, so it was, yeah, you know, it was kind of a blurry scene. And at the time, we didn't even have ID on the the guy. I mean, he was a John Doe until several days later. Uh, yeah. We couldn't get any information on him, so we were, you know, okay. we were in and out. So you backed out of that scene. And then you treated Mr. Zimmerman. Yes, that's correct. And your treatment of him consisted of just cleaning up his wounds. Yeah, uh, you could say that. Did uh, did was he transported? No, he was not. Did he decline transport? Uh, yes, he did. I believe so. Okay. While you were cleaning up his wounds, did he ever make any statements to you or in your presence? Um, you know, not that I. There was a lot going on. Not, not that I recall really. I, I don't think he. You know. He might have. I, I'm not sure. Who was who was working with you, on Mr. Zimmerman? Stacy Livingston, uh, uh, Tyler Rochefort. Okay. And we were the entire. You know, Station 38 crew was there. there you know, there's a lot going on at the time. Right. And, you know, you kind of just do your job, and you know, you don't really. So, as far as Mr. Zimmerman's treatment, what specifically did you do? What did I do? I, I if I'm if I remember correctly, I was. Uh, getting the gauze, you know, pouring hydrogen peroxide on gauze and giving it to Stacy, who was cleaning it. I was assisting her in cleaning his wounds, getting the equipment ready for that. Okay. Stacy being. Stacy being the. Stacy Livingston. Stacy Livingston. She okay. was uh, driving Engine 38, I believe, at, at the time. Okay. Oh yeah, we haven't spoken to her yet. I'm no. Okay. All right. And you recall no statements he made in your presence. I no, I don't recall any. Okay. Uh, after you treated him, what what did you do then? Well, I gathered up my equipment and uh, got my truck back in order. 
uh, got all the gear that we had brought down to the scene. We got to bring backwards and uh, replaced all of the gauze and the trauma bag that we used to treat Mr. Zimmerman. Just basically got my truck and equipment back in order and then uh, waited for my you know, to be clear to the scene and then we had to back the truck out because we couldn't pull forward and we left. Uh, when you were there with Mr. Zimmerman, just did you, when you were treating him, did you speak to him, talk to him about his injuries and ask him if he was hurting or anything like that? Or uh, I'm sure I did. I, I can't recall anything that I said though. I'm sorry. It's fine. It's fine. That's fine. Is that? Uh, when you were treating Mr. Zimmerman, uh, and I'm assuming you were in close proximity because you were having to clean. Mm -hmm. Can you give a description of what he was wearing? A shirt and jeans, I guess. I, mean, I don't remember exactly. A shirt and jeans. I know he had. He was covered in a pretty significant amount of blood. I can't tell you that. I mean, it took a little while and to clean him up. Um, but I mean, as far as his shirt. And I think he was wearing like a you're pretty much a standard polo shirt, I think, and some jeans. I don't really remember specifics. Okay. The uh, the victim, uh, who we now know is Trevon Martin, uh, can you describe his clothing as well? No. I mean, the only reason I can describe it is because I've seen it in the news so much that he was there. Yeah, yeah, we don't want to do that. <laughs> yes, your observation. No, I. I it, I don't remember. And, and that's okay. That's just fine. Right. Uh, Sniff, when you said significant amount of blood, <coughs> can we define it a little better? Uh, in terms of what, like a volume? I mean, uh, uh, he, his face, his coverage of the, head, of, the, of the face and head. It was, I would say, coverage of face and head, I mean, maybe 45% of him was covered in blood. I mean, he had a, he had a substantial amount of dried blood uh, on his cheeks and on the back of his head. Cheeks and the back of his head. Mm -hmm. uh, how about his clothing? His clothing may have been covered in blood. I mean, clothing doesn't bleed, so I, I really I don't, mean, yeah. You know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, down. So it, there was there was some some blood on his shirt, if I remember correctly. Okay. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Is there anything that we haven't asked you about that you think is significant that you want to add for the record? Not that I can remember. Okay. I, I just have one question. In your ten years of uh, experience as a firefighter, mm -hmm. uh, you've seen lots of situations uh, with blood and and, and and different types. Yeah, absolutely. Of okay. Absolutely. So. Okay. All right. It is now uh, 11.20 a.m. and that concludes this interview. Oh, well, thanks, guys. Today's date is February 24, 2012. It is approximately 9.25 a.m. Speaking is Special Agent Supervisor David Lee with the Florida Department of Law Enforcement. Also present in the room is Special Agent John Baxter with the Florida Department of Law Enforcement. I'm sorry, 10, 10.25, yeah. Look at my watch wrong. 10.25 a.m. Correction, 10.25 a.m. Also present is firefighter Tyler Rochford. Yes. Okay, Rochford. All right. Uh, Tyler, uh, what's the address here? This is fire station number what? 31. Uh, which is the main station, correct? Yes. With, the, with the Sanford Police Department. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, Tyler, can I get you to raise your right hand, please? You solemnly swear upon the statement you're about to give be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Okay. Uh, state, state and spell your full name, please. Tyler Rochford. Mm -hmm. T-Y-L-E-R-R-O-C-H-E-F-O-R-T. -E okay. And uh, what is your current position, sir? Uh, firefighter paramedic. And uh, on... February 26, 2012, uh, were you on duty at that time, sir? Yes. Okay. Did you respond to an emergency call at approximately 7 p.m. to retreat view circle? I did. I did. Okay. Upon <coughs> starting from the point when you arrived on scene, all right, let me ask you this: What do you recall? What the call was? That call out was for? I believe it was came across as a shooting. Okay. Now, when a shooting, something like comes out, who normally responds with the fire department? Um. It's usually, uh, I believe, a rescue, an engine, and usually a battalion chief. Okay. All right. So you were on the what? I was on the engine. Engine? At, and what? Jump seat. Jump seat? Okay. Uh, from the time you arrived at the apartment complex, kind of go through what, you're, what you did, saw, and heard. Um, we arrived on scene. It was, I believe it was dark out. 
Um, just got done raining. I think it was still sprinkling. Um, I grabbed the equipment. Uh, helped out. I can't can't quite remember what I grabbed. Um, either the backboard or sea collar. And um, there was multiple officers on scene and bystanders. I went to the, the patient that was down. Um, the patient was down. Describe him. It was. Um, well, now Trayvon Martin. Oh, you know who it is now. Oh, I know. Yes. Okay, Trayvon Martin. Okay. Yeah. Um, I was laying on his on his back um, with officers um, doing CPR. Okay. Um, went ahead and got by the patient and checked for a pulse. Uh, did not feel a pulse, and I was basically. All that, all that happened, or that I remember. But did you, you did. At any time, did you hear any statements from Mr. Martin? Did no. You, he, he was he was never conscious when you were there. No. Okay. Okay. Um, and um, you, you just stood by. My, you said you checked for a pulse. Okay. Did you take any other actions? I may have assisted with um, putting the monitor, connecting the monitor, and okay. check for a heart rhythm. Heart rhythm. Okay. Who was the other firefighters present? It was um, the whole crew. The crew from Engine 38? Engine, oh, yes, I was on Engine 38 and um, Engine, or Rescue 38. So it's Engine 38, Rescue 38, they responded to the scene? Yes. Okay. All right. Who was the primary paramedic that was w working on Mr. Martin? It was um, paramedic Brandy. Brandy. Okay. Do you recall them running a strip on him? Um. I'm not sure. Okay. That's no problem. That's no problem. While you were going back and forth, did you see Mr. Zimmerman? The only time I saw Mr. Zimmerman was um, in the back of a police police car uh -huh. after working, oh, after checking for the polls. Okay. Did you assist with rendering aid to Mr. Zimmerman? No, I did not. Okay. Did you hear any statements Mr. Zimmerman uttered? No. Okay. All right. Um, Johnny, got anything to add there? Um, can you describe a little better of when you, when you indicated he was on his back and, and the officer was doing CPR? Can you, can you describe a little better of, of uh, if, if you can or if you're aware, clothing or uh, uh, wound or something that you you know that you've seen? Uh, Not that I can uh, remember in detail. Um, I, I don't remember. Uh, I remember he was wearing, I think, a sweatshirt and um, lifted it up and seen a bullet hole around his chest somewhere. Um, that's all I can remember. Okay. Okay. Is there anything that we haven't asked you about that you feel is important that needs to be added for the record? No, I do not. Okay. It is now 10.34 a.m. and that concludes this interview. Okay, today's date is March 19th, 2012. I'm in the office of the state attorney. Uh, present is myself, Investigator Jim Rick with the Seminole State Attorney's Office. Also present is Agent Dale Crosby with the Florida Department of Law Enforcement. And we are here to speak with in reference to George Zimmerman. Can you raise your right hand, please? Yes. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God? I do. Thank you. Can you um, state your name and spell your last name, please? Okay. Well, why are you here today? I'm here today because, well, the main reason is uh, the tapes, the 911 and the other tapes were played uh, for the Martin family, and they uh, identified that as their son uh, crying for help. Mm -hmm. uh, that is absolutely, positively George Zimmerman. Myself, my wife, family members and friends know that that is George Zimmerman. There is no doubt who's yelling for help. Every day uh, in the news, the last thing I heard was this, well, there's two shots fired. Uh, I've heard George was chastening. I've heard so many different things that are just absolutely untrue. This has nothing to do with Neighborhood Watch. <clears throat> George had cooked dinner for him and his wife and was going to the store. He goes to the store the same time every week. Okay. 
uh, I don't know if you all are familiar, but that's that little area is a very nice uh, yeah. area. It is. Uh, but they have had numerous people come in there and commit burglaries uh, and other offenses. So it is a problem over there. So, uh, you know, I, I can't comment on, you know, what George saw or what George was thinking or what anybody saw or what they were thinking. But I know that George Zimmerman, um, if several Asians had broken in places there and he saw an Asian walking around, he'd probably say, well, wait a minute. I recognize most of the people that live here, and I don't recognize that person. You know, it's, uh, but my only thing, my only problem is every, everything I hear in the news is absolutely wrong. That was George yelling for help for at least 40 seconds. Someone came out their door. They saw George on the bottom being beaten. Uh, he had a broken nose, injuries to the back of his head. Um, you know, I, I, I just don't know. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> Did he talk to you any that night when he met? His, his wife called. Uh, he did not talk to me that night. Now you understand that we're, you know, also investigating yes, this yes. part and parcel from the Sanford Police Department. Yes. So, uh, just so you know that we haven't made any conclusions or decisions, anything like that. We're working on it. Right. It's going to be a process because it's a mess. You know, and every day it appears to be more of a mess. Right. Yeah. You, know, uh, you know, I understand that. I just wish at some point. You all investigate, get every single fact, and have a media event and say, listen, this is exactly what happened. I mean, we've investigated everything. Because every single thing that I hear on the news is not true. So, Well, certainly our goal is, get to, is to get to the truth, mm -hmm. obviously. So... Um, Okay, I guess you were talking with Investigator Ardingstall a few minutes ago, and I think you also stated in here, but I want to reiterate that you indicated that you listened to the 911 tape, and the voice that you're hearing in the background is, in fact, your son. It is absolutely my son. Initially, when Mrs. Martin, or her attorneys, uh, said that it, it was their son, I thought, well... You know, she's under stress like everyone else, and I thought the tape might be, you know, not very good. When I listened to the tape, it, it was surprisingly good to me. And that was George. And he was, uh, I mean, he was not just yelling. He was, sounded like he was screaming for his life. Uh, so, that's... Okay. Um, is there anything else you want to tell us, or have any questions for us that we possibly answer for you? <laughs> Not unless you can make all this uh, end. I don't know. You know. Do you all have any questions? That well, I mean, like I said, we're just, we're in the very beginnings of our investigations, like I said, part and parcel from, from the Sanford Police Department. So, you know, we've got a lot of work to do. Yeah. I just hope at some point, the last thing, you know, I, all of us are getting death threats. We're, it's me, my wife, and her mother, who is in very bad shape. We're going from a hotel to friends to, uh, and I guess a group is going to come and try and arrest George, and they're going to come and do this and do that. And I just hope, when this is finished, that someone from some office will stand up and say, listen, this is what our investigation reveals. Not just no charges are being brought, because if that happens, then there's just going to be, well, we don't trust the Sanford police, we don't trust the state of Florida, we don't trust, uh, you know. Are you documenting these death threats and so forth with, with 
police agencies? I, I went to the police station and reported it. Okay. I've changed my phone number and we're not at the residence. I mean, we have to go back and, but we're not staying there now. Okay. Uh, you know, if it were myself, I'd just keep myself locked in there, but my mother-in-law particularly is, I well, can't do that. You have, you, you know, you have a right to be safe if you have any calls or people coming and harassing you or whatever, pick up the phone and call the police. Yes. That's what you need to do. And if nothing else, it's documented. Well, on the internet, they put out information about relatives and our home address and, you know, so we're trying to stay, you know, I, I can't stay in a hotel forever, you know, financially right. and right. for every other reason. Sure. But, uh, no, I, I, I just, do, do you all have any other? No, I mean, uh, like I said, we're, we're working on it. And I appreciate you coming in and speaking to us. Well, uh, you know, I, I just don't, <laughs> there's nothing I can do, you know, right. except look at the news and then all of a sudden, well, maybe he was on patrol with somebody else and something else happened or, you know, I mean, I don't know what, but every day almost. You're probably best served just ignoring the newspapers and the televisions for now. Well, you know, that's what, uh, that's what I did for a long time. I mean, I, I hesitate coming here or going anywhere. But it just seems like, you know, it's an avalanche and I'm standing at the bottom of it saying, you know, that doesn't look that bad, you know, and then I look up and it's a little bit bigger and, well. Yeah, I understand. You know, I just know what to do. Okay. Agent Crosby, you have anything else? No. Okay, I'm going to conclude this uh, conversation with the time is 2.38 p.m. Today's date is March 24, 2012. Speaking to Special Agent Supervisor David Lee with the Florida Department of Law Enforcement. Uh, it is approximately 10.47 a.m. Uh, also present in the room is Special Agent Johnny Batsler with the Florida Department of Law Enforcement and Lieutenant Mike Turner. Michael Turner. Michael Turner with the uh, uh, Seminole County Fire Department. Sanford Fire Department. Sanford Fire Department. Okay, I'm sorry. Sorry, okay. Sanford Fire Department. Um, Lieutenant Turner, as you can see, the conversation we're having is being tape recorded. Yes. Okay. Uh, before we get started, can I get you to raise your right hand, please? Sure. You solemnly swear or affirm the statement you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Okay. Lieutenant Turner, for the record, would you state and spell your full name? Uh, Michael L. Turner. It's M I C H A E L. Uh, middle name's Leon, L E O N, Turner. T U R N E R. Okay, you are currently employed with the Sanford Fire Department. Okay, and in what is your position? I'm a fire lieutenant. For assigned to where? Station 38, Engine 38. Okay, and those duties include what, what is the duties? Uh, lieutenant is to supervise the station and supervise the personnel that are there. So, any response that you go to, you're the only scene supervisor? Um, if, yes, if I am dispatched to that call, sometimes our rescue does go by itself. Okay. Um, and ultimately, at extension, I'm responsible for what they do, but unless I'm there, then yes, I'm supervisor. Okay. On February 26, 2012, uh, Engine 38, uh, EMS 38, was dispatched to uh, emergency medical call and retreat view circle. Mm -hmm. You recall that call? Yes. Did you respond with it? Yes, I did. Okay. Um, from the moment you get the call, just kind of give me a narrative of, of what you heard and seen. Received the call, uh, everyone got into the units, and we rode code three uh, because it was, a, it was dispatched as a shooting. So we responded code three to the call, um, went through the gated area, um, responded directly to the call. Upon arrival, everyone got out of their units, um, pulled out the EMS equipment as we always do, approached the scene, um, went to the first police officer mm -hmm. that was there to figure out the, what we had, what situation we had, and he notified us that he had, had one shooting victim, uh, which was to my left, and then they had a minor victim that was there had someone who had injuries in the back of the police car. Do you recall who the officer is you approached? Uh, no. Okay. There were 
about um, guessing like eight cars and okay. a lot of police officers. Uh, okay. um, as I as we heard the shooting victim, um, most of my EMS personnel went towards that, and um, my control is safety. So I'm watching everything, you know, even in the dark to see what's going on. Our EMS personnel approached the victim uh, who was laying on his back, and as they approached him, they checked for a pulse put the monitor on him and there was no activity and our medic, who was our highest medical authority at the scene, pronounced him dead. Okay. And that individual was Trayvon Martin? Yes. Okay. We didn't know his name at the time, right. uh, which we learned later that was Trayvon Martin. Okay. And uh, as soon as that, as soon as uh, they, he had pronounced him deceased, we knew that it was a crime scene, so we gingerly removed ourselves, got back, and that time one of, um, I think it was, Firefighter O'Rourke and Firefighter uh, Livingston were treating uh, Zimmerman, which I didn't know his name at the time, but they were treating him for lacerations on the back of his head and some other things that they, that's in their report. Okay. Um, once they had treated him and were comfortable that he didn't need to be transported, um, we finished up our paperwork, got back on our units, and went back into service. Okay, while you were there, did you hear Mr. Martin make any statements? Mr. Martin? Trayvon Martin. Did you hear No. Him? No statement. Do you, do you know if he made any statements? No. Okay. Uh, the tra this is Trayvon Martin, the deceased okay. individual? So he never, he was never conscious of this? No, what I'm no. Um, in fact, um, before, right before we left the scene, I had one of the police officers, and I'm really bad with names after all these years, but I, I, re I recognized him, asked, um, he did ask me if, he should fill out an exposure report because he was performing CPR prior to our arrival and he'd done lip-to-lip -lip contact, which is a standard procedure if we ever do that with infants or anything like that. We always fill out an exposure report. So I do know they work in CPR. He was okay. working CPR for uh, In reference to Mr. Zimmerman, did he make any statements that you were... I didn't know you had any contact with him. Okay. So you were just kind of... Yeah, the information okay. from his injuries I got secondhand from okay. the EMS personnel. How, how long have you been a firefighter, sir? Uh, almost 25 years. How long you? Getting close, aren't you? Yeah. Okay. All right. Your turn. Um, the victim, did you uh, go to the victim at all? I was in the proximity of where, where they were working. I was within like three or four feet. Can you describe anything further about the victim other than laying on his back? Uh, no, I couldn't even, I know he had two layers of like a shirt and, and now they're saying a hoodie, but I saw the two layers of clothes. Um, it was a light colored shirt, if I remember right, and he had pants on. But um, other than that, he was, you know, completely supine, you know, in a prone position. And, um, nothing that seemed, from where I was standing, I'd seen anything out of the ordinary. Uh, what about uh, Zimmerman? Did you see uh, Zimmerman? Uh, from a distance, just just uh, the frontal part of his head just sticking out of the car, the back of the police car, just sitting there. Do you have anything further, uh, clothing or, or facial? Or no, anything? I didn't get close enough to this many years. I kind of supervise the scene more than anything you let the EMS personnel handle what they have there. So as a lieutenant on scene, you're basically looking out, for, you're letting your firefighters and EMS people do their job and you're kind of looking out for them. Yeah, I get them whatever they need. If they need more equipment or anything or need more resources, I'll call them. And then same as our battalion, he showed up because of the incident. Right, you know, so we kind of step into that, yeah. pick up somebody heavy if I have to, you know, whatever. Okay, so your focus off is on... They take care of your firefighters mm -hmm. when they take care of whoever's hurt or injured. Yeah. All right. So you have uh, Lieutenant, is there anything that we haven't asked you about that you feel is very pertinent and we'll put, we'll put on the record? No. The only thing that I would would have wanted on would, uh, was the that the one police officer. I know it's going to get lost in the mix, but there, you know, I think it was very admirable for him to be working CPR on before we got there. You know, without using you know, equipment and everything else. I mean, he was really giving it a good effort. He just did it. Yep. So uh, that was very admirable. All right. It is now uh, 10.55 a.m., and that concludes this interview. This is Wes Gertz from the Sanford Police Department. Today's date is Thursday, March the 1st, 2012.
Good luck in the telephone conversation and interview with. The time is now. Nine oh eight p.m. Okay, I'm ready for you now. From the beginning. Okay. okay. Okay, this occurred on the on Sunday the twenty sixth, correct? Yes. Remember what time it was, Marlos? Um, when I looked at my at the clock, it was like a little after seven. Okay, could you start from? Um, can you say your first last name and spell your last name for me? Uh huh. Uh. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, from the beginning, which you know being taped. Okay, you ready? Yep. Okay, go ahead. What exactly happened? Okay, so I was making dinner, uh -huh. and um, I heard a noise. It was a screaming noise, and I thought it was kids playing in the back, as they normally do. And um, it sounded like somebody saying either no or um, it sounded like oh. And um, they were they were running in the back. Um, I came to my glass sliding doors went um, the window. I looked, peeped out, and I couldn't really see back there because there was a lot of light contact there. All I saw was arms flailing. I'm thinking it's kids out there that's rough, 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 rough how they played around. As I, at the same time I peeked out, my neighbor across the street where the incident occurred on his lawn he came out, he came out on his porch, he was like, yo, what's going on out there? What's going on? Your I'm going to call 911. Is, is your neighbor, who's your neighbor? Um, I think it's Twin Lane okay. that he lives. Yeah. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think you're right. Okay. Um, so he came out and he came out to his porch the same time I'm looking out and he said, I'm going to, I'm going to, um, What's going on out there? What's going on? I'm going to call 911. So at the same time he said that. I'm still thinking it's the kids that's out there playing around. And when I came to the stove, took the stove off, that's when I heard the shot. Okay. And um, I came back, came back over to the window, like five seconds. Five seconds later, I came back over to the door, and then I saw flashlights, and it was it was the police. Okay, did you could could you able to were you able to interpret any of the conversation that these folks were having or the yelling, any of the words that were spoken? No, the only thing I heard was that it was really garbled. You couldn't hear what the person was saying. Okay. Um. So you have no idea how this might have begun from the beginning? No. Okay, did you recognize either one of them? No, I could, didn't see. Could you identify either one of them? I know just from what everybody's saying, uh -huh. who, who did it, but... Uh-huh, by the time... Um, I, I didn't see them back there. Okay. Do you know if anybody else, did you see anybody else out there besides those two and your neighbor? Um, I know it's peaked out, and a lady right across from me, I know that person peaked out also. Would you know her name? I don't know her name. Okay, I think I have her name, but I'll just see if you know who she was. Did you see any children out there at all? No, I didn't see any children. It had just gotten dark. Normally kids are out there, but... I, I can't recall that any kids were out there at the time it occurred. Maybe a kid walking his dog, perhaps? I can't remember seeing that. Okay. Um, I was going to ask something else here. Um, okay, well, that basically covers it. Um, was your sister with you when this happened? She was upstairs. Okay, she indicated to me that she saw somebody chasing somebody else. Okay, have you spoken to her about this whole thing? No. Okay. Um, I mean, we talked about we talked about it, but I don't know. I don't know what she saw. Okay. Well, like I said earlier in the evening, I interviewed her. Um, 
next to her car in front of your residence and um, she told me that she saw somebody chasing somebody else and that was that, that was pretty significant um, so perhaps I'll be calling her again for, for another interview would that be okay with you if I re-interview you in this whole thing would that be okay yeah that's fine oh, okay yeah. I was making sure. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Okay, because we're trying to get to basically get to the bottom of it. Yeah. Did you go to the meeting? Yes, I did. That's why um, I spoke to Officer Robert. Oh, Captain O'Connor. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh-huh. I spoke to him after it, afterwards because you know they were saying if anybody knows anything. And I didn't think it was worth anything, but I was like, hey, I just want to let you know what I know. Oh, it's, it's 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 very it's very relevant, and I really appreciate you talking to him. Oh, oh yeah, no problem. Okay, well, I will be in touch with you, and you'll. You know, I guess everybody will find out eventually what the end of the investigation turns into. And um, yeah, um, if anything else I can do for you, you got my cell phone number and your call ID. I hope. And um, yeah. um, if you need anything at all, just give me a call. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a good night. You too. Okay. Bye bye. This includes the interview. It's now 9.14 p.m. Today's date is March 20th, 2012. The time is approximately 4.15 p.m. next hell time. Present is Investigator Jim Post with the State Attorney's Office, 18th Judicial Circuit. Myself, John Batchelor, a Special Agent with the Florida Department of Law Enforcement, as well as... Yes. And on... February 26 of uh, 2012, was you home? Yes. Who all was home with you that night? It was me, my niece, my sister, and her um, little <coughs> girlfriend. Can you, do you have some names? Okay. okay. Could you go over the events as, as you remember for, the, for that night? Yeah. Um, I was in the kitchen cooking. The back, the window was half open. This door was closed. And um, I heard something that sounded like some kind of noise. You really couldn't make it out. It sounds like a kid. Um, and they were making this weird noise so I looked out the window and I really couldn't see anything um, then I came over to the door and I can see what looked like figures but I really couldn't make it out I couldn't make it out make out if it was kids or what All I saw was it looked like figures and it looked like arms and at the same time I was looking out well it's really dark back there so if there's no lights on in the back you can't hardly see And um, I remember my light was on, but I can't remember. I don't think my neighbor's lights were on because I couldn't see the figures. That's why I couldn't make them out. At the same time I was looking out, then my neighbor, he came out at the same time, and he was like, yo, what's going on out there? What's going on out there? What what neighbor? And he said, I'm going to call 911. At the same time he said that and he closed his door, I said, well, okay, well, let me take the stove off and then I was going to go back out there because I'm still thinking it's kids out there because just like 30 minutes ago it was kids out there and it it was light. It was raining, but it was still kids out there. So I came back to the stove and by the time I came back to the stove to take it off, that's when the shot went off. And then I went upstairs and I was like, I think this person is shot outside. I was telling my sister. In the meantime, my niece and her friend was out, was looking out the front. And I guess the cop cars were already there because they were looking out through my niece's window. They didn't see anything that was going on in the back. They were looking out in the front, so they didn't see anything as far as anything that happened in the back. So when I came upstairs and I told her, and she was like, oh, I thought you dropped something. And I was like, no, I didn't drop anything. I think somebody's head in the back. So when I came downstairs and we looked out again, the police were out there. And that was it. Just to 
The, the purpose and scope of our inquiry today is to conduct an independent follow-up with regards to the shooting investigation that has been conducted by the Sanford Police Department your community. The inquiry is being conducted by agents of the Florida Department of Law Enforcement as well as the Office of State Attorney's Office. And we understand that you provided a statement to the Sanford Police Department. Uh, was it that same night? No, um, I think it was the day that they had the town hall meeting and they were talking about the shooting. They said if anybody else knew anything was to say. I didn't think what I saw was a big deal because I really didn't see anything. But I was like, hey, you know, I just wanted to tell you this is what I saw. I had pulled one of the investigators aside. I think it was his name began with a Robert. I have his card somewhere. And I was like, I just want to tell you what I know. And he was like, okay, well, I'll have the person who's doing the investigation of the case give you a call. And that's when uh, Chris called me. And that was, again, subsequent to that night. Right. Is that the only statement you've provided as it relates to the, the events that took place? Mm-hmm. Yes. Have you spoken to uh, anyone else regarding the case? Um, the only other person I spoke to was the person from World, World News, and his name is Matt. I remember. I can't remember his last name. Okay. And is that consistent with the information you provided prior to the audio recording? I told them that, and then I remember at the end of the interview, he asked me, did I know George? And I said, um, you know, I've talked to him a couple of times, and he, he said, well, do you think um, he would have done this? And I said, no, I don't think he would have done this. You know, I mean, he's always been okay with me. So that was the last thing I remember he asked me. As you mentioned earlier in your statement, you were in the kitchen originally cooking. Mm -hmm. Can you describe where your kitchen is in your house? Uh, it's right there. And the window in your kitchen faces which way? Um, it faces the back. To the rear of your house? To the rear. And what would you consider this area behind your house? Um, the rear? Is that a dog walk? Is that what most... What, what? Yeah. That's I, I like the water. pathway. Okay. Yeah. All right. Can you draw a picture? I'm going to give you a piece of paper and a pen. Can you draw to the best of your ability? As you explained when you looked out the window, what you first saw. And then if there was any other time you looked out, if they moved or the things that had occurred moved? Well, I didn't look out the window there because I couldn't see. I looked out here. Okay. I can see. I heard, I just heard when I was in <clears throat> there, I heard something that sound like moaning or it was some kind of noise the person was making. It sounded like a kid. I thought it was kids. Okay. Because I was going to go so out. So you came here. I came here. To your sliding glass door. To my sliding glass door, and I looked out right there where you're holding it. I looked out there. But because there was hardly any lights out there, I couldn't see anything, but it looked, like, looked, like, it looked like arms. That's fine. Can, can you show where you think that, the, as you mentioned, the two arms or the two objects you saw, can you place those as it relates to your house? And you know, if if this, if, and any other landmark that you see out there, you, would you like me to open this so you can get a better idea? And you can use uh, an X, okay, uh, a zero to an X, whatever you would prefer to to indicate the figures or the person. And and if you would. Just show your house and, and just label your house and then how you would be looking, just so we as the person knows. Okay, I'll try. <clears throat> I'm not a good drawer. Okay, so this is my house. Yeah, 
your house. Do you need to make a correction? I, I'm trying to put the other two houses because it was it's, it's over at my it was over by my neighbors where I saw it. Okay, the, to to the best of your ability is all we're asking. Okay, so I'm thinking that they were here somewhere. It looked like Arms was here somewhere. It look like arms are there somewhere. Are they in front of someone's house that you're referring to? If when you look, I us looking remember across. looking out, if when I remember looking outside, I'm here. See the metal, and we can go there if you want. We can. But, okay. You want to go there now? Uh, or, if it will help you. We were. I was looking right. It looked like they were. This catty corner to where I'm at. Okay, and is, is, do you know anybody over there? Um, no. Okay. All right. No. See where the, that guy, his, um, his back is screened in? It, it was, uh -huh. okay. It wasn't, it wasn't on the pavement, more like in the middle where the hedges are, but on the, on the pavement. That's okay. where I saw. All right, she's describing the end apartment. And let me get back where the... She's uh, describing, as we're standing here, the end apartment, which is screened. And you are describing what you saw as being closest to the pathway or sidewalk. Yes. Is, the, is an accurate account of what you're saying? Yes. Okay. Yes. And she's going to uh, attempt to depict to that in her, in her drawing. <clears throat> so then, and then the first house is here. And then the other house is here. This is the hedge. Okay. As you indicated, the one with the screen porch, can you indicate which one in your drawing is the screen porch? Okay. It's more like here. Okay. Can, it, it is, now, did you look a second time? Yeah. Did you look out the window a second time? No. Um, well, after it happened, yes. Okay, what, what did you see there? Um, I saw the body. Can you describe that, what you saw? Um, the person was, the body was face, face down, and it was a cop there shining a, uh, Torchlight, and then um, I think like a couple seconds later, there was another cop that came, maybe a couple, and then they um, started doing CPR. And this was after you heard the gunshot. This was after, yeah. Okay. And is that the only time you looked after your first account when you saw what you considered the figures, the arms? Oh yes, yeah. No other time did you look? No. Going back, are, are you finished with your... Yeah. Okay, will you initial and, and date it today, please? March 20th. Thank you. Huh? Going back to your initial account, as you indicated today, you indicated noise sounds like a kid. Could you make out anything that was said? I couldn't make it out. It was garbled. 
I couldn't I couldn't make up what the person was saying trying to say. Okay, how would how would you describe the sound? It sound like um, a groan or a moan or something. I. At any time, could you make out anything that was being said? No. With when you come back in or did not look. Can you identify any clothing of the people you initially saw who you felt? When I first? Mm -hmm. No. Any it height? was dark. I couldn't, no. I couldn't tell you if they were black. I couldn't tell you if they were white. It was just so dark all day. I just saw movement. It looked like arms movement. That's all I saw. You had mentioned your neighbor. Mm -hmm. Can you explain to me a little more about that? How did you know it was your neighbor? Well, it may not have been him. I knew it was a guy, and he came out to the porch, and he said, what's going on out there? He said it twice, and then he said, I'm going to go, I'm going to call the police. Then he went back into his house. He closed the door at the same time. I went back to the stove to take the stove off because I was going to go back up because I'm still on the impression it was kids. Did this neighbor who you're referring to has come out at the same time you were looking out the window? Yes. Or was this a second time you were looking out the window that you no. saw? No, I only looked out the one time. And again, how do you know it was? It may not have been him. I just assumed it was him because he's the person that lives there. Lives where? Where did he come out? He is, came is out, he, that's your the house? first one, the second house. The second house, that house. And looking at your picture that you just drew and initialed, you have the word second house on a house here. Is that the house you're referring to as being? Yes. And then a person come out of that house? Yes. Can you write on there an initial, please? That, that house. Because you indicate you know that's his house because he lives across, correct? Right. Okay. And initial? Yes. Okay. Do you know what he was wearing? Um, if I recall, it was something dark on the top and it looked like sweatpants on the bottom. If I remember correctly. And what did he say again? He said, what's going on? What, what is going on out there? Was there any response to that? I didn't hear anything. Did you talk to him? No. Did you see him again? No. Going back to the figures, you saw no clothing description, correct? Right. You could not see if there was anything in anybody's hands because you mentioned arms. Nope. When you heard, as you described, the pop, are you familiar with a gun? No. Nope. Or gunshot? Not a gunshot. But when you heard the pop, you assumed it was a, a gunshot? Yes. Did you go back to the window and look again? Yes. Immediately after you heard the shot? As soon as I heard the shot, I went back and looked. And what did you see? I saw the body. Did you see anybody else? I can't remember seeing anybody else. At this time, the light was on, so you could see. A light was on? There was a light on in the back. I think, from what I remember, the light was on at the time.
It wasn't on before. What happened next? Then I went upstairs. I told my sister, I think somebody's shot outside. And the body as you're describing it, that you saw immediately after the gunshot, how was it positioned? Um, it looked like, I'm trying to remember, it looked like it wasn't straight down, but it was down, and it looked like the legs was like, like this, sort of like, sort of like in a running position, but it was like this. Are you describing a face down position or face up position? Face down. And you only seen as you are describing the body. Right. No one else at that point. No one. Do you know what the body or the person was wearing? I remember a jacket and sweatpants and black sneakers. Do you remember colors of the sweatpants or the jacket? Um, I think the sweatpants was gray and the jacket was a reddish color, it wasn't bright red, but it was um, in the red family, I guess, red kind of pinkish, maroonish kind of looking color. And who are you describing the clothing for? It was the body. That's the only, I didn't see a second person. The only other person I saw was the cop. From the time you heard, as you indicated, noise that sounds like a kid, to the time that you looked out the second time after the shot, do you know about how many minutes, seconds that that would have been? And it's an approximate. From the time I looked out till the time I heard the pop. And you looked out a second time. Um, it couldn't have been that long. I can't, I don't know, I can't remember. It might have been a couple minutes. In, in that time, it's describing the time from the first noise that you heard sounds like a kid, as you indicated. Couldn't make out the noise from that time to the time that you looked out after the shot, about two minutes. From the time I was in the kitchen to when the shot went off, is that what you're asking? I think so. I think what I'm asking is you indicated you were in the kitchen and you heard what you thought was some noise outside. Right. I believe you indicated as you walked over, you looked out and saw that. Right. Subsequently, you heard what you thought was a pop. Right. And then you came back to look. Right. In what kind of time frame? Oh, by the time I heard the <coughs> noise, I walked over looked out, you know, whoever came out mm -hmm. at the same time, you know, he said his feel, I was like, okay, let me go take the stove off. By the time I went back to the stove, it, the pop happened. So it couldn't have been any more than less than two minutes. It couldn't have been that long. There's no way it was, or maybe it was, but it was, to me it was instantaneously. I went to the window, I mean, I was over there cooking, Heard the noise, walked over here, 
we must have been looking for about, I don't know, 15 seconds, 20 seconds, came back. By the time I reached back to the stove to take the stove off, that's when the shot went off. So, it couldn't have been more than between those two things before the shot went off. It couldn't have been more than, I don't know, 60 seconds. Okay. Did you observe anybody uh, doing any resuscitation or work on the victim? Yes. Who was that? Um, I believe it was a. I believe it was a female cop. And and did you see the position of of the body at that point? Um, it was face up. I can't remember how the legs were positioned. So when you originally saw the body, it was face down? Yes. Do you know how it got turned face up? No. Okay. Do you know what race the body was? Uh, not until after I saw it, because you could see the legs. And, and what race? So you could see the skin. It was African American, so you could see. And when you first saw it and it was face down, you said kind of like a running position. Do you describe it? But h how would you describe that? The hands were. Oh, I was trying to remember. Uh, I think the hands. I don't know if I can re even remember seeing the hands, but I think it was um, like in uh, this kind of position, but I really can't, I don't know if that's accurate, I don't know if I can remember. Not, not sure. Yeah, in other words. not sure. Okay. <coughs> that was, that was all right. Okay. okay. Um, Did you know anyone, have you seen, I'm uh, assuming you saw some media reports of the event. Uh -huh. Did you know either one that the media has been showing? Are you, have you seen either of the, the, the two persons? Um, I've seen George. Okay. Zimmerman, Mr. Zimmerman, I've seen him. And, and how do you know him as? I don't know him personally, but um, when he was first, getting the um, neighborhood watch back up he was coming around and asking um, for email addresses so you can be included on what was going on as far as neighborhood watch and he introduced himself to me at the time and he was you know telling me about it and um, so we can I can come and join one of the meetings How long have you lived here? Uh, it would be four years. Nothing. If you would raise your right hand. Mm -hmm. Do you swear the statement that you provided is the truth? Uh, yes. This concludes the interview at 4.44 p.m. next tell time. This is us get us through with the Sanford Police Department. Today's date is March the 1st. It's a... It's a Thursday. Yeah. Correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. I am located at... What's the address here, ma'am? Okay. Were you home Sunday night, ma'am? Were you home Sunday night? Yes, I was. Can you tell me what you saw? I saw two guys running. Okay. I couldn't tell you who was in front, who was behind. I was looking out the kitchen window and had something on the stove, went to the sliding glass door, saw a fist fight, just fist. I don't know okay. who was... Who was hitting who? Mm -hmm. Went back to turn the stove off. And by the time I walked back, I heard the shot. Okay. That you was didn't, it. You just saw the chase. You couldn't tell who no. was in front, who was no. in back. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because I had the the blinds just partially open. It wasn't all the way. Did open. you hear any arguing? Any yelling? Yeah. 
no. Yeah. All I heard was no, no. That was it. And I heard the shot. Was it raining? Yes. Heavily or drizzling? It was wet. I know. I was sitting out there for a while just before it happened. Um, it was on and off. Okay. Any other problems in the neighborhood as far as with your unit over here that you know of? No. Break-ins, that kind of stuff? No. Okay. All right. I'm going to now conclude this interview. I don't think I started the time, but the time is now uh, it was 8 o'clock. Oh, 7 o'clock. Mm-hmm. Some best to get us here back on tape with... Uh, one more time, they were chasing each other, correct? Mm-hmm. How far away from each other would you say? I'm going to step away from you. I think right there. About here. Is this a car length, more or less, would you say? Eight feet, ten feet? Ten feet, about, yeah, right? About ten feet. About ten feet. Okay, thank you so much. Okay. This investigator, Serena, the Sanford Police Department, today's date is Friday, March the 9th. 2012. It's now 6:26 p.m. We're located at the Sanford Police Station, 815 West 13th Street, City of Sanford, Summer County, Florida. Here to discuss Sanford case number 2012-501136. The uh, shooting death of a Trayvon Benjamin Martin. Present in the room is. State your name, ma'am. Uh, your date of birth and your address. Okay. Sanford, Florida. 2771. Okay. Yeah, and your phone number. Thank you. Thanks for coming today, by the way. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Um, we're here discussing this that occurred in your neighborhood on Sunday, the 26th of February. Mm-hmm. Were you home that day at about 7 p.m.? Yes. Can you tell me exactly what you saw, what you heard? All I saw was a glance running. I, I kind of more heard it than saw it. I heard it because I only glanced. I threw something in a chair and I happened to be seeing them coming. So that's all I really saw. Turned around, walked out the room, and I think I heard either no or yo, and that's it. Then when I went back to the back room, I heard the shot. Okay, Did you could you identify anybody that you saw or heard? No, no I, I don't know what either of them looks like. Um, well, prior to, I still don't know what George looks like. Okay. The direction in which you saw these two individuals running, was it towards your house or away from your house, towards the T or towards the street? Towards the T. Okay, so it would be uh, actually away from your house. Correct, because you live right there on that that, uh, that row on retreat view, correct? Mm-hmm. So your house would have been, they weren't running in the direction of your house, they were running in the opposite direction, is that correct? No. Okay, which way were they? No, they were going this way. Okay, which would be towards your house? Towards your T. Towards your T. Okay, mm-hmm. away from your house then. Because your house is in relation to the T. Were they running? Okay, so because you live right, if they were, if they kept on running, would they, would they have passed your house? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, I'm trying to think of where your house is in relation to the T. Did you? Um, this is the T, though. Okay, the T's here. My house is like here. Okay. They were coming this way. This is the T. Okay, so this is, okay, so you live directly across. I was looking from the opposite side, so I was walking the street. That makes sense. Okay. So, how far away were you from this whole thing, would you say? Approximately in feet? Hard to say. I mean, I was upstairs. They were downstairs, okay. so. So you're kind of looking down on it? Yeah. Okay. I was just glancing, so mm-hmm. it's just a glance. Um, so you couldn't tell me how, no. how this whole thing started? Oh, no. You couldn't tell me how, who was beating up on who, who no, initiated no. the fight? No. None of that. No. Okay. But I know I feel horrible because okay. I was just sitting out there reading for like an hour and a half. I came inside. And the other thing is, I took my contacts off. So I either wear contacts or glasses, and I didn't have either of them when I went back into the room. And it it was very dark out there. It was. So, you know, it's just, I feel horrible horrible about the whole thing. You know, I see them, you know, you see this kid out there, and nobody went to help. And I just, it's just horrible, you know. I just feel like if I had went out there, maybe... I could have given CPR if I had stayed out there five minutes later reading the book or if I didn't take my contacts out, I could see more. It's just, you know, it's horrible. I got you. Okay, I'm going to put this interview. It is now 6.30, actually.
Today's date is March 20th, 2012, 728 Nextel time. I'm here with Jim Post, State Attorney's Office, 18th Judicial Circuit, and myself, John Batchelor, a Special Agent with the Florida Department of Law Enforcement. The purpose and scope of our inquiry today is to conduct an independent follow-up with regards to the shooting investigation that has been conducted by the Sanford Police Department in your community. This inquiry is being conducted by agents of the Florida Department of Law Enforcement as well as investigators with the Office of the State Attorney. Uh, on February 26, 2012, an, uh, an event occurred here at the complex. Uh, could you go through? What, what if you, were you here that day? I was here that okay. day. Um, I was sitting out back for about an hour and a half. It was rainy. It was getting dark. I was out there reading. I want to say maybe around 6.30 I got up and came inside. was down here for a couple minutes and I went upstairs. I took my, was my daughter and her friends was here so they were upstairs talking talk with them for a minute then I went into the bathroom I took my contacts out I went into my sister's room which is the back bedroom put something down and picked something up and just glancing I saw something out there I can tell you if it was a man a woman a kid black or white I couldn't tell you because it was dark and plus I didn't have my contacts on or glasses and it was a glance and I walked back out as fast as I put something down and I picked something up. I walked right back out of the room and by the time I got to the hallway, I heard either either yo or no. By the time I got to the front room, I heard the shot. And it sounded like it was coming from the front because we had the windows all open upstairs. So it sounded like it was from the front. So I looked out the front window and I didn't see anything. And I was just getting ready to yell downstairs at my sister who was downstairs and what did you drop? Because it sounded like she dropped something and that by, th by that time she came upstairs and she was like, I think somebody got shot out back. I came downstairs and I saw the body down there. And then I asked her, I said, should I go out there? Because I wanted to go out there and see if maybe someone needed help or something. And as fast as I said that, I saw the policeman with the flashlight. And that was basically it for me for the night. Okay. As you mentioned, came downstairs and seen the body. Mm -hmm. Describe exactly. And where were you standing? I was right here. And is this your rear door? Mm hmm Yes. Looking to the rear? Correct. What do you call this uh, here? Is this Glass a, sliding no, door. I'm sorry, what do you call the, the area out there? Is there a term that the, is that the dog walk, as some people call it? It's just it, a walkway. Okay, so you were looking mm -hmm. out facing the mm -hmm. walkway. Mm -hmm. Okay. What did you see? I saw the, the person lying on the, the ground. How was the person lying? I want to say they were on their back. I want to say they were on their back. What were they wearing? It looked like a light colored shirt, white sneakers, and I looked like sweatpants where one was up and one leg was down. That's what it looked like. No hoodie or anything like that. But then again, I didn't have my contacts on or glasses. So. Could you see this person? Could you describe how this person was laying? Head facing. So it wasn't facing that way, it was facing that way. Um, I want to say it was on the back, on his back. How was the hands and feet positioned? I can tell you. Did you see anybody else? No, I saw the flashlight from here. You can only see so far, you can't see back this way, but I did see the flashlight. I couldn't tell you who was full in the flashlight until I saw the cop walk to the side. And I don't know if it was him or not, but I know he did have a flashlight in his hand. You mentioned your sister's room. Mm -hmm. What side of the house is your sister's room? The back end facing the walkway. Okay. And is that the window that you looked out? Mm -hmm. 
Why did you look out that window? I thought I saw something. I, you know, it's like you, in your vision, your, um, your vision, you see something. So that's all it was. It was a glance. I thought I saw something. And you're, you're describing you saw something. What mm -hmm. did you think you saw? A person. It was a person. But I couldn't tell you again if it was. Could a you male tell what the person was doing? I thought it was running. I more heard it than see it. I could hear something, and that's what made me glance. The, the feet running. That's what I heard. So that would that that just made me glance up when I just got something and I walked back out there. And what did you see when you glanced down? I, someone. It was nobody was on the floor yet. It wasn't on the floor. I just know I saw a person out there. I can tell you who it was though. Okay, you describe, you heard the feet running mm -hmm. in your statement today mm -hmm. is why you looked mm -hmm. out the window. Mm -hmm. What direction could you describe that is happening? I thought they were coming this way. And you're indicating, if you're looking out your window, you're indicating left to right, looking out your rear yes. door. Mm -hmm. Can you describe anything about that person or no. that object that you... No, because I didn't have glasses or contacts on. At that moment when you heard what you, again, in your statement today is running and you looked out, did you hear any anything uh, being said? No, I didn't. Not until I walked out and I was in the hallway. Which hallway? Where were you at? I'm sorry. Upstairs. Okay, so when you walked out of the room in the hallway and you indicated you had the windows open, was mm -hmm. the window open in the front? Yes. Upper? It was and what did you hear? I said it was either yo or no. But then again, I was upstairs. Daughter had friends up there, uh, so. This yo or no? Mm -hmm. You believe it came from the outside? Yes. Mm -hmm. In the direction of the person or the, the where you look up when it? I didn't think of any direction as to where it was coming from at all. But, no, it never. But crossed. not inside here? No, it wasn't in here. Did it appear to be a male or female voice? I would say a male voice. Did you hear anything after that? Then I heard the, the shot, which I didn't think at first was a shot, like I said, because it sounded like she dropped something. And I did look out the window. I thought it was a shot, but then again, I didn't think it was a shot because I looked out the window and I thought, well, there's nothing happening out front, you know. So I was getting ready to yell down to her, what did you drop? We have a doggy gate we keep up for him, for him not to go upstairs, and it sounded like that fell over. That's what it sounded like. When you came back down after you heard the shot, mm -hmm. are you familiar with a, fu a gun and what it sounds like? No. What makes you believe it was a shot then? Like I said, it sounded like it, but it didn't, because it sounded like a pop more than okay. anything, and it didn't sound loud enough to be a gunshot. But then again, you know, it made me look out the window because I knew it was something. It was a, it was down here. No, upstairs. So when I, when I walked out the room, and I heard the yo or no, I went to my room in the front. By the time I got to the front of in my room upstairs, that's when I heard the shot, and that's when I looked out the window. Which window? The front window. And you saw. Nothing. The street was empty. There was nothing going on out front. And that's when you indicated you came? No, I didn't come downstairs yet. That's, I was getting ready to iron. I was getting ready to start my ironing. That's when she came upstairs and said, Okay. I think somebody got shot. That's when I came downstairs. So everything I seen or heard was from upstairs. Back okay. from one end to the other end. And this person you described is on the ground. Mm hmm Did you see anybody else? No. Not initially, when he was there by himself, no. Not until the cops came.
Did you see any flashlights? Anybody with flashlights at any I, time? I did see when I was down here and I asked her, I said, should I go out there and see what's going on? She was, she was really scared. I said, she said no. And I saw the light. But it, whoever was holding the light was off to the side. And then I saw the cop walk in looking at the, the body with the flashlight. How long was that from the time that you heard the shot? It seemed like immediately, immediately the cops were here. Okay. From the time you heard, as you described in your statement, the running, mm -hmm. from that moment to the pop, shot? how long? In your estimate. 15 seconds so from the time it takes me to walk from one end of the house to the other, maybe 15 seconds. So it would be like the length of this down here. And then from that moment, how long till you came down and? I would say another 25 to 30 seconds because she came upstairs immediately after the shot and, you know. Yeah, I, I can't think of anything else with that. If I had stayed outside just a little bit longer, it would have been different. I would have, you know, I would have had my contacts in. I would have seen something better. Plus, it was dark. It was rainy, you know, so. And there's always kids and stuff out there, so you, you just never think about anything, you know. There's always kids running back there. People are always walking their dogs, so you never think of anything out of the ordinary so have you, have you seen on tv the two people that were involved in this do you know do you know either one of them i don't know either one of them no okay. if you would raise your right hand do you swear that the testimony provided is the truth yes time is 7 40 this concludes the interview well, what is your emergency for police fire or medical police please for what address or location um, I'm at, and there's someone screaming outside. Okay, so what is it? Is that what you are at? Yeah, that's right, there's a gunshot, hurry up. Okay. Yeah, Stanford, okay. Florida, 32771. Okay, do you see anybody? I don't need you to go outside. There's someone screaming, I just heard a gunshot. Okay. Do you see anything? I... Don't need you to go outside, but do you see anything? Do you hear squealing of tires or anything? No, like, hurry up. They're right outside my house. Okay. Okay, we have police come in emergency, okay? Are you, sorry, in, sorry, sorry, are you in Sanford? Yes. Okay, and what is your name? I see a police right now. And how old are you? Okay, and do you, you see the officer? Yeah, but like, he, I mean, it's behind the houses. It's like by the, it's behind, it's not the front entrance. It's like, oh my God. Near what? Tell me so I can tell them. Um, like, if you're looking at my house, like by my, my back porch. Okay, coming from behind your house? Yes, like the back porch. Stand the line with me and just update me. Did you see anything at all, or you just heard screaming? I was heard screaming and then a gunshot. Okay. Well, we have an officer there. Did you hear any more gunshots since no, you've been on the phone? No, but, but I don't hear anyone screaming either. Okay. So it's one gunshot you heard? Yeah. Okay. Okay, well, we oh have... God, hurry up, hurry up. Okay, we have officers out there, okay? If anything yeah. changes, just give us a call back. But we do have several officers there, and one officer is there, okay? Okay. Okay. Did I see anything? I'm not sure, ma'am. Um, I'm I just show that he's there, and then two other officers are on their way, okay? Okay. If anything changes or you hear any more, give us a call back. But just okay, as right. far as you know, it's coming from behind your house, near your back porch area. Yes. When you heard the screaming, did you hear... Screaming of a female or of a male? A uh, male. 
Okay, so when you heard screaming, it was a male screaming? Yeah. Okay. Okay. And the guy, the guy on top had a white t-shirt. What do you mean guy on top? Did you see a like, fight? I don't know. I just, I looked out my window and there's a guy on top with a white t-shirt. A white t-shirt? Did you see what kind mm -hmm. of pants? No. Okay. Well, he's on top of what? I couldn't see the other thing. I couldn't see the, 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 the person he was on. But he was on top of a person? Mm-hmm. Okay, is he, the guy with the white t-shirt, did he get up and run? I didn't, I just, I immediately went, went to the phone and called you. Okay, was he white, black, or Hispanic when you saw couldn't, him? Couldn't, couldn't tell, it was completely dark. Okay. Okay, well we have several units in route, okay? All right, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Today's date is March 19th, 2012, approximately 12.28 p.m. next cell time. My name is John Batchelor. I'm a special agent with the Florida Department of Law Enforcement. I'm here with Investigator Jim Post of the State Attorney's Office, 18th Judicial. I'm also here with um, the purpose and scope of our inquiry today is to conduct an independent follow-up with regards to the shooting investigation that has been conducted by the Sanford Police Department in your community. Uh, this inquiry is being conducted by agents of the Florida Department of Law Enforcement as well as investigators with the State Attorney's Office. On February 26, at around, sorry, at around, it looks like around 1917, you placed a call to the Sanford Police Department. Uh, looks like it might have been a 911 call? Yeah. Okay. Would you please provide us with an account of that night? Um, I had my upstairs windows open because it was like a breezy night. So that's why I heard what I heard. Um, I was in my office, which was upstairs, and um, I just heard someone screaming for help. I couldn't tell who it was. It was extremely dark back there. There's no lights in my backyard. Um, I knew it was a man's voice, obviously. So I thought that was strange. Um, so I went and I um, just kind of like peeked. At all my my blinds are closed, but I can like peek up underneath. You know what I mean? So I peeked up underneath and I saw. Um, I couldn't really even see fighting. Like I didn't even see like anyone like wailing on anyone. I just saw a guy on top, and the guy on top um, had a white T-shirt, or just like all I saw was white because everything was dark. So I, did, I couldn't see skin color, I couldn't see pants color, I couldn't even see like their head or hair. I just saw this white shirt on top, that's all I saw. And then um, I was so scared, I just instantly, I called the, um, the, the, poli the 911. And um, because from his voice, it, w it wasn't just like, a, oh, hey, help. It was like, I could tell it was like someone was scared, you know what I mean? So that's why I called, and then um, then I got scared just because I'm like, it's the next house over behind me. And I was like, well, I'm assuming the guy with the, gu with the gun is not a good person. You know what I mean? So I'm assuming he's going to try and run somewhere when he was finished. So that's why I called, because I was scared I was here by myself. Um, and then while I was on the phone with the lady, the dispatcher, um, I heard the gun go off. And this whole time I was on the phone with the lady, I was in my office because I didn't want, my windows were open. So my initial reaction was to close them, but I didn't want to create attention to myself. So I went into um, the other office to talk so no one could hear me or anything. So I called the lady and she was just trying to calm me down, whatever, and, um, and just trying to like figure out like where I was and where the location was, and I told them it was behind my, my house. Um, and then, like I said, while I was on the phone with her, the, the shot went off. So at my initial, the only thing that I saw was that initial when I looked through the blinds and I saw the white shirt. And then um, once the police arrived, because I saw, I can look upstairs out of my window and I saw the police arrive. And they were literally like five seconds too late, like, before, like right after the gun went off. Like they were literally that, 
that 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 short a distance light. And then um, once they were here, then I went and I peeked again underneath the the blinds. And I mean, by that point, everything was done. So you know, that's that's really all it was. Cause I I just stayed. I tried to stay away. Cause I was scared. I like locked myself in the room. And I called my family. Called my mom. Called like you know what I mean. So. I'm going to provide you with a piece of paper and a pen. Mm -hmm. Make sure there's nothing on that there. Can you do, to the best of your knowledge, draw and not give me an idea of when you, as you indicated, peeked underneath the, the, mm -hmm. the curtain, what you saw. And, and basically where, to the best of your knowledge, as it relates to where you were looking, mm -hmm. or where they might have been positioned. You can start, you know, show us your house, and then from there, Draw the people too. If you just would like to, when you looked out, can you show me, as you mentioned, the guy in the white shirt? Mm -hmm. I was confused though because there was no one in a white shirt, was there? So that's what confuses me. Because the guy, like when the guy in the handcuffs had a hoodie on. We're only concerned with what you yeah. indicated you thought you saw that night. Because that that's what really confused me. Because it was obvious. It's the only thing that popped. There was no other color. Good. When, again, from, from your view, where that person might have been, if you could depict that in your drawing. You can use an X, uh, uh, however you would like to So I'm um, looking at your drawing. It's like this. Okay, if you would explain to me, uh, as according to your drawing that you have just drawn, which house is yours? This one. And it is labeled? My house. Okay. And what is this here? It's this, this, this is the space in the neighbor's house. Is okay. Right so there's what you indicate, a space, and then the neighbor's? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then... There's the dog walk right there. Okay. And then there's a concrete block on the, in the grass. Okay. Right there, and it was like right on that area, so it was right behind his house. Okay. And then this is just the, the guy with the white shirt, and he was on top, and I couldn't see the person underneath. Okay. All right, would you initial, please? And date? The 19th? Yes. And the time? According to Nextel, it's going to be 1236. The, as according to your statement, the guy in the white t-shirt on top, mm -hmm. and looking at your drawing, was his back to you? Yes, the, the back. Face? The back. Mm -hmm. According to your statement, you heard a gun go off. Mm -hmm. Was this before or after you looked out the window? After.
Was this before, or after, or during your conversation with 911? I am pretty sure it was during my conversation. I'm pretty sure because I remember being freaked out on the phone. Are you familiar with a gunshot? No. Like hearing one? Mm -hmm. No. So. It would it be a guess? Yeah, It'd be a guess. An assumption. A loud. Was it a loud pop? Is it a noise? Yeah. After you heard the gunshot, did you look back out the window? I stayed in the other rooms until the police were there. When did you first become aware of a gun? Just when you hear it, like you can't see it and you couldn't see anything. Just when the when, bang? When it, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And did you hear anything when you heard initially outside? I think you said help. Help, yeah. Do you know how many there, times? Yeah, or, there was or, a lot. It was probably like, I want to say five or five or six times, long, sustained. Did, did you hear anything other than no, the word No, I didn't hear help? any fighting. I didn't hear any fighting. What, like, I mean, there had been a fight. I didn't hear any fighting, nothing. You know, but I'm, like, I'm in another room, and all of a sudden I just hear help, you know what I mean? So if there would have been a fight, I don't know. I mean, you, I didn't hear it, you know. Do you know any of the two individuals, now that the, uh, a lot of the uh, knowledge of the individuals is, is out, did, did you know either one of them? No. Have you met them? No, I've never seen them. All right, if you would raise your right hand. Do you swear that the testimony that you provided is the truth? This concludes the interview at 1239. 911, do you need police, fire, or medical? Um, medical. Okay, what location think, are you at? I think someone's been shot. Um, Where at? Oh my god. Where? Okay, why do you think someone's been shot? The kids are laying out in the backyard and then just went off and they said call 911. Now there's people coming with uh, flashlights. Get inside, get inside, get inside. Who are they with flashlights? Okay, hold on one second. And it's in the back of that backyard? It's in the backyard, yeah. And there's someone laying in the backyard? Yeah, and there's people around them now with, um, just get inside. Do you know if it's kids or? Um, no, my daughter, yeah, she's across the street. It's a black guy. Hey, you know what call? He's just on call to lock her front door. Okay, we've got units on the way out there. What What do you mean it's a black guy that got shot? I don't know. Is it the black guy that got shot, or is he the one? Uh, there's a black guy standing up over him. There's a black male standing and then over there's, Yeah, and then there's people coming out with, uh, um, you know, I want to go upstairs and look out the window. I don't want to walk outside. Can you tell me what the guy's wearing? Hold on, I'm call Police are here. I think someone else already called 911. Okay, yeah, it looks like they did. Yeah, they're out there. Hold okay, on thank you. Okay, the, okay, you do see the officers out there with that guy? Yeah, I think that's the flashlight that we see. Okay. All right, we, all right then. All right, thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Let's get this really simple. Please tell me today's date is Thursday, March the 1st, 2012. Discussing case number 2012-5001163. Speaking with a... Um, can you give me your name and your date of birth, please? 
on this on Sunday the twenty sixth of this month. Were you at home? Yes. Okay, there was an incident that happened in the courtyard behind your house, correct? Correct. Okay, can you tell me exactly what you saw, ma'am? Uh, okay, first of all, I was in the kitchen uh, making some coffee for me and my friend, okay. and I have my window half open, and I hear somebody crying, like a young boy crying. So by the time... Um, me and my friend, we hear like a shoot. Gunshot. Gunshot. Okay. But, um, I mean, I thought it probably was a something kids, you know, playing with something. So I just walked out of to my uh, porch and I saw the two guys. I mean, it was very dark. It was a night and you know, most of the houses have been turning on the light. So I saw two, 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 two persons, one landing on the floor and the other one, the other one on top of him, making like a pressure. Like a what? Um, like either pressing on his back or at that time both of us were outside. We were unsure if he was checking for a pulse, if he was looking in his pocket. Uh, when I grabbed the phone to call 911, still was standing out there and saw the kid's foot moving, and it looked like the guy was standing over him, like pressing on him, is what she's trying to say. Okay, um, pressing in the sense of, were they, was the guy on top on his feet, or was he still laying down on the guy on the bottom? The guy that was shot was laying on the ground. We didn't see, but at that time, his face was down. It's planted in the grass. Okay. The guy was bending over him, one foot on each side of him, bending over with his hands on the kid's back. Okay, could you, okay, prior to all this, did anybody see, okay, when she says she heard somebody crying, is it a sobbing cry, a, uh, a, a Like whining, um. Okay, like desperate, oh. uh, okay, huh, okay. What's going on? Mm -hmm. And the guy. Uh, the one who was on top of the, the other one, he, he looked at me, but he didn't say anything. It was dark, but he, he turned his face facing me. And I repeat again, what's wrong, what's going on? Mm -hmm. and, it, and he didn't answer. So at the third time, I asked, hey, what's up, what's going on right there? He said, oh, just call the police. So my friend, by that time, she already was... I grabbed my phone and I was calling 911 at that time. Okay. Could you recognize either one of the individuals involved? It was too dark. It was, it was too dark. If you, if you, I mean, I can actually I recognize the child that was, the kid that was laying on the ground because I saw him, yes, from the face down, but whenever the police rolled him over, mm -hmm. I know he had a shaved head. Um, skinny. Skinny, he was skinny. He was not very short, it didn't look like, from the distance. He had tan, like he was a black kid, but very light skin. He didn't look very dark, more like olive. Um, the guy that was standing over him was pretty medium, thick build, almost short haircut, dark hair. Um, and I wouldn't say that he was, uh, I mean, that little kid was so skinny compared to him. Exactly, yeah. <clears throat> this impression that we all got. Uh, um, as far as... And I can, I can tell you, there was no fighting going on at the time that the gun went off. Because we were both in the kitchen making coffee, the window was open, there was no fighting. And the fight that happened started way down the sidewalk, because the person on the very end of this block is the one who called the police originally because the fight broke out. Now the kid got shot way down here, you know, five doors down. And we don't hear just one shot. We did not hear two. Okay. Yes, we heard the one shot, so I'm assuming maybe the kid was already shot once and was crying and trying to get home, or I don't know. But I know they were not physically fighting at the time that gun went off when we heard the shot and the kid hit the ground. Yes. Really? Okay. Um, is there any way I can get both of you to come down to the police station sometime tomorrow. Or sometime uh, on the weekend is fine also. I mean, I work weekends also. Yeah, 
schedule? Without the schedule right now, I mean, you can talk about it tonight, but yeah, I think it's imperative that we sit down and talk in a control setting, and I basically videotape the whole thing also. What you're giving me is information that's um, <coughs> important. And, um, because if you're can, I, can I ask you something? Sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, that day, I was first scared. I'd never been seen such a thing in my life. And I really, really get so scared at the point that, that you guys let that other guy get off of the jail. Yeah, he never was arrested. And, and, yes. and, 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 and the, the, the reason why he wasn't arrested is something that I can explain to you folks when you come down with I see you guys face to face. Um, right now, as it stands, the information that you've given me thus far is something that I have to really get really in depth with I, with both of you, basically. Because if you're telling me that he, he wasn't shot during the fight, then we definitely have to do a more um, in-depth uh, interview with both of you, if, if that's possible. I, I think cooperation is what I need, so I'm sure you guys are giving it, but um, it's something that basically yeah, it needs to be done at the police station, um, and that's why in, in, as soon as possible. Um, well, I think her main concern is the guy was released. He lives in this neighborhood. He has seen both of our people. Oh, he knows and, where we live. And I, I'll give you both my cell phone numbers, and I can guarantee you your complete safety. If I got to park in front of your house, if you feel unsafe, um, I'll do that. Your safety is the utmost concern to me. The person that we're talking about um, is not somebody who's going to do something like that. He is. Um, well, like I said, I can tell you all about him when, but he, she has something to worry about. And double nothing because of the fact that, like I said, if I got to park myself in front of her house and make sure she feels safe, I'll do that. So, and uh, th that's how important it is. And like I said, I would never, you know, put her in any kind of jeopardy. I understand she's nervous and apprehensive, but, um, like I said. Well, I mean, both of us, both of us live here. Uh -huh. So it's not like, I mean, and the guy, we have no clue what. I, I could not pick him out on his face, no, feature, no. but you show me him from behind and I can tell. Exactly. Uh, because if somebody that can be clapping in front of my door and, and see me, and I don't, I, I, I cannot recognize him from that view. And that, won't, that, that won't be necessary as far as identifying him. What I need is basically... Um, uh, uh, I, I already know who is involved here. I know who was shot and I know who did the shooting. And... The reason why he wasn't arrested is because what he is telling us is the only thing we have to go off of, okay? What you folks are telling me, which I'm you know, unraveling little by little, is something different than what he's saying, okay? He's not a, uh, he's not a criminal per se, the person that did the shooting. Um, no, obviously. I mean, that can be the case. I mean, maybe somebody did get so mad and he didn't uh, think about the consequence. Exactly. And I get that clear. Mm -hmm. I think he has the temper and I think he got the crap beat out of him. He thought he could take this little 17 year old. And I think maybe he did in self defense, maybe shoot him once. But from what I'm being told, there were two guns, um, two fires, two times it was shot. And the only one that we saw is the one that laid the kid out and killed him. <clears throat> okay. And like I said, I'll clarify all that for you also um, at the station. And what I will do is I'll exchange information with you and um, as much as I can. But I also am very interested in find out and, and, and getting more into detail as far as why, um, how, how it happened as far as them not fighting at the time that gun went off. Okay, if that can happen this weekend, like I said, anytime you guys say day or night, I mean, we can be at the police station and we can sit down in an inter interview room, basically, and go over the whole thing. That would be very, very helpful. Okay, and no one is going to know that we are involved um, in anyway? I, well, we can discuss that also as far as conditions of anonymity. Um, all I need is basic direction. If I get direction, I can get the person involved in this room to give me the truth. That's basically what I need here. And anything more than that, I'll make it perfectly clear to the powers that be that you guys do not want to be involved any more than just giving me direction in the whole thing. Okay? Okay. All right. Okay, so let me know. You got my cell phone number. Um, call me tomorrow sometime and let me know when I can schedule it, okay? Okay, what's your name again? My name is Investigator Christopher Serino, S-E-R-I-N-O. I've been working for Sanford for less. Yeah, I actually, I think I have your number. I called and left a message on Tuesday or 
Um, the other investigator officer had given me your number and said that you were the, the lead investigator on this. Yes, I was out there earlier. I, that's how uh, I believe I gave um, um, or go to my uh, my business card with my name on it because I was out there basically door to door all the way down that road. So, but yeah, um, this weekend, tomorrow, anytime, just let me know. Okay. All right. Okay, okay. Okay, ma'am, what's your name? What's the woman's name? Okay, you live where? Uh, here. Okay, good deal. All right, so thank you, ladies, and you guys have a good night. And if you have any problems at all, call me, and I'll be waiting here for tomorrow, okay? Okay, thank you. Okay, thanks a lot. Good night. Good night. That concludes that telephone interview. It's now 9.44. This investigator is showing up the Sanford Police Department today's day is Friday, March the 2nd, 2012. It's now 7.14 p.m. We're located at Sanford Police Station, 815 West 13th Street, City of Sanford, Summer County, Florida. Present in the room is Investigator Doris Singleton. And state your name, ma'am. What's your occupation? Come on. I have a work for you. Okay. Uh, on the 26th on, on uh, Sunday, something happened behind your residence, correct? Yes. Your home. Correct? Yes. Yes. You spoke to her already. Uh, could you tell us exactly what she saw, what you witnessed? Sure. I was about to sit down and take a test online. Um, I had to have it in by midnight. Obviously, I didn't get it in, but exhausted, so we decided to make coffee. We walked into the kitchen, grabbed the coffee pot. The window was open. We heard... To me, I didn't pay much attention to it um, because I thought probably kids outside or something... But it sounded almost like a, like a whining or a, I didn't really hear any words like help or no or I mean nothing like really I can't remember anything specific. It just sounded like someone was in tr or struggling or in trouble or hurting or something. So we both looked at each other and started walking around. I mean kind of slowly, didn't really think much of it. Started walking around toward the sliding glass door and then we heard a gunshot. That's when I opened the sliding glass door. I see the kid laying on the ground. I saw the guy, the kid's head was away from us, so I couldn't see the actual, like, if he was face up or face down at that time. I couldn't tell. The guy was standing with his feet, um, one on each side of the kid, and he was leaning over him. And at that point, I couldn't tell. Maybe he's he came and he saw somebody shoot him, and he's here to help or check his pulse. Or maybe he's you doing CPR, but I'm you don't I don't really stand over him like that doing CPR. So it was a little weird to me. I had asked him, um, everything okay? What's going on? He didn't respond. I think she asked him two times, three times. I don't know. Everything happened so quick. Finally, I mean, he looked back and he acknowledged us. He knew we were there, and he just. I think Eddie, he didn't really didn't know what to say, didn't know what to do. But he continued to stand over the body. And he's like, call the police. So I walked in, grabbed my phone, stayed out there. So she saw him. I can't say what she saw. She saw him continue to stand over him the way I saw him when I saw him. So I said, get in here. <laughs> get in from outside, lock the door. So I'm on the phone with 911. I tell her to call across the street, tell her to lock up the doors because I don't know where this guy is, who, who did the shooting, I don't know. So as I'm on the phone with the police, um, we locked up everything downstairs. We went upstairs to her bedroom and we could see out the window. And the guy was, um, he finally, he stood up, he took a couple of steps away, it's like holding his head, looked, came back over and looked at the body. Um, I can't remember at that point if he put his hands back on the body or not. I don't think he did. But that's when I knew the kid was face down. Um, actually, no, when I was still downstairs on the phone with the police, I had walked back outside, and that's when he was standing up. And I saw originally, that was the first time I noticed the kid was face down in the grass and not moving. So then we, that's when we locked everything up. We went upstairs. We saw him. That's when he kept walking away back. And he was, like, pacing. Uh, not really pacing, like, fast, but take a couple steps, stop. Like, he had to think, and he was putting together everything. He'd come back over to the body. Then I saw flashlights coming, and the police come in around the corner. From that point, um, I guess he went away and questioned. I don't know. And I thought he was 
taken away. I didn't. I don't know if he stayed on property or whatnot. But then that's when the police kind of checked out the body and then eventually turned him over and started CPR. But he had been dead for five ten minutes. So. Um, that's pretty much all that we saw. The thing that really struck me. Um, I assumed I'm going to stay out of it. I wrote the least, you know, just exactly for word for word what we saw. We were really shooken up. But once I heard um, that somebody at the end of the townhouse, uh, at the you know, it's, the townhouses are connected. So at the end, very very end, mm -hmm. is where the fight started, and they are the ones who called 911 originally, saying there's a fight out front. Um, and I'm told talking about the townhome, okay, at the opposite end of that walkway where the T is, is that where they're saying the fight started? Where the police walked from. Okay. Yeah, because, okay. Do you want to draw something? Yes. Okay, so this is the sidewalk, and then the sidewalk goes, you know, both ways. Mm -hmm. So there's townhomes all along here. And then there's townhomes all along here. And then our front door is like the fourth one over, I think. So this is where we walked out. This is our porch. The kid was lying here. Um, from what I'm told, this is the po people who called 911 first. Mm -hmm. This is where the, the fight originated. And um, we only heard one gunshot, one time going off. I'm told there was two. I have no idea. Um, we saw him standing over him right here. And body didn't move. As far as I saw, he never moved. Um, the thing that I don't understand is we heard from, this is where our kitchen window is. We were standing right there. We heard whining and like, a, I, it's so hard to explain because I, there's no specific words, but there was no physical fighting going on. There were no punches being thrown. I mean, I, I, I can't say that I can't, didn't see it, but if there's a fight, you hear something. You hear movement. You hear hits or verbal, or you hear something. And I heard nothing but a little kid scared to death or, cr like, crying. And Could you possibly associate that cell with somebody being smothered? I try to imitate a smothering sound for you, but people get smothered and make different noises, I'm sure. But um, um, they made an attempt to yell. Did you hear any crying for help? Did you hear any screaming? Voice? No. It was more like... Well, I, hard to say. You don't, yeah, you don't, you don't got to I don't know. I mean, it's so hard to remember. Everything happens so fast. Mm -hmm. But I feel in my heart, and I would never do this to, I mean, I wouldn't say this if I really did not honestly believe it. I honestly do believe, I don't know this guy from Adam, and I don't know the kid, so I have nothing to do. I do honestly do feel that he intended for this kid to die. Because there was no struggling going on at that point. If you're self-defense, shoot him in the leg. He's a 17-year-old scrawny little kid. You get into a physical fight with him? I didn't even know about the fight. And I immediately, when I see the way he's standing over him, I don't know, it looked like he was pressing down on him, but I can't say. It's dark out there. There's not a lot of lights. But it did look like, kind of like his hands were kind of together. You know, like if you do compressions, but you're standing on the side of them. It kind of looked like that. But I never saw the kid move, so I assumed he was already dead. I have 911 on the phone, but I had to go in and get it. Mm -hmm. She's telling me his foot moved. I never saw that, so I can't verify that. But if 911 is called when they're down here, I, I, I think the kid got shot there, and I think he was trying to get home, because where the dad was was down here, this townhouse. So... I think the kid was running for help. That's my opinion. I mean, my opinion is probably not worth much, but... Oh, it's worth, worth a lot. That's why we were talking on the phone yesterday. I stopped the conversation as you come down here personally. Who Who's telling you that they heard two shots? Neighbors. 
Do you know anybody specific that thinks they've heard two shots? Probably rumors. Because okay. we'd like to hear from them. Obviously, if, Do you know about the little kid? That they did hear two I'm shots. I'm on Monday. Do you want to the dog? I'll be seeing him on Monday. I'm waiting for his mom to get back out of town. So I'm not going to end her 13 without his mom being there. So, But yes, I'm talking to him and hopefully he can shed some more light onto this. All I know is uh, what I saw and what I heard was not right. It was not, it was not a normal, it wasn't a fight. It wasn't in the middle of a fight someone got shot. But like I said, did you hear any screams for help prior to the crying? They would have been loud, loud screams for help. And no words as you can articulate you heard. There are no words that I can say 100% okay. that I heard. I would hate to say something and it not be 100% accurate. Yes, I did hear almost like a calling or no or a, you know, whining, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But in my mind, I don't, I cannot, I have no recollection of words, specific words. So, sorry, I can't be more help. You're pretty clear about his hands were here. Could it possibly be his hands were the guy that shot him spread or no, a hundred percent they were on his body because I saw and I thought at first it being so dark. Oh, okay, he's gonna help. He's checking his pulse. He's and then he wasn't. Like, when he was just standing there, and that's when she's like, everything okay? Everything okay? And he looks at us and doesn't say anything. And I'm like, oh, maybe he's checking his pockets, or maybe he's, you know. So I was already grabbing, I was already calling 911. He's like, just call the police. Okay, did you see him stand up, or he was already up? He was already standing when you got upstairs. Did you see him come up off the body? No, I did not see him come up out. Did you ever see When him? I came in, I was on the phone. She was still outside. Did you ever see him holding anything in his hands? Oh, my God. I don't know. I haven't thought of that. Um, I don't think so. I don't think I paid close enough attention. Did you remember what he was wearing? Um... It had some kind of red and dark or like a black and red or something like that. Something I, I I don't know, I remember his build exactly. I could identify him from the back. I know he had dark hair, I know it was short, and he was a little bit stocky. Um, not a big, big guy, but I um I think I paid more attention to that than I did what he was actually wearing. Because in the beginning, I thought he was there to help the guy. I didn't think he was the one who shot him. In my mind, if he shot him, he would be running. You know? <laughs> so. How quickly from the time you heard the shot do you think you looked outside? Seconds. Because we had already heard something going on, like a cry for help or a cry. You know, not those exact words, because like I said, mm -hmm. I don't know what we were hearing. The distress noise. A stress like, noise. We already distress. heard someone in distress. And at first we were like, little kids or something, but we're going to check. Mm -hmm. And we start walking. So we were already right around the corner and then gunshot. And then within seconds we were out outside. Um, and within that time of us walking, literally right around to the, the sliding glass door. I mean, the kitchen is here. We walked right here. In that time, the guy was standing over him with his hands on him. Good. Lucky Field the Center is now 728. 911, do you need police fire or medical? Uh, police, I just heard a shot right behind my house. Where at? They're wrestling right in the back of my porch. You just heard one shot go off? Hey, it was either that or a rock at the at the window or something. I don't know. The guy's yelling help, and I'm not going out. No, Stanford, one, Florida. Two, two. Okay, that's one or two words, because it's not accepting it. Twin trees is two words. Okay, and you can hear somebody yelling for help. Um, I'm pretty sure the guy's 
dead out here. Holy shit. Okay, we have several people calling in also. Anything else that you heard? Uh, no. A guy yelling help. Oh, my God. Um, no. There's a guy with a flashlight in the backyard now. Okay. Uh, I think there's flashlights and there's a guy. Okay. I don't know if that's a cop. Oh, my God. Okay, I have several calls, and you just heard, you sure, you, did you hear when you heard voices? It was just one person there's talking, two, right? There's two guys, there's one, there's two guys in the backyard with flashlights. Okay. Um, and there's a black guy down that looks like he's been shot and he's dead. Yes. Okay. He's laying, and there's multiple people calling right now, I'm thinking. Okay. I have several officers going out there, okay? Okay, thank you. Thank you, bye-bye. All right, bye. Investigators here at the Sanford Police Department. Today's date is February the 26th, the Sunday. It's 2012. I'm located. What's the address here? The city of Sanford, Seminole County, Florida. I'm interviewing the name, sir, and the airplane. Once again, sir, your name again? Okay, sir. This evening, you witnessed something or heard something. You tell me what you heard or what you witnessed. Yeah, we pretty much heard someone yelling outside. We wasn't sure if it was, you know, a fight or something was going on. So I open my blinds and I see kind of like a person out there, didn't know if it was a dog attack or something, so I open my door, uh, there was a black man with a black hoodie on top of either a white guy or now that I found out, I think it was a Hispanic guy with a red sweatshirt on, on the ground, yelling out help. Um, and then, you know, I tried to tell him, you know, get out of here, you know, stop or whatever. And then uh, the one guy on top in the black hoodie was pretty much just throwing down blows on the guy, kind of MMA style. Like a ground and pound, um, okay. Yeah, like a ground and pound on the concrete at this point. So at this point, I told him I was calling 911. I locked my door, went inside, heard a pop, never heard a gunshot before, so I didn't know if it was a rock or something like that. We ran upstairs. As soon as I got upstairs, I looked down below, and then I saw the guy in the black hoodie pretty much just laid out on the ground with the guy in the red shirt standing up because there was two people with flashlights and he was pretty much just, you know, saying, hey, I put the gun down, I'm guessing, uh, you know, here, I'm here. And that's when the lady on the phone with 911 pretty much said there was four more calls coming in okay, all at the, the same time. the person calling for help, has that been the person on, underneath the thing? Yes, that, that was the Definitely. one getting uh, beat up and he was the one with the red sweater on. Okay, and the one that was shot was the one that was on top of the person getting beat up? Correct, correct. So I'm guessing, um, you know, maybe he was yelling out help because he didn't want it to come to that point, and then it came to that point where he was on the concrete, and if you ever got hit on the concrete, it hurts. <laughs> Did you recognize either one of these individuals? No, that's the bad thing. Okay. Um, I just saw the color of the outfits. Okay, I'm going to include this interview. It's now 9-12. Today's date is March 20th, 2012. The time is 6-10 p.m. Present is, as well as John Post, or Jim Post with the uh, State Attorney's Office, 18th Judicial, and myself, John Batchelor, a Special Agent with the Florida Department of Law Enforcement. The purpose and scope of our inquiry today is to conduct an independent follow-up with regards to the shooting investigation that has been conducted by the Sanford Police Department within your community. The inquiry is being conducted by agents of the Florida Department of Law Enforcement as well as investigators with the Office of the State Attorney. I'm going to hand you a copy titled Narrative Report, Sanford Police Department, and dated February 26, 2012. If you would please look that over and indicate if that is your handwriting, your signature, and a statement that you provided to the Sanford Police Department. That is definitely my handwriting. Is that your, your signature on the bottom? Correct. As dated February 26, 2012? Yes. Okay. And the time is 6, 12 p.m.? Okay. If you would, could you please uh, 
go over the events that occurred that night on February 26, 2012. About the time around when all this started, we were watching TV like we usually do at nighttime. I believe it was the same weekend as the Daytona 500. And while we were watching TV, we kind of heard some loud noise outside. So we figured maybe it was just, you know, either kids in the neighborhood or people, you know, just having a good time outside. And then we heard it again, so we muted the TV but didn't hear anything for a second. Um, and then we heard it like it was coming towards us, getting a little louder. So I kept the TV on mute and went to go look outside through the sliding glass door through the blinds and there's only a porch light so I couldn't truly <clears throat> see what was out in the grass area and my fiance I, I'm pretty sure advised me not to open the door but I, ha I had to check just to see what was going on and I opened the sliding glass door and looking out there it almost looked like uh, like a dog attack by or something like that because there was a man vertically looking forward on like towards the ground so if I'm standing at the glass door I don't know how to describe it was pretty much like I was laying on the ground directly in front of me, like in directly in front of me on the sidewalk so I couldn't really tell what was going on until I heard help 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 yelled again and then I noticed there was a guy in a lighter colored shirt or sweatshirt or whatever he was wearing um, I, I think it was a red color or a white color uh, on the bottom of the person so I yelled what was going on um, and you know help help came out and then I was like hey cut it out and they kinda turned and made it onto the sidewalk and the person wearing the black outfit was on top of that person at that time and that's when I said I was calling 911. I turned around, told to get off the phone, get upstairs, and I locked the door and started dialing 911. And as soon as I picked up on 911, a couple seconds later, as we were about to make our way upstairs, it sounded like like a rock hit a window. I've never heard a gunshot before, but now knowing that was the gunshot that I heard, um, and from that point as she was still making it up the stairs I ran upstairs while I was on the phone with the uh, 911 uh, person that answered my call and I ran over to the window to look down and when I looked down I saw the person that was actually on top at that point was laying in my grass kind of in a sprawled position not moving um, and then I saw the another person with his hands in the air as it looked I don't believe it was cops at that point. It looked more like neighbors with flashlights that were coming around the corner. Um, and the guy had his hands in the air saying, the gun's on the ground, I shot this guy in self-defense. And no lie, at least or maybe 20 seconds later, the cops were already all there. I think it was just because so many people had already dialed in. And the operator also told me that, you know, there was five other callers calling in for the same thing that happened. Um, at that point, um, you know, I think I even stated, you know, holy shit or something like that. You know, I think he's dead because he wasn't moving. Um, when we went back downstairs, um, you know, I was still shaken up and everything. I'm pretty sure they flipped the body over to do CPR because I do remember someone trying to do CPR. Um, so at that point, I didn't know if he was still alive or... Where I didn't know if he had been, you know, where he had been shot or if he had been shot, but I was guessing at that point when they were doing CPR, he had been shot. Um, and then when I looked out my blinds again a couple minutes later, um, I noticed there was a yellow. Uh, I'm guessing it was a couple minutes. I don't know. The time kind of flew after that point, but I noticed there was a yellow sheet or blanket over uh, the person laying in my grass, and I know that usually means that that person is deceased at that point. Um, and then after that, it was just, you know, pretty much giving statements the rest of the night, um, you know, talking with my neighbors next door. Um, I didn't have my patio door open, 
but I heard, um, you know, from other people, other people had, you know, doors open or something like that so they could hear it a little better, but I could only hear the helps through, you know, with all the doors and windows closed, so I couldn't tell, you know, who was yelling help, this or that, but you could tell it was a male, of course, um, but as to who was yelling, I, you know, I, I can't make that call at first I thought it was the person on the ground just because you know me thinking rationally if someone was on top the person on the bottom would just be yelling but you know that's just an assumption I truly can't tell who you know after I thought of you know after I'm thinking about it was yelling help just because it is so dark out on that sidewalk um, you can't see a mouth or you know I really wish I could have, because that would have really helped, but that was pretty much, you know, all I saw at that point. I didn't see how it started, I didn't see how it ended, I just saw the part where they were in an altercation on the ground. Okay. You mentioned in the very beginning of your statement mm -hmm. you were inside when all of this started mm -hmm. what was you referring to you could tell it was farther away from where it ended up in the grass area you know behind our townhomes right here it seemed like it was a lot farther away because as time went on it got closer and you, you could really tell oh that i think that's someone actually yelling help this time and it's not people outside, you know, roughhousing, and, you know, so when my first uh, thought, when I did open the door and noticed it was a man, you know, on the ground, I thought it was just two guys out there wrestling, you know, just, I don't know, just horse, you know, horsing around or something like that, but then when I noticed help, help, help was yelled out, I knew it was serious, that's when I said, you know, stop, or I said stop before, I was, what, what's going on, then I said stop. And they were still wrestling, and I said, that's why I'm calling 911, and then went inside. You keep referring to it, it was farther away. What was farther away? If you hear someone yelling, and they're two blocks, three blocks down, it's going to be a faint uh, sound. You know, you're not going to hear it as loud. But it sounded like it, morally, it more it progressed towards us. I don't know if it was coming from the left or the right, but the sound just got louder um, because I think it either someone had started, you know, yelling help, and it just got closer and closer until, you know, we could truly hear it close enough, and that makes sense because it was right, you know, in the backyard area. That's what I mean. Um, it sounded, you know, like it was getting closer, just the, the sounds of the helps that were getting closer with movement towards, you know, our location. In your... You indicated you're not sure what direction the sounds would have been coming from? No. Did you hear any other noises or sounds other than what you believe to be help? No. You mentioned when you first opened the door, you, you described what you saw. It might have been a dog fight. Yeah. What made you believe? Because it was so dark outside, and, uh, you know, I, it seemed like the person that was on top or what I could see... Was wearing, the person on top was wearing... All, it was a dark colored jacket. It was like all black jacket or, or something like that. Um, I just couldn't tell what was going on because I didn't see anybody <clears throat> underneath. I didn't see anybody on the left or the right. But then uh, there was a guy on the bottom that seemed like he was pushing up or... You know, I can't tell what it was, but then I finally saw, you know, like a guy on the bottom, and I heard, you know, help, 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 and then, you know, I yelled at them and said, hey, cut it out, and, you know, it kept going, and then, uh, you know, I said, I'm calling 911, and went back inside. You mentioned the person on the bottom. Mm -hmm. What was he wearing when you noticed that? It was... Either a lighter colored shirt that had, it was, or something red on it, or white. It was, it wasn't an, a solid dark color. You could tell the distinction between, uh, you know, 
what each person was wearing at that point. You could tell what each person was wearing? Meaning like a dark, one had a dark shirt on compared to another person had a red or a white shirt on. That's what I mean by the distinction. Okay. And the person on top, as indicated in your statement today, mm -hmm. dark colored? Yes. And the person on the bottom was wearing? Either a red shirt or a white shirt of some sort. It happened so <coughs> quick, there's only so many things I could catch right away. But definitely the person on top had a, at that point when I did see them wrestling, it was a dark, you know, sweatshirt or something like that on top. Could you tell if there was a hood up or down? Or not really. Hat it, or anything on the person? Not really, because it, I mean, it was just so dark. And if you see the back sidewalk at nighttime, if someone's out there, you really have to look out there for the most part to even tell if it's, you know, if it was, say, you're wearing a hat or a hoodie of some sort. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry. And this person on top with the dark colored jacket, mm -hmm. how was he on, or did, could you determine if it was a male or female on, on the top? <sighs> I never thought it was a female. I don't know if that's just from me thinking, you know, a guy and a girl wouldn't be out there fighting. Um, but it definitely couldn't tell. You couldn't, I mean, there was no long hair or anything like that, so there might have been a hoodie on, um, might have just had all black hair. Um, Could you tell uh, <clears throat> what race the person on top? At that point when I did see it, when I first walked out there, the black guy was on top and the only reason I can tell that was because the guy that was on uh, the ground under him at that point wrestling was definitely a lighter color and this is the time you're, you are looking out the window yelling at them yes to stop and you indicate that the guy on top is darker yes and how do you know that that's what I'm saying. It, unless he had a hoodie all the way on, it was a dark colored man on top. And the person on the bottom, could you see their face? I could see that it wasn't another dark man on the bottom. That's the only thing that I could truly differentiate. I didn't know if he was white, Hispanic, Asian. I just knew he, what, he didn't have a dark color tone at that, you know, who was on the bottom at that point. At this moment, the person on the top, mm -hmm. how were they positioned? On The guy on top was on top of the other guy, vertically. And, and you're going to have to maybe help me with, with vertically when what you're saying. Was he laying down? Yeah, laying down. Yeah, they were on the ground. Like, so if I'm standing up and I lay completely down flat face mm -hmm. first... It's pretty much like if you were on top of someone wrestling. They're on their back. He's on, uh, you know, he's on top of them. And, and this is your first account when you open the door. Yeah. We're still talking about the same event. Yes. Okay. At that moment, when you look out and you see this person on top mm -hmm. in, a, in, in a lane position, mm -hmm. what is happening? They're struggling. That's what I mean by wrestling at that point. I can't tell... You know what is going on at that point all I know is someone is on top of the other person and I hear help 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 yelled a couple times and me just thinking that it is the person on the bottom yelling help because you know just if anybody saw that they probably would have thought the same thing that the person on the bottom is yelling help if you see two guys fighting because I couldn't see the front side of uh, the black male's face, but I could see partial, you know, front side of the guy on the bottom because his face was facing this way when he was pushing up or, you know, they were wrestling on top of each other. And this, and when I, when I say how they were laying, the sidewalk out there goes like this, mm -hmm. they were at that, at that point. Okay. I don't know if that'll help. We'll have you draw here in just okay. a second. Okay.
again back to the same account mm -hmm. when you're looking out your initial we're, mm -hmm. we're referring to your initial view correct do you see anything in any of, uh, of the two persons hands no I don't see anything in their hands not to say that there wasn't but I I really can't see anything in their hands at that point and you indicate today you heard while you were looking at this help Yes. Do you know how many times? I believe it was like three. Two or three, I would believe. Did you ever make eye contact with the person on the bottom? When I first saw the account, it looked like I can't tell if he was making eye contact with me or if he was just trying to get up from the bottom. Uh, being that dark out, you, I can't see that far. I can't tell if he was making eye contact with me. No, I cannot. But it does look like he was trying to get up while they were both wrestling each other. Okay. Was anything else other than help said at that time? Not that I heard. Once I closed the door and ran upstairs, I don't know if anything else was said. When you looked at this individual, you wasn't sure if he was making eye contact. Did you did you see? Describe what you saw. All I saw was, at first, it looked like just one individual out there. It was dark. I couldn't really tell what was happening. And then after I said, hey, what's going on? I could see that there was another man in a lighter shirt or a lighter sh colored shirt on the bottom who looked like he was trying to get up at that point. And then I heard help, 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 yelled. So that's when I said, I'm calling 911. Or I said, cut it out and I'm calling 911. And that's when I turned around and locked my door and ran upstairs to call 911. And in your original statement that you read today, mm -hmm. you indicate, and, and if you would, you can read it. Mm -hmm. Would you... And they uh, move to the sidewalk? Well, could you start here where you write, I open the door? Yeah. Do you want me to read it out loud? Yes. Okay. Opened the door and saw a guy on the ground getting hit by another man on top of him in a straddling position. Position hitting a guy in a red sweatshirt or something of a red top. The guy on the bottom getting hit was yelling help. Keep going. Oh. The, 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 you indicate the guy on the bottom was yelling help. Yeah, because that's my first thought when... You know, I look out there, and I see this happening, and the other guy's on top with, you know, I don't know if they're, you know, punches that are being thrown at him at this point, or if he's trying to hold him down. Um, you know, it, it really just happens so quick for the most part. But if anybody had not known anything what was going on, that's what it seemed like to me at that point when, you know, I looked out there, and there's one guy on top of the other at that point, and... Both arms are, you know, down. I don't know if he's trying to hold him down or if those are actually, you know, punches. Um, but, yeah. Okay. All right, now you, you, you just mentioned moving to the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. So when they were wrestling, when I said cut it out, and before I turned to go inside, they moved up onto the sidewalk. And they're no longer laying this way they were this way at that point so they wrestled to that point and, and, and you're showing um a parallel what the yeah what this the is the si yeah this is the sidewalk okay. they were this way when i first saw them wrestling and moved to that way okay and, that, and who's in what position at same position point? at that point and, and what and what is that uh the guy with the black sweatshirt is on top of the guy with the red or, or white sweatshirt and that's why i made the statement that it, he was hitting him on top because, I mean, that's what it looked like from where I was standing. It could have been 
him just trying to forcefully hold the guy down, or it could be hitting him. You know, I just truly can't, you know, after I thought, you know, I'm thinking about it and everything, it could have been either. It's, you know, I can't see that close to where they were actually at, but he was still on top with both hands, uh, either trying to hold the guy down or hitting him at that point. At this time in the event that you're describing, mm -hmm. can you now see the face of the person on top? Not Maybe just from the side. That's about it. Did you? I don't even know. Can you see the person's face on the bottom? No. Are they, is there any conversation between the two persons? I did not hear a conversation. Any yelling between the two persons? Just the help and more of a struggle and help. That's what I thought was very odd when, you know, I ran, I opened the door and said to stop that, you know, neither whoever was on top at that point didn't, you know, get off at that point and say, you know, hey, listen, this guy is, you know, attacking me or I'm, with, you know, that's what was weird to me that it didn't stop at that point. And that's when, you know, the helps came out and I yelled, you know, 911, and I'm calling 911 and went back inside. At this time where they change positions, can you see anything in either one of them's hands? No. And I think I asked you, but I'm going to ask again, could you see the person on the bottom's face? No, I just see the color of the outfits for the most part. Which was? Uh, the red on the bottom and the black sweatshirt on top. Now, at that point, when I did see, when they did move to the sidewalk, it was 1-2, calling 911, inside. So it was that quick. Okay. And I'm going to have you take a piece of paper here. I'm going to give you a pen. Okay. And I would like you to, you can show the an X or an O where the, 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 the two individuals you're describing was located. Please indicate your house, maybe something else that would be a landmark. <clears throat> and then would you please uh, show the first position that you described in your statement today and label it number one. Okay. And then the second position that you described today and maybe put a number two or label it as number two above it, please. looking at a, a sketch provided by me. You have door of patio, you have one and two, where it says door of patio. Is this going to be your residence? Yes. Okay. Would you write uh, maybe my house?
Did you notice anybody else out there? No. During either the first position you observed or the second position, did you notice anybody else outside? No. Okay, in your statement today, you indicated that you closed the door to call 911. To get my phone and call 911, correct. Was it during that conversation that you heard the rock, as you described, on the window? Yes. Where were you at inside the house at this point? I want to say <clears throat> I was about, I don't know how far that is from the window there, but I was right about going up the stairs right there as was following me. Could you tell me again what happens after that? I'm on the phone with 911. I tell them, you know, I think I heard a, sh you know, it sounded like something hit my window or a shot went off, I think. Um, and I run upstairs as fast as I can to see what happened from above instead of going right back to my door because I have no idea if there's, you know, a gunfight <clears throat> or anything going on in the backyard. So I go upstairs to a more safe location. When I get upstairs, then I look down and I notice that. Uh, the guy that was on top is actually in the grass, uh, not moving. While the other gentleman has his hands in the air, um, and there's other, uh, I think there were two other gentlemen out there with flashlights asking what was going on, and the one guy that was on the bottom said, I shot the other guy in self-defense, my gun's on the ground. You mentioned earlier that the person on top when you went out to view was mm -hmm. in a sprawled position correct. not moving correct and that's when I actually said on the call I believe he's dead can you describe if he would this person was face up or face down from how I was looking at it it looked like he was face down and how was this person's hands positioned it almost looked like a crime scene uh, a crime scene photo that you would see painted on the floor with the legs kind of, uh, I don't know how to explain it. Um, it wasn't in, you know, arms next to each other, legs next to each other. It was kind of in a sprawled position. I just remember looking at the legs and, and thinking, oh, that has to be face down and not the other way because I'm pretty sure he was face down you keep moving your hands and again for the yeah. sake of the auto recording can you try to indicate the sprawled the hands position I mean that's kind of what uh, I'm trying to remember the full position of the body when I'm looking down into the grass but it is in a position you know with one hand up you know one hand down type of position and the position that I saw him in there was not the position that I saw him when I went back downstairs and opened my blinds. Uh, he was on it. It looked like he had been turned on his back, uh, you know, hands and legs next to each other. And that's why I also, you know, thought that he was face down because they had to flip him to give him CPR when they got here. Because I don't think if he was on his back, uh, the medical staff would have moved him at that point to make sure nothing else was wrong. I think the only reason why they had to move him because he was face down and they had to flip him to give him CPR. Again, referring to the hands real mm -hmm. quick for the sake of the audio recording, mm -hmm. you were indicating a hand position kind of if, as if you were swimming with a hand forward Correct. and a hand back. Correct. That's as a face down position. Correct. You indicated when you came downstairs the body was flipped over. By the time I came downstairs, like I said, it was, I mean, 20 seconds, the cops were already here. Okay. Um, and by the time, you know, I didn't open the blind <clears throat> as soon as I came downstairs because, of course, you know, I'm still frazzled and everything. But when I did open the blinds, uh, he looked like he had been turned and the body wasn't in the same position because I'm guessing they flipped him over because I did see them giving CPR. Okay. Was it... Who was giving CPR? That I really couldn't, I couldn't tell. I didn't know if it was maybe the guys out with flashlights, if it was the cops at that point. 
Um, and I really didn't want to actually look out there because it was very traumatic seeing that. And what made you think it was CPR they were doing? Uh, no, I could see them over, you know, and you could kind of hear through the window a little bit. Um, From the time you hear these sounds, as you indicate in today's statement, initially, to the time you hear the rock, as you indicate, against the glass mm -hmm. door, how long do you think that was? I, I truly couldn't even give an estimate. Um, maybe five minutes, maybe. Um, I mean, at that point, you know, I'm really not keeping track because I just think it's something else going on. Um, but, you know, I, yeah, I really don't know how long between, you know, when we first initially thought we heard something to when we knew someone was out in our back and, you know, it was a lot louder. And you indicated that you turned your porch light on. A porch light is always on. So what color is on. your What color is your porch light? Uh, just a regular light. White light, not yeah, a yellow white. or anything. No. Okay. But it also only shines on my patio part because it's got a a globe around it, so it's not like a floodlight or anything like that. Do you know what the weather was that night? Ugly. It was, <laughs> it was drizzly, uh, definitely not a, a nice night out. When you say drizzly? Uh, raining a little here off and on. And it was dark at that time, of course. I just wanted to try to clarify a little bit on when you said that they were rustling. Mm -hmm. Can you describe what either person was doing a little bit more with their hands? It looked like almost a struggle, a hand struggle. If I was on top of you, you know, just kind of wrestling around trying to get with like a position of some sort maybe. Mm -hmm. um, that's all I could, you know, see with the hands for the most part. And then the, if you were the person on the bottom, um, I'm not sure if he was holding on to the guy on the top or if he was trying, because it looks like he's trying to get up uh, from the one point when I do see him finally, because I only see one guy at first. Um, it looks like the other guy was trying to get up because, I mean, his back was raised off uh, the ground at that point, so it looked like he was trying to get up at that point. But I don't know, I couldn't see his hands, the guy on the bottom, I couldn't see where his hands were. So I don't know if they were on the other guy's sweatshirt or if he was, you know, trying to actually push off of him or anything like that. I couldn't see the other guy's hands. Okay. At, at one point in a verbal statement that you gave, you had mentioned, um, like, MMA. Yeah, what was when it what moved? You're referring to when there? it moved onto the concrete, um, the guy in the black shirt or sweater was on top of him. Um, and when I say when I meant to say MMA, it was more of just like he was, you know, over his leg part. Like he, it, I'm trying to think how to put this. If you if you ever watch MMA, the guy that's on top is usually in control. Is what I that's what I meant. Like he had control at that point, is what I meant. Um, as if I was on top of you at that point, I don't know if I'm trying to hold you down. That's what I was saying. It looked like uh, you know he had been hitting him from on top, but you know I can't truly see how close you know, they were to each other, if he was hitting him or if he was trying to hold him down in that position until the cops got there. So that's what I mean in a, in a MMA position because it's usually called like a mounted position or, or something like that, but I'm not sure if that's what it was. But he was on top at that point. Okay. 
Is this information? Do you do you uh, follow the MMA fighting? Do you do you have I you fought or no, wrestle? No, I don't. No, I don't fight or wrestle. No, um, you know I just watch it. It's all over the TV now. So <laughs> yeah, it's just everywhere. So that's just when you know I made that statement. That's the type of uh, body situation he was in at that point. Um, but like in my first statement that I made, I did say he was hitting him from on top um, because that's what it looked like. I mean, he could have still been hitting him, but or he could have been trying to hold him down. You know, it was, you know, I really truly can't tell at that point. Um, but my first reaction, you know, from what, just seeing it real quick, bam, 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 uh, that's what it looked like at that point. Okay. When when they were laying on the ground, mm -hmm. the person on the bottom would have been some degree facing you. I mean, flat, but yeah. but facing towards you, maybe even an angle. The person on the top would have been facing away. Away, okay. correct. When I want you to just take a minute and mm -hmm. think about the the help, help, mm -hmm. help. And is there any indication whether I mean, does that give you any recollection as to what timing, timing wise? No, I'm trying. What I, I guess what I'm saying is, when somebody's facing you, sometimes it's a clearer. That's what I thought when I first gave my statement. It was coming from the guy on the bottom. One, he was on the bottom, so of course I'm thinking, why would the guy on the top be yelling help? Two, it was a clear help. It wasn't an echoey help. A help bouncing off, you know, another house from the guy facing hit away from me. It was more of a projected uh, help at that point. So that's why when I say I can't truly see the face if the guy on the bottom was yelling help, that's why I thought, uh, you know, the help was coming from the guy on the bottom at that point because it was a clear help and it wasn't, uh, you know, kind of an echoey, of, you know, bouncing off walls type of help. Gotcha. If that helped. Based on the 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 help mm -hmm. help and what you observed in the first position, mm -hmm. what did you feel was happening at first? Well, what did you based on what you were seeing? Mm -hmm. What did you think was happening? Two guys fighting. Okay. Of that, who did you if if based on what you were looking at and your observation, mm -hmm. who? had the advantage based on your observation at that point whoever had the advantage was the guy wearing the black shirt there were no um, you know punches at that point or any hands flan you know in the air it was just more of looked like it was wrestling but he was on top at that point as you indicate on your and on your drawing here into the second position from that observation what did you feel was happening at that point? That the person that was still on top had the other guy on the concrete at that point. And I felt at that point, that's when I said, when they didn't stop, that I'm calling 911 and locked my door inside because it looked like it was getting intense at that point. And the person on top at that time was? Is wearing the black sweater or outfit at that time. But as I said, when I first saw it, just how quick everything happened, it looked like he was on top, the one wearing the black sweater, and there were, uh, you know, hits being uh, given from the top. Um, but thinking back on it, you know, it could have just been him trying to hold him down too as keep him secure. But, you know... I don't know. I didn't get to see pictures of either of them. Yeah. In, in the second position, who did you feel had the advantage? Same person. Who was? Uh, wearing the black top. Because from what I saw, uh, which was probably only 10 seconds, maybe, of how quick it was me yelling, you know, this, that, help, help, me coming back inside, for that 10 seconds, uh, it was always the same person on top wearing the black uh, jacket or sweater.
Would you, uh, on the same piece of paper, mm -hmm. would you just indicate when you went upstairs mm -hmm. and you looked out the window after you heard what you described as the rock and you looked outside, so could you describe where the, per the person okay. who is, is in this statement that you mentioned can we just on, make another three over here? And uh, just, do it? just from right here off of the number two drawing, where the person on top. Person on top? Okay. Uh, that as per your statement, yeah. the person on top was in a sprawl position, not moving. Where where was that location of that person? And, and if you'll just put a little three beside it and circle it so we'll know that as a. Okay. Now, will you initial and date? It is the 20th, 6.53 p.m. About how far in, in were they from your, and we'll walk over there uh, from your advantage point to where this was, about how far do you think it was? You're talking about from, from where you were looking? Point three or just from, from where I saw? From one, one and two when you were looking from the oh, position. Right at the window and they were right before the sidewalk starts. Okay. Yeah. And you, porch light was on mm -hmm. with the white light and a lamp on, mm -hmm. on there. And you indicated that there was no one else that you could see mm -hmm. out there at that point. Correct. Also, I don't know if my drawing is going to help, but from what I remember, they start here when I saw them. It was on the concrete, but then I end up seeing the body of the guy that was on top farther down in the grass from where I first saw them. I don't know if you wanted. And, and, and right, and we'll walk. Yeah, and that's why I put. Yeah, because it's definitely he's from the end position. He's definitely farther from when I stopped seeing them on the sidewalk. Okay. Have you provided a statement other than this written one? Did yes. You, and and was that? I believe that was the detective. And how was that statement given? On the same night, in person, outside my residence, and then I'm not sure how many days later, uh, via phone again. So you provided two statements to the Sanford Police Department? I think it was the Sanford Police Department uh, Chief of Police, maybe, or Crime Scenes Investigator. I think that's what his name was. An investigator. Yeah, investigator, yeah. After these events, have you spoken to anyone? Only the... I believe it was the next day. And was anybody in the house at the time? Uh, here, N not with the reporter. I'm sorry. During the events on the 26th. Oh no, there was no one else besides me. Okay. Yeah. I can't think of anything else. We're going to conclude the interview today at 6:55 p.m. Back on the record, today's date is uh, March 20th, 2012, approximately 7.24 p.m. Next till time present is Jim Post, State Attorney's Office, 18th Judicial Circuit. Myself, John Batchelor, Special Agent with the Florida Department of Law Enforcement. Upon conclusion of the interview, we came outside. And we observed uh, some of the areas as identified in his initial statement. Uh, we returned to swear the initial statement in, if you would raise your right hand. The statement you provided today, do you swear that that's the truth? Yes. This concludes the interview at 7.24 p.m. Oh, that's all. Okay. State your name for the record, please. My name is Bernie Delarion. I'm an assistant state at attorney appointed on this case, obviously involving something that happened back on Sunday. I believe it was February 26th of this year. And I know you've spoken to the Sanford Police Department. You've spoken to Florida Department of Law Enforcement. You've spoken to a bunch of people about this. And I don't want to belabor everything you've already told them, but I did have a few questions that I don't believe were asked of you, so I want to make sure that we get this under the record. Uh, let me. You, can you raise your right hand? You saw me swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so I'll help you guys. Yes. Okay. 
has anybody threatened you in order to get to make the statement right now? Has, have I made you any promises or threatened you in any way? No, okay. just ner just uncomfortable. <laughs> well, if we can stop it, if you feel uncomfortable. No, that's fine. It's just, yeah, it's, that's I'm, a lot of stress. But I appreciate, right. number one, you agreeing to meet with us. And as I told you, we just got involved in the case. And so okay. we're trying to Let just you know. eyeball it, I guess, the mm -hmm. persons who we deal with. And we've already read the statements, or, or I should say listened to the statements, so I don't want to belabor all that. But in my review of the statements that you previously get, I don't know that anybody asked you specifically of the sounds in terms of the struggle, how they were. And that's what I wanted to ask you, if that's all right with you. Mm -hmm. Is that all right with you? That's fine. Okay. What I want to ask you is you described at some point that there was a man on top of another man. Correct. And from your perspective, you correct me if I'm wrong, you described the man on top either hitting or struggling with the man in the bottom. Is correct. that correct? Okay. Correct. And what I, the man on top, when you observed him with his hands doing something to the man on the bottom, did you ever hear like like this, like a fist, like, you know, when... No. You've seen, you've heard that before, I'm assuming, right? Yes. Somebody actually striking somebody hard like I'm doing right now. Correct. And for the record, I am not striking you. Is that no. correct? <laughs> I, I punched my hand, did I not? Yes. Okay. <laughs> did you ever hear anything like that? No. Did not okay. hear a punch sound. Okay. Did you ever, ever hear any sound like a head or another part of a body hitting concrete hard where you, it made that noise? No, I did not. Did you hear it at all? Any, like... Just a struggle sound. Okay. So you never heard anything like... A loud bang, like if I were to bang this this uh, table right here. Did you ever hear that? No. Okay. Mr. Guy, was there anything else you needed to add? Okay. I thank you again very much for your cooperation. That's it. And that's it.
know, they keep doing something. So, she kind of, so she told me, um, she put it early on, because, you know, some way or another way, if you think about my mom and her back, she could barely watch him and stuff. Hey, let me, let me, I, I, I think I'm going to call you from my phone. It's going to be louder, because we're having problems hearing you. Yeah, and so I'm gonna call you right back from a number, okay? Thank you. 
second. I think uh, we're pretty much finished. I know yeah, they, they show appreciate you. I'm going to put you on hold for just one second, okay? All right. <laughs> uh, Could you state your name for the record, please, ma'am? Okay. 
Uh, my name is Bernie Delarion. I'm an assistant state attorney. I'm going to get you to raise your right hand, please. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? So, yeah. Okay, you can put your hand down. As I told you, my name is Bernie Delarion. I've been appointed by Ms. Corey, who has been appointed by the governor of the state of Florida to handle this case that I'm going to be asking you questions about. Also, to my right is Detective uh, Investigator T.C. Osteen with the State Attorney's Office. We come from Jacksonville here, mm -hmm. along with some agents with the Florida Department of Law Enforcement, and we are at, because you agreed to come here today, is that correct? Yes. Has anybody threatened you in any way to get you to make this statement? No. Has anybody made you any promises in order to get you to make this statement? No. Okay. I can tell by looking at you that you appear to be under no medical conditions that would interfere with being able to understand no. what's going on, right? No. And you're not, you don't appear to be under any kind of drugs or anything, is that correct? Mm -hmm. And for the record, today is uh, April the 2nd, uh, 2012, and it's about 7.05 p.m. Um, what I want to kind of do is ask you some background questions, and then I want to also ask you some questions about ha something that happened back on February 26th of this year. Uh, and for the record, you knew a person named uh, Trayvon Martin, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Now, you live, okay, how long have you lived here? Your whole life? Mm -hmm. Okay, where'd you live before that? Okay. The reason I'm asking you is because I'm from Jacksonville, so I want to make sure the record's clear mm -hmm. that we're here in, in uh, um, 10 years, or 11. I'm, I'm sorry, what? 11 or 10 years. Okay. So Where do you go to school? And how did you know Trayvon? I know him for a long time. We just we started talking. How did how did you meet up with him? From school or friends or by coming by my house. Okay. With his best no. friend. He was his best friend. Yeah. Okay, so you've known him for how long about? Approximately. Kindergarten. Kindergarten. Wow, that long. So yeah. he was a good friend of yours. Right? Yeah, he was all right. Okay. And he was a good guy, wasn't he? Yeah. Fine. Okay. And at some later later on in like the last year or so, did you become closer friends? Yes. Okay. Did you guys ever start dating at all? Mm. Okay. But would you guys talk on the phone all the time? Yeah. Okay. What was your telephone number back in February of, of this year, 2012? And is that a cell phone? Yes. Okay. And is that phone number under your name or under somebody else's name? It should be now under my name. Okay. And do you know what the provider is? Is it T-Mobile? Or do you know? Yeah, T-Mobile. Okay. Uh, and I think. Okay. And did you know when you talked to uh, Trayvon, what number you called him at? I don't remember the last four digits. You don't remember or you do? I don't remember. Is that automatically, like, mm -hmm. memorized in your phone? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And you would communicate with him off and on? It was almost on a daily basis, or how often would you talk on the phone? Daily. Daily? That you were that close? Daily. Okay. Were you kind of his girlfriend, or just kind of, I don't mean to get personal, but I'm not going to ask you any more other than that. Were you, you guys? Yeah, we're getting there. Okay, you're getting there. And you knew he had gone up to Sanford, right? Yes. Okay. And even when he was in Sanford, you still talked to him on the phone? Yes. Okay. Now, um... By the way, I neglected to ask you, do you live by your, with yourself, your family member, mother, and? Mother. I'm sorry. My mother. Okay, all right. I want to focus on that day, February 26th, when you know, obviously, he was unfortunately killed, and I'm sorry to ask you about this. Mm -hmm. But did you have conversations with him that day? Yes. Okay. And do you recall whether the conversations were in the morning, afternoon, or all through the day until the final day? In other words, did you talk to him earlier that day? In the morning. Okay. All right. And, okay. So you talked to him during the day? Yeah. Okay. At some point, did you find out that uh, Trevon was going to the store? Around six something. Okay. And did he tell you what store he was going to? No. He okay. was saying call the store. Did he say why he was going to the store? Mm -hmm. Yes. What did he say he was going to the store yeah, for? Yeah, his what? little brother. Uh, some food and some drink. Okay. And as he was walking to the store, did you were you conversing with him? Yes. Okay, you were talking to him. Yes. How about when he got to the store? Did he talk to you about being at the store? Yes. Okay. And did he talk to you once he left the store? Yes. 
And now, was this a continuous phone call, or was there times where you would stop and then call each other back? Yeah, the phone was tagging okay. up. All right, okay. And we've got all the phone records that would establish that, so I'm not going to ask you details as to what specific times. But what I wanted to cover with you is, when he left the store, did he mention something about at that time whether it was raining or not? Like, when he told me I was Yeah, going. tell me what happened as he's, as he's talking to you when, when he's leaving the store on his way back home. When he was leaving the store, he just told me that he bought the ring. And we okay. bought the ring. Okay. And then what? He bought the ring. He about to get to. He was like, it's not a thing. It he, started raining. It started raining, and did he go somewhere? Yeah, he ran to the um, mail thing. Like, I'm sorry, what? Like a mail. Like, yeah, a like, mail, a shed. like a shed, like a mail area, like yeah. a covered area yeah. because it was raining. Yeah. So did he tell you he was already inside, like the gated place? Yeah, he ran in there. Okay. And what, That's what, when the phone hung up. Okay. I'm sorry. Called, the phone hung up and I called him back again. Okay. And then what happened? What did he tell you? He ate under the shade. Okay. On the mail area. Right. Okay. And you say shade, like a covered area yeah. so it wouldn't get wet. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what what else did, did Trevon tell you? Mm -hmm. Like... And I know this is difficult for you, but just take your time and tell us what you remember happening. A couple minutes later, like, he come and tell me this man is watching him. Okay. Did he describe the man that was watching him? Yeah, he said white. Okay. Did he say whether the man was standing, a sitting, a whether he, he was in a car? Yeah. And what did he say about the man that was watching him? He was on the phone. He was on the phone? Yeah. Okay. And what did Trevon say after that? He just told me that... Like, he just man was watching him, so he, like, started walking. He, Trevon, started walking? He gonna start walking. Okay. And then the phone hung up, and then I called him back again. And then I said, what you doing? He said he's walking, and he said his man still following him behind the car. I was like, oh, like, he told me to tell me. He put his hoodie on. So I like, he, he, Trevon, put his hoodie yeah. on? Okay. Because he said... It was still a little bit dripping water. Uh -huh. So he put his hoodie on. So I said, what's going on? He said, this man is still watching him. Like, on the car. So he about to run from the back. So I, am, I told him, go to his dad's house. Run to his dad's house. Go to what? Run to his dad's house. To his dad's house? Yeah. Okay. So he said he about to run from his um from the back. Because it's more easy, he said. So next time, yeah. He just run, and I can hear that the wind blowing. So you could tell he was yeah, running at yeah. that time. Okay, and then what happened? And then he said he lost. He, he lost like hit. the man. Yeah. So was was Trevon at that time? You could tell he was like out of breath, like excited, yeah. like right, yeah. like okay. And then take your time. I know this is difficult for you. He, said he lost him. He was breathing hard. Then. By the time his voice, voice kind of changed. Who, Trevon? Yeah. Okay. What do you mean by that, his voice like, changed? I know you are fear. I'm sorry? I know he was scared. How, he, how could, tell, and I know you're, what well, you're trying to tell me, but if you could describe to me how you could tell he was he was scared. Voice was getting kind of low. Okay. Low, low. So you could tell he was emotional, hard. like somebody who's like in fear? Yeah. Okay, he, he was breathing he hard? Him. Okay. He said he lost him, breathing hard and all. I don't like what's going on. So he said he lost him and then a couple and then he said he right by his dad's home, keep running, keep running to his daddy's house. Okay, let me make sure that I understand that he's saying he's right by his ass, meaning the guy is right by Trevon? No, he said he lost his the guy. Okay. And then he he ran from the back. Right. He said he lost him. Okay. He started walking back again. And I told him to keep running. So Trevon said he started walking because he thought he had lost the guy. Yeah. Okay. I said, keep running. Okay. He said he ain't going to run. Because he, he said he right by his father's house. Okay. So, and in a couple of minutes, he said the man found him again, behind him. I said, run. You going to run? He said, he not going to run. Cause I couldn't know he not going to run because he out of breath. And then, he told me to say this guy getting close to him. I told him to run. And then, and then I told him keep running. He not going to run. And then he said, I told him, why you not running? 
said I'm not gonna run because he's tired. Cause I know he's tired. I'm sorry, Trevon said he's not running because he's not gonna run. He said because you could tell he was tired. Yeah. Well, how, how could you tell he was tired? He was breathing hard. Okay, real hard. Real hard. Okay. Could you, uh, and you may not have been able to, could you hear whether it was raining at that time or not? It was not raining. Okay, raining. All right. okay. And when you're telling him, run, 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 are you yelling at him or? I'm not yelling at him. I don't mean yelling, I mean, but we like being Shout fat, him. like, like, Shout him. Okay. yeah. Okay. Um, and then what happened? And then he told me the guy was getting close. Like, and he told me the guy was getting real close to him. Next time I hear, are you following me for? Okay, so let me make sure I understand this. So, Trevon tells you the guy's getting closer to yeah. him. Yeah. And then you hear Trevon saying something. Yeah. Right? And what do you hear Trevon saying? Why are you following me for? Why are you following me for? Yeah. And then what happened? I hear this, this is an old man. Like an old man. Okay. Say, who are you doing around here? Okay. So, you definitely could tell another voice that yeah. was not Trevon. Yeah. And you heard this other voice say what? Yeah. What are you doing around here? What are you doing around here? Okay. And I called Trayvon. Trayvon, what's going on? What's going this on? This is you saying yeah. that. Okay. And then I was calling him. He what? didn't answer. No answer from Trayvon? Yeah. It's here. I hear his son like, bump. You can hear that Trayvon bump. Somebody bump Trayvon. So you, I can hear the grass. Okay. So you could hear there was something going on. Yeah. Like something hitting something? Yeah. Okay. You can hear, tra I can hear the grass thing. Out of the, I yeah. guess out of the, yeah. out of the, okay. And then what happened? And then, I was still screaming, I was saying, turn on, scream on. And there was no response? Yeah, and then next day, I, and next day, the phone just shut off. The, the phone shut off? It shut okay. off. Okay. Did you hear any kind of screamings like, help me, or anything like that? No. Okay. Did you hear any kind of shot? No. Okay. When the phone shut off, did you try calling back? I called him back, like, Three okay. or two times. Did you ever get any response? No, in texting. Okay. So the last thing you heard was some kind of noise, like yeah. something hitting somebody? Yeah. Okay. And um, when you heard that noise, something hitting somebody, you didn't, did you hear the man say anything or did you hear Trevon say anything? I can hear a little bit. Okay. What could you hear? I could have just hear, like, like a slight. The headphone, because the headphone, he might have got off, but okay. I could still hear a little bit, like... Okay, what could you hear? Like a little get off, some stuff. You heard get yeah, off? Like a little get off. Now okay, I'll call now, it... But like, least, could you tell who was saying that? I couldn't know Trayvon. I'm sorry. I couldn't hear Trayvon. Trayvon. Okay, I'll, I'll, let me make sure I understand. You could hear it was Trayvon saying yeah, that? Yeah, that's why I was calling his name. And he was saying what now? So like get off. Get off? Yeah. Is that clear that you were hearing that or you think you heard that? Yeah, I can hear it. Okay. A little bit. Get off, get off. Then the phone is hung up. Okay. All right. Now, um, before all this started, when it, earlier in the day had Trevon been talking to you, right? So you recognize his voice, right? Yeah. And you had heard him on prior occasions. So it was crystal clear this was Trevon talking yeah. to you, right? The voice, the other voice of the other person you heard you had never heard before? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Could you tell it was a man versus a woman? The other voice? I thought it was a man. You thought it was a man? It is a man because it's that a deep voice. Okay, okay. And could you tell the man whether his voice was real loud, screaming at Trevon, or was it just a normal conversation like you and I are having? When you said Trevon said, why don't you follow me or something, whatever, and the guy replied something, oh. what are you doing here? Was it a normal conversation, or could you tell the man was like loud? I don't know. Angry? Yeah. Why do you say kind of angry? Cause he said like so deep. Like, what you doing? Right but there? you could clearly hear that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, and you can hear he was tired too. Who was tired? The old man. Uh, how can you tell that? He was like, "What are you doing?" Like, yeah, he breathing. Okay. Okay. You doing? It was a louder. Yeah. Okay. Now let me go back a second. You said that Trevon first told you the guy was in some kind of car. Yeah. Okay. On the phone. On the phone. Did Trevon ever expand on that? Did he ever say something else about the, like, uh, whether the guy had gotten out of the car? Did he ever describe, yeah, the guy now, he's out of the car, he's chasing. I know you said the guy, he said the guy was following him, but did he ever say the guy got out of the car? You want that too? I want to know the truth, whether, did he say that or not? If he didn't say that, that's fine. I mean, I don't, I don't need to know 
Like Anyone? when you like walking. I know Javon is, is running, right? Or walking. Yeah. My question is, did Javon ever describe to you, hey, you know, how, like if I see a football game, I say, yeah, the guy was running fast or the guy, you know, ran to the left. Did he when he was at the, um, the mail thing, yeah. the man was on the phone. He right. actually told me. I'm He's, sorry, what, what? He told me the man was on the phone. He put his hoodie on. Right. So the man was still in the car. Then Trayvon started walking. And then he said, I think the man got off for some reason. Cause he That's said what the, you believe? Or? Yeah. Okay. Because he, he said the man was still following him. Okay. So he didn't say like the man got out. Yeah. He just believed that. Yeah. But Trevon didn't tell you the man got out yeah. of the car. Okay. All right. Um, did Trevon ever say he hit the guy? No. Did he ever say he was going to go hit the guy? No. Did Trevon ever say the guy's coming at me is going to hit me? Yeah. He could say that. No, I don't want you to guess. Did he ever say that? How he said it, he just... No, no, I... Do you understand? Did he say that or not? If he didn't say it, that's all right. I, I like you understand. Got, I'm not trying to get you to say like, anything. He I, got problems. Like, he crazy. Trevon told it, you that? Yeah, was that? Okay. the man looking crazy. Okay. And looking at him crazy. When did Trevon tell you that? When he was walking. Okay, but you didn't mention that earlier. That's why I asked you that. Yeah, walking home okay. to that house. Right. And when, before you say he's going to run. Okay. And he's saying the guy looks what? Crazy. And did, did you say and what do creepy. you mean? Did you say what do you mean by that? I said we should Because you said this dude is like watching him, like watching. Okay, so that's what he meant. The guy keeps and, watching. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Now, you previously, you were called by uh, Mr. Crump, Benjamin Crump, that was here earlier, and some attorneys called you up, right? Yes. You remember talking to them on the phone? Yes. And did you attempt, to, as best you could, tell them the truth, too, about what happened? Do you remember talking to them at all? Yeah. Okay. Did they make you any promises or trick you in any way? No. Okay. I'm not saying that they did. I just want to make sure that the record's clear on that. Um, You uh, obviously found out about what happened to Trevon, right? And at some point, you ended up knowing that he was killed, right? Yeah. Were you able to go to the funeral or to the wake? I wasn't going to go, but... Okay, what happened? I didn't feel good. Okay, did you end up going to the hospital or somewhere? Mm, yeah, I had blood, um, high blood pressure. Again, I'm sorry to have, asked, have to ask you this. Um, Did when this was going on, I'm talking about that day, February 26th. Did Trevon send you any text messages? Like on like right, you know, like he, I'm going to uh, pub, I'm going to uh, to uh, the store. Or, uh, did know? he ever text you and say like this guy's following me, or did he just tell you that? Just tell me. Okay, so he he never texts you that about what was this all that he told me, right? Did you ever text him during this time? Like when. Uh, phone just hung up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But prior to that, did you text him at all in terms of communicating what you've told me here? Mm -hmm. You I, understand what I'm saying? I, Asking you. What, while this was going on, I said when you left the store at all, did you text him? Or were you, were you, you were talking yeah, the whole time, right? Yeah. Was he texting you at all? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm just saying people text these days. I just want to know if he texts you. Uh, and if by chance you had a, a text still on your phone. You don't? Okay. Is that a no? No. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I think I already asked you, but let me make sure. He, he did tell you what he was at, at uh, the store that he had gotten some candy or something, and you said iced tea, right? Yes. Okay. All right. Earlier that day when he was talking, was he talking about he being Trevon? Was he talking about his mom at all? 
Hey, which one? Was he talking about his family earlier that day? Was he talking about his mom? Yeah, he was okay. talking, telling me that he ready to go home, watch the, right. finish watching the game. Okay. The game? Yeah, game. he left his little brother, so he's trying okay. to rush him. Rushing yeah. to go back home to yeah. watch the game. Did yeah. you know what he was talking about when he was talking about a game? Yeah. What he was told he talking me. about? Um, I think the ba bas basketball. basketball. I think that was like the All Star game. Yeah, or that one. Okay, all right. I didn't really okay. care about. It. Yeah. If you could describe Trevon, how would you describe him? Funny. Is that it? A mama no, no. boy. Huh? A mama boy. Okay. A mama's boy. Okay. Okay. A baby. A baby. Okay. How else would you describe it? Sheltered, in other words, like his mother is sheltered. You mean like a mama's boy? Yeah, I can say mama okay. boy. Okay. All right. Okay. He loves his family. He okay. loves his family. Love yeah. to play on. Um, love to ride his bike. What kind of bike did he have? I don't know. I pay attention to this, like. <laughs> okay. All right. Listen, I, I know this has been very hard for you, but uh, I do appreciate you taking the time to talk to me today. And obviously, you know, we've recorded all this because I've had a recorder right in front of you. But I do thank you from, from the bottom of my heart that you've come forward and you've agreed to get this statement today. Okay? I know this is very hard. I can tell by looking at you that uh, you're very emotional about that. It's very understandable because you cared about him. But all we're trying to do right now is seek the truth here. That's why I'm taking this statement. I got guilt. Huh? I got guilt. You got guilt? Mm -hmm. Why do you feel guilt? Real guilt. Huh? Real guilty. Why do you feel real guilty? Real guilty. Because you were talking down to the phone and you couldn't do anything about it? I ain't know about it. Huh? I ain't know about it. You didn't know what had happened to him. You see, yeah. right? In terms of you were on the phone and you didn't realize. Because I know him. Okay. All right. I mean, okay. He'll never fight. This is problem. He was. He was not one of those people. Mm -hmm. Okay. He'll never fight. Okay. Thank you very much. Yes. Okay. I just would hate to see that be the case here, because I know that about him. I don't know what happened. I don't know at all who this kid was or anything else, but I know George, okay. and I know that he does not like black people, and he would start something. He's a very confrontational person. Mm -hmm. It's it's in his blood. We'll mm -hmm. just say that, and I don't I don't want this this poor kid and their family right. to just be able to look. You, 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 you know him personally or from out at the, um, the, the, I guess the subdivision that you guys live in? Can this please not at all relate back to me? Okay. Um, but I will tell you. Okay. And I don't talk to him because of the things that he says, the person that he is, the things that he does. I know his mother, I know everybody, and they are all the same way. And I, to do an investigation or anything like that but I would like for you to stay in contact with me if you hear something you don't have to um, give me your name about it but you can just let me know that hey I heard this talk to this person because I understand that you don't want to be involved but I don't understand mm -hmm. really okay mm -hmm. but I just I'm a mom I can't right. stand right. seeing that some kid got shot and killed over a stupid fight, especially one that might, you know, right, because right. I know how he is. Right, and there are, from my understanding, a lot of unanswered questions. Um, the investigator has assigned to handle that case. He's not in right now, but um, I would like for, uh, or I'm going to pass this information on to him so he can, you know, uh, um, 
Just look Take into it. Just go yes. check the reports from other people and see if he's ever said anything about, you know, about black people or about being racist or anything like that. Because I guarantee you there's somebody out there who will say it. Okay. Hopefully they'll admit it and then not be afraid of him. But okay. I swear, okay. please just look into that. Okay, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, my name is Investigator Perkins. Hopefully you can remember that it's just like the restaurant. And if you feel that you need to talk or your safety or whatever, you can always call me back, and I can do whatever I can to help you. But um, I'll make sure that this is looked into. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much for calling. Okay. Thank you. Right. Bye. Bye. This is Investigator Sergeant of the Sanford Police Department. Today's date is Friday, March the 2nd, 2012. We're located at the Sanford Police Station, 815 West 13th Street, City of Sanford, Seminole County, Florida. The time is now 11.20 in the morning. Present in the room is stage name, man. On February 26th on Sunday at approximately 7 o'clock in the evening, something happened behind your house, correct? Yes. Can you tell me what you saw? We didn't see anything. We only heard everything. We had our back door open. Okay. So we could hear everything going on, but we didn't see anything. It was too dark. And okay, what did you hear? Um, it sounded just like, we had the TV kind of loud, but it sounded just like two or more men talking kind of loud. And so I muted the TV to see what was going on. And at that point, it kind of just sounded like scuffling around. So that's when I kind of went to just get the phone, because we've been having issues in the neighborhood already. What kind of issues? Break-ins and burglaries and stuff. So um, they've been telling us, if you see anything, hear anything suspicious, just call 911. So I just went ahead and got on the phone and called 911 at that point. Um, while I was calling, um, the scuffling kind of turned to like a, one man was yelling kind of like a, ah, ah, not a help yell, but just yelling. Okay. And so then those yells kind of turned to help, help, help. And at that point I was already on the phone with 911. And um, I think if you could hear the 911 tape, you can hear the gunshot too, because it was soon after that. But he yelled help many times. I heard the next door neighbor open his door and kind of say, you know, what are you guys doing? And the guy said, help, help to him too. And he's like, well, I'm calling 911. Because, I mean, we don't know what the hell they're doing out there. So, I mean, and we couldn't see anything because of our blinds and stuff. So we're not going to just run out there and help. So, I mean, that's pretty much the end of it. We heard the gunshot, and then it got quiet, and that was about it. Okay, the conversations that you heard, the yelling before you muted the TV, did you make out anything that was being said? I really couldn't. It was just kind of loud yelling. Was it an exchange, what do you call it, an exchange yes. of words? Yes, yes. More than one phrase to another how many how, how many back and forth did you hear as far as the yelling could you approximate I, I would say maybe three and i would be kind of just guessing like it would sound like maybe one person said something someone said so something like, back and hey, he said something hey hey three maybe yeah okay but again the tv was on and that's before i muted it so at first we kind of just thought it was like a couple of drunk guys or something yelling that's just how it sounded like loud belligerent kind of have you heard anything else um, do you know of anybody else who might have seen this thing from its inception when it started do you have any idea I don't think anyone besides us and our next door neighbor and I think you've talked with him already yeah. um, he's the only one that actually saw anything and I know that he saw he didn't know George or the other guy at all, but yeah. he did describe both of them, and we know George was on the bottom getting pummeled, and we saw George's face after. He was definitely, he was the one yelling help the whole time, and, um... How did his face look when you first saw him? Well, we only got a picture because the officer that wanted us to identify him wanted us to come over there, and we didn't want to be a part of that, so he took a picture and brought it over, and at first we couldn't even recognize him, because it looked like his nose was broken in a few spots, his lip was all bloody, and he just looked completely out of it. But then a lady behind us was like, oh, that's my neighbor, and I kind of put two and two together because, I mean, we've seen him a lot at the HOA meetings, but he just looked so messed up that it was hard to know. Have you ever spoken to him before? Um, just during meetings and stuff. I'm on the board, so, okay. you know, he'll we'll talk, but not much, honestly. Like, he talks to everyone else more than I've really ever talked to him. What's your impression of him as far as... Um, person. In general, good person? Yeah, he okay. seems just really laid back, 
you know, calm, cool, collected. That's why, I mean, I couldn't really picture him doing anything crazy, like, or malicious, or, you know what I mean? Like, I don't want to say either way, but I just don't, I can't picture him losing his cool, you know, unless he really felt like he needed to do something. Okay. But. So typically speaking, yeah, um, somebody who would basically try to avoid confrontation, or would you call him confrontational? I would say he would try to, I mean, he was confrontational in the fact that he was trying to do the neighborhood watch thing. Okay, a little passionate about it. Yeah, and, okay. you know, wanted to help out the neighborhood and this and that, and I think if he saw something going on, he would confront the person, but not confrontational in the sense like he's trying to have, it, you know, an altercation or something like that. So he's like a little Nazi running around trying no. to, you know, like No, mess. absolutely not. Okay. I think, I don't know if he has kids, but I know he's married, and I just... I can't see him doing anything crazy like that. He just wants the neighborhood to be safe. Okay. Well, by little nuts, I mean over aggressive, um, yeah. overbearing, stuff like that. No. Uh, no. Braggart, none of that. Okay. No, not at all. Okay. She's heard that the exchange, there was like a three part volley. Um, hey, hey, hey. And all of a sudden, there was a scuffling and the fighting, and they didn't see. And, uh, and they couldn't basically make out what they were saying. But you you spoke to you've spoken to George on many occasions? Not many. He comes to the meetings. But you, you would know recognize his voice possibly or? Uh I would but not no, not in that situation I wouldn't. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't it was just sound like two men yelling. Okay. You know, like it could have been any two men. So when you we talk about this exchange between them, you don't know if George was speaking started the conversation or at first we didn't even know how many men it was okay. it could have been four guys it sounded like you know he'll probably tell you the same thing it sounded like a couple of drunk guys or a group of drunk guys that's why you know he was going to maybe go out and see what was going on but we didn't know how many people were out there mm -hmm. so it just sounded like hey hey or not hey even but it was like just you know yelling like what are you doing what do you kind of like that just going back and forth yeah for about how long not long, but I mean, maybe like three, three exchanges, things three like that, boys. and then it just started scuffling, like rolling around on the cement on the sidewalk. Okay. Did you hear anybody chasing anybody? Did you hear anybody say anything along the lines of stop? Anything like that? I mean, not, not stop beating me up, that kind of thing, not the help. Uh, Prior to the help, did you hear a chase out there? No. Okay. I didn't. It sounded like it all started right on the sidewalk by our house there. Mm -hmm. And then maybe like it bent the corner, and right there is where the scuffle started and kind of scooted down. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because it definitely went past the back of our house, and then that's where the shot was on this side of our house. But that was directly next door to your house, right? Right. We, we ended up finding the, the, the dead kid. Right. Person, right. Yes. And your house is right on the intersection, is? Right. So you're saying you think it started over here on the T? Because if this were your house? If that was my house, well, my lunch, house would be. Lunch, correct? I live on, so let's pretend my house is here. I think it might have started either here or here, and then came around here. Well, this is a sidewalk, right? This is the, this is There's twin tree. There's two sidewalks. Yeah. This is twin tree, and this would be going to the mail. Okay, to the gotcha. So then it either started here or here, and then came over here, and this is where. Okay, so you think it shot. started on this portion of the sidewalk? Yes. From the sound. From the sound, yeah. And then it, this, where are you at? I'm sorry. Right here. You're right here, so you could hear it passing here. Right. Uh, and I'm a pretty nosy neighbor, so whenever I, and people are always walking their dogs and stuff back here, so I hear people all the time. Mm -hmm. But if it was something loud enough for me to be like, what the hell are they doing? Then that's why I muted the TV. And it was weird that it was, it's been raining all night, you know what I mean? For there even to be people out, we were kind of like, what are these people doing? No questions? Okay. I'm going to conclude this interview. It's now 11.28ish. Today's date is March 19th, 2012, approximately 1.35 p.m. My name is John Batchelor. I'm a special agent with the Florida Department of Law Enforcement. I'm here with Jim Post, an investigator with the State Attorney's Office, 18th Judicial Circuit, as well as... The purpose and scope of our inquiry today is to conduct an independent follow-up 
with regards to the shooting investigation that has been conducted by the Sanford Police Department in your community. This inquiry is being conducted by agents of the Florida Department of Law Enforcement as well as investigators with the Office of State Attorney. I'm going to hand you a piece of paper. It's basically titled Narrative Report, Sanford Police Department. If you would look at that and authenticate, please read. Indicate if that is your statement and your handwriting and your signature. me if you would is that dated February 26 2012 yes okay. if you would uh, could you go through the events that occurred on February 26 2012 yep we were just sitting here watching TV we had the back door open because it was raining and relaxing and um, it was pitch black out though but we could hear or I could hear kind of like someone yelling or loud talking kind of just sounded like two or three maybe a group of guys but we couldn't really tell so i muted the tv and then the talking stopped and it was more like a scuffling across the grass and pavement there so at that point i just called 911 because we had been having issues with break-ins here already and we were just told if we hear or see anything weird just call 911 so as I'm getting on the phone right along, we kind of start hearing a yelling, but you, it's not words yet. It's more just like a ah, ah, kind of a yell. And then while I'm on the phone, it turns into helps. And then from there, you know, we kind of just he was in the kitchen trying to get a knife or something to go out there and help. I was yelling at him, don't do that. I don't because you couldn't see anything through our blinds and all that. Mm -hmm. We couldn't, I didn't know if it was a man, 10 men, a man and a dog. Like I had no idea what was going on out there. So. Um, while we're in the kitchen, we hear the gunshot, and so we just kind of ducked down and ended up getting upstairs because at that point we just had no idea what was going on, and from there, that was it. I mean, this, the yelling stopped after the gunshot, and, you know, we could hear people talking outside, so we felt safer. I believe it was the police or other neighbors. We finally came down and went out front, but that's about it. We couldn't see anything, so it's all just what we heard. About how many helps do you think you heard? Uh, um, maybe 15. They're on my call. You can hear it all on there, but yeah, I would guess maybe 15. It was like within a span of 40 seconds, I'd say, the yelling started to the gunshot. At any time from the time you heard the initial yelling loud, as you indicated in your statement, uh -huh. then the helps, then as you indicated the gunshot, and you went upstairs, at any time did you look outside the window? No, because we couldn't see outside here, even if we wanted to, we would have had to literally go out onto the porch and lift up the blinds to see. And once we were upstairs, I didn't want to go by a window because we had already heard the gunshot. Do you indicate gunshot? Are you familiar with guns? How they sound? No, and that was a weird sound. So, I mean, I knew what it was. There's no doubt about it, but it just wasn't expect it wasn't what I expected it would sound like. It was more of a pop than what you hear in the movies. <laughs> At any time did you go outside when you indicated you went out front? Did you ever go out back once you determined as you indicated you heard voices? felt the cops were here? We went around the side, but they had already started roping off, and I think they were doing CPR, so we didn't want to get in anyone's business, but. Are you a member of the Homeowners Association? Yeah. Are you a? Uh, I'm a board member. Board member? Mm -hmm. Did you attend? A homeowners meeting on September 22nd, 2011. I'm sure, yeah. I haven't missed one, so. Are you familiar with that date? Do you need to look at a calendar or anything to yeah, see no, if you're... it's a Tuesday, because they're all on Tuesdays, but I'll look. 
Well, I guess I wouldn't have it in this planet. I'm sure it was there. Was it the, when they nominated everyone and all that? It's the. It would be the uh, uh, neighborhood when Sanford Police Department came down. I was not there, actually. When they they came to talk about the homeowners or the uh, neighborhood watch. Yes. No, I was not there for that. You were absent on that date. Yes. Do you know who was nominated as a result of that meeting, since you are a board member with the Homeowners Association? Yes. Who? George Zimmerman. And I'm not sure who else is on there with him. I know there was a man at the last meeting when the police department came after this happened <coughs> that said he was on it, but I, didn't, I haven't seen like a list of who all's on it. What, in your position as a board member, when was it first brought to your attention about George Zimmerman and the Crime Watch program? Um, I guess the meeting right after that. He had we had break-ins before that. Um, he had been at meetings just to be a member of the meeting, not for anything else. And we would just all talk and brainstorm about what we can do to prevent these break-ins or look out for each other. And at some point, someone said we need to get the neighborhood watch going better. And that's when I think they set up this meeting where they had, I think her name come out. Okay. And, um, but I was not there for that one. I think it was on a Thursday, and normally our meetings are on Tuesdays, and I couldn't go on a Thursday. Okay. Had you been in subsequent meetings where George Zimmerman was in attendance? Uh-huh. Was it relating to homeowner, issue, homeowner association issues where... He would have provided an update as to his crime watch program. Was there any discussion? Uh, maybe a little bit. There wasn't much other than, I mean, we had a break in probably two months ago where they found out who did it, and I think he might have said something about what was going on with that, but nothing as far as like plans on what to do for the neighborhood watch or anything. As a board member, uh, Zimmerman's position was what with the homeowners? I mean, I guess they're saying on the news a captain. I haven't heard anything as far as like giving a title to him. I just thought he was a member of the neighborhood watch. I didn't know he was necessarily the leader. I didn't even know how many people were part of it. So it's not something like that they've been meeting separately or anything. I don't think anything has been going on like that. If so, it hasn't been a big enough issue that we've been talking about it much. Okay. If someone was to contact a Neighborhood Watch program as a board member, who would they contact? George, yeah. And how were they known to, to do this? Just because that's the only one I knew that was on it. <laughs> but otherwise, I'd have to ask the other two board members if they, I mean, they might know who else is on it. Do you have any questions? No, that night was anybody home besides you and no. you were the only two? Right. So. You would raise your right hand. This concludes the interview at 1.45 p.m. next till time. Oh, I'm sorry, raise your right hand. Uh, do you swear that the testimony you provided is the truth? Yes. Okay. This concludes the interview at 1.45 p.m. Today's date is March 20th, uh, 2012. The time is approximately 3.26 p.m. The um, person being interviewed is, oh, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, persons conducting the interview are Agent Dale Crosby of the Florida Department of Law Enforcement and uh, Investigator Bob Beaudry of the Office of the State Attorney. Um, the place of the interview is uh, Sanford, Florida. Um, Ma'am, just for the record, would you again state your full name? Yes, it is. Okay. Um, would you raise your right hand for me, please? You solemnly swear or affirm that the statement you're about to give is the truth and the whole truth? Yes. Okay. Um, just drawing your attention back to this incident that occurred here in your uh, in your neighborhood, could you just tell me in your own words what you saw and what you heard that evening? First, uh, we heard someone yelling. It sounded like a dog at first. And um, I igno we ignored it, and then it becomes louder. So I looked up the sliding door. I didn't really see anything the first time I looked and, and um, heard a shot. I looked, 
again out the window or the sliding door. Two, I saw two shadow. Um, turned around, told my husband, and he went outside. And I looked out the window again, and I saw a man standing with a jacket, talking to my husband. That's that's all I saw. Okay. Do you remember about what time of uh, day or night this was? Uh, it was on a Sunday at seven fifteen. Around 7.15. 7.15? 7.15, 7.10, around okay. that time. And was it, how would you describe the uh, the lighting conditions outside? That time, it, it's, it's dark. It's not on the uh, daytime hour or whatever. Okay. Um, our porch light wasn't on, and I couldn't really see anything on the first glance. On the second glance, that's when I saw the two shadow close okay. to our porch light. Okay, so the, the first thing that your attention was drawn to was just a, a noise? Yeah. Okay, how would you describe that noise? At first it sounded like a, a howl, like a dog howling, like a, a, a loud howl. Okay, nothing um, intelligible, like the English language or <laughs> a, a, a language? No. No? Okay. At some point did you hear something that you recognized? And then... Um, and then I, we heard help after the howl. That's when I looked and didn't see anything. Okay, and you looked out your looked your, your living room window, mm -hmm. and at that point you didn't see I, anything. I didn't see anything. Okay. And then I heard a shot. We heard a shot. And, and how I many looked. shots did you hear? Just one. Okay. And did you look out your window a second time? When we heard the shot, I looked out, and that's when I saw a shot. Uh, a two man. On the on the on the grass. Okay, you saw two people. Two people. Uh, and they were were they both on the ground? No, one was on top of the other. I don't know which one. Okay, were you, were you able to tell from where you were looking in through your uh, living room window what these people were wearing? All I saw while while they were on the ground was dark colors. I don't know what, what, this is dark. Okay, so you, you wouldn't be able to tell of what, no. describe what color or what, they, right. the description of their clothing? No, you I You just couldn't. saw two figures on the ground? Mm -hmm. It was pretty dark by then, around okay. seven. And you said at that point your husband had gone out? The, how, right after we heard the shot, I told my husband, there's a man, there's people over there. He, that, he, when he went outside, I looked out again, and there was a man talking to my husband. Okay. Was, were, you, were you able to tell if the person your husband was speaking to was one of the people who was on the ground? No. No? Okay. When you, were, when you looked out the window again, was your husband speaking to one individual and one person was still on the ground? Yes. Okay. Did you, at some point... After looking out the window that third time, did you leave your house? No. No, I, you I never. Wouldn't. No. Okay, I, you, yeah, so you yes. never actually went outside. I did not go outside. <laughs> okay. Um, when you describe, you saw two people on the ground. Can you describe what position they were in when you looked out and saw? I know there's a man on 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 the grass down and a man on top. Okay. Can you describe? What the man on top, as far as which way they were facing, size or anything like that. I couldn't. Well, it was kind of. It was. It was dark. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I know it was big. Dum, dum, dum. Oh, sure. It was. Come on over. It was big. The guy on top. No, I know. Well, yeah. Hi, well, can I sit over there. No. Yeah. I know that there's a guy on the floor right. and a guy on top. Um, I can't really say how big the guy is because the guy, you know, comparing what big and small. Okay. When you looked out the window and you saw the two people, mm -hmm. the one on the bottom and the one on the top, was the guy on the bottom facing up or facing down, or could you tell? I couldn't tell. Okay. I know it's on the, on the ground. Okay. Did you see anything in the guy on the top? Did he have anything in his hands? No. Okay. As soon as I saw a shadow there, I turned around. <laughs> I didn't want so them to see me. There's no light unless somebody turns their patio light on. And I know we had ours off. We didn't have, she didn't turn on until the police got there. I know 
the one neighbor probably didn't turn theirs on until someone um, came out with a flashlight. Um, when I saw them, when I saw them outside, our neighbor, not this one, but the next one, asked them, do you need help? Do you want me to call 911? That's, I saw that too. I don't have any more questions. Okay. Is there anything else you can think of about that evening that maybe we've forgotten to ask you or that you, you recall that you think is important for us to know? That moment, what's in my mind is he needs to come inside the house. <laughs> he shouldn't come outside. Okay. That's, that's is everything you've, you've just told us today um, been voluntary? Nobody forced you or coerced you or promised you anything to, no. to give that statement? Okay. And has everything you've just told us uh, here today been completely truthful? Yes. Okay. Um, the time is approximately uh, 3.33, and that concludes this interview. All right. Ma'am, can you state your name for the record, please? Okay. Can you raise your right hand, ma'am? You saw me tour, tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but truth, so I hope you got it. Yes. Okay. Ma'am, my name is Bernie Delarue. I'm the assistant state attorney uh, in Jacksonville assigned to this case involving, obviously, uh, something that happened outside your residence. My understanding is you were home that night when it happened, that Sunday night? Yes. Okay. And did you hear something going on? Yes. And at some point you looked out the window, is that correct? Yes. Did you do that more than one time? Yes. Okay. Um, at some point, did you actually see or hear something that draw your attention to that? Was there somebody? Uh, well, how would you describe what was going on outside? First, we heard like a howling sound. Okay. And then the second time, we heard uh, a more clearly help sound. Okay. Okay. Could you say who was saying help or not? I could. On? Okay, I couldn't. Right. And you looked out. Where, did you see uh, when you first looked out? Were the people standing up or on the ground? At first, I couldn't see anything. It was dark. Okay. Second time I looked, um, I, I looked so many times outside. I don't know right. which one you switched. No, that's fine. But um, I know when I, when I first, when I remember, it's, it was too dark. And then a guy was on top of another guy okay. and and the shot. Okay. So the shot was after you first, you first saw somebody on top of another mm -hmm. guy? Okay. Mm -hmm. Is that a yes? Yes. Okay. <laughs> now, in terms of the, could you describe... Um, did you look at the faces of the guy on top or the guy on bottom? No, it was too dark. Okay. Um, could you describe in terms of what clothing they were wearing, the guy on top or the guy on bottom? Uh, it was too dark. Okay. And, yeah. How would you describe their physique at all, of the guy on top or the guy on bottom? I know after seeing the, 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 t the, the TV of what's happening, okay. comparing their pictures, Okay. I think... Zimmerman is definitely on top because of his size. Okay, so the guy on top, it, to you, it appeared to be bigger? Yes. Is that correct? And yes. when you say bigger, what do you mean by that? Compared to Martin. Okay, like bigger in terms of you're describing like width, like heavier? Yeah. Okay, right broader? Yes. Okay. And you're saying that you saw Mr. Zimmerman on TV and also uh, Mr. Martin's pictures, and you know now that one is bigger than the other? Yes. Okay. All right. And has anybody threatened you in any way to get you to make this statement? No. Okay. Has anybody made you any promises in order to get you to make this statement? No. Okay. Thank you very much, ma'am. I know you previously also spoke to the police, so I'm not going to go into details of what you previously told them. Okay. Thank you. Yep. This investigator is serving the Sanford Police Department. Today's date is Sunday, February the 26th, 2012. It's a Sunday. The time is now 8.30 p.m. I'm located in Sanford, Seminole County, Florida. Present in my vehicle is... What's your name, sir? Okay, I'm out here investigating a death of a, the shooting death of an un unidentified individual. Um, can you tell me what exactly you saw this evening? Sure. Um, we heard a loud uh, pop or two pops outside. Where do you live exactly? Where is that in relation to the courtyard where we saw? Um, it basically happened right behind our house. Okay. Um, while I was assembling furniture, and my wife said that uh, we heard some yelling outside. My wife just looked out the window and she says, there's some people yelling. She closed the blinds and then uh, there was still some, a little bit of yelling and she, we heard a couple of pops and she looked and she just saw some guy hunched over and uh, she got away from the window again and she said, I think somebody got shot. So I came outside and I saw this guy in the, I guess it was an orange jacket. I don't remember exactly what color it was. Was he white or was he black? What is he? I think he was like Puerto Rican. Okay. I think I, I, it's dark. I didn't really get a good facial look at him. Okay. But he goes, "Man, I got blood on my face." I go, "Yeah, you got, hey, you got blood all over, man." And then I looked over, and he's got blood in the back of his head. I, I go, "You all right, man?" Ah, oh, man, the guy 
he was beating up on me, so I had to shoot him. And I go, did you use a 9 or a 40? Oh, he's a 9. And I just looked over and I'm like, wow, all right, well, um, did you call 911 yet? Because I'm going to do it right, I'm getting ready to do it right now. He goes, no, no, I already called. Just, can you please call my wife? And then just a couple of minutes later, um, Stanford police officer came up and that was it. Uh, the rest of the guys came. Okay, did he say if you knew this person at all or for anything for that no, matter? I don't. I've never seen that guy before. I've never seen any of these guys before. Not even a guy that was defending himself, I guess I should say. Gotcha. That same person that you had, there was a defense thing. This guy came out, he was getting beat up, and he shot the guy in defense? Right. Okay. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, I might interview you again. I'm going to conclude this interview. It's uh, 8.35. Uh, today's date is March the 20th. Time now is approximately is 3:02 p.m. We're in the residence of mm -hmm. Sanford. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, before we get started, uh, I'd like to explain to you that the purpose and the scope of this inquiry today is just to conduct an independent follow-up with regards to the shooting investigation that has been conducted by the Sanford Police Department in your com community. This inquiry is being conducted by agents of the Florida Department of Law Enforcement investigations with the State Attorney's Office, and we identified ourselves to you, uh, and so that you know that who we are. Okay? Did both of us identify ourselves to you? Yes. All right. Um, what I'm going to do start out with is have you take a look at uh, the written statement you gave to the police department okay. on uh, February 26th. Why don't you take a look at it, read over it, and identify if it's your handwriting and the statement that you gave at the time. Okay, yes, it is uh, my handwriting. I'm going to go ahead and read it out loud. No, you know, just look over and okay. make sure it's... Underneath the uh, last sentence, would you initial it and date it for me, please? That it's your statement and it's true and accurate as it was the night you did. Uh, today's date is the uh, March 20th. Okay, just but let me just interject just for a second, just before we begin, just for the record, so it's on because we're we're on tape. Um, would you state your full name for me? I'm sorry. Would you state your full name? And before we ask you any questions, we're just going to put you under oath. Okay, okay, would you raise your right hand for me, please? Solemnly swear or affirm that the statement you're about to give is the truth? Yes. Okay, thank you. If you will, take us from the beginning of that night and in your own words, describe what you heard, what you saw, and any actions that you took. Um, I was putting furniture together uh, in the living room floor right here. And uh, she was sitting on the floor with me, and we were just... Uh, Sitting there, and we heard a couple of guys, or we heard voices outside, and the first sounded like dogs. And uh, I go, what was that? And she goes, I don't know. So my wife, and she pops her head out the window, and she says, there's two guys fighting. And um, I said, okay, well, get away from the window. Don't make it our problem. Let them figure it out. They're grown men. <clears throat> so she sits down. And... Uh, not a second goes by that we heard a loud, either a grunt, it sounded like a gunshot because it was just so loud. It, and it was just so muffled, it sounded like a grunt and then a, a gunshot or, or it could have been vice versa. And uh, I went through the garage carrying a flashlight and my cell phone. I had my cell phone set for 911, all I had to do was push call on it. When I got around the corner, I slowed down, I was shining my flashlight on the guy. And uh, <clears throat> I think he was on the phone, because it sounded like he was on the phone. And so uh, I shot my, light, my flashlight on him. I said, do I need to call 911? He says, no, I just got off the phone with him. I said, okay. 
So as I get closer, he goes, am I bleeding? I, and I look at him, and he's got blood on his face. He goes, yeah, you're, you're bleeding. And uh, he turns around, and he kind of squats down the sidewalk, and I can see uh, blood on the back of his head, grass stains. And uh, by that time, I kind of flash my light down, and there was this kid face down on the grass. Um, by that time, the police showed up, and uh, one officer went ahead and, and handcuffed them. From there, it was, uh, you know, can you please call my wife, let her know what happened. So I, I called, and I said, you know, your husband's been involved in a shooting, and he's going to be, uh, he's going to be um, held for questioning. He's being handcuffed, and he's going to be held for questioning. And it was kind of like a little, I kind of made it almost like it was a little long-winded, but he says, just tell her I, I shot somebody. I said, uh, okay, well, he just shot someone. And uh, after that, that was it. And uh, law enforcement, or more law enforcement came in and um, started doing CPR on the kid. And uh, after that, um, paramedics um, soon arrived. And there was something they could do for the kid. And uh, that was it, pretty much. I was just outside with a... Uh, with the remainder of the law enforcement just waiting to fill their, or answer their questions and filling out a report like that one. Okay. Um, about what time did you say it was? I don't really remember the time. Were you watching TV at the time? No, I, like I said, the TV was on, but um, I was putting a little coffee table together. You don't so. remember what was on TV at the time? No. Okay. Um, when you went out to take a look uh, at the scene, when you first went out there, can you Tell me what position or where the people were standing or where the kid was laying at. Sure, he was, uh, the guy was on the sidewalk walking towards this way, towards me. And the kid was face down on the grass, his feet at an angle coming like towards this direction here, facing the patio. And then his legs were facing that way towards their backyard, towards their patio. So his feet, the kid, was laid, the person laying on the ground, feet were face, facing your patio. We're, we're facing that way. Okay. He was, he was, his, his head was his over here. Yeah, so his head was like, here's his head, his, and here's his feet. So he was kind of like at this angle here. Okay. And that was just outside this door or the one? Um, just outside that one over there. I guess it was maybe two, two patios down. And here. the guy that was standing, where was he when you came around? He was on the sidewalk towards, uh, walking towards my direction and uh, maybe uh, six or eight feet from the, across the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. And when he said something to you, how was his voice? Was he excited? Was he calm? Uh, no, he was more like, um, he was talking more like he was having a hard time because uh, he <laughs> looked like he just got his, his butt whooped. So he was a little bit more of a, like, you know, not shock, but like just getting up type of thing. Like, man, you know, it's, um, I don't know how to describe it, but, you know, it's just basically getting up from a fight and just started like, yeah, you know, I, just, I just got into a fight and I had to do this. When he uh, asked you to call his wife, uh -huh. and he made the statement, just tell I shot somebody, mm -hmm. how would you describe that, his voice at that time? Um, like, uh, just quick get to the point type, type talk, and uh, like, uh, almost like, um, he just did it, you know, it's like, uh, not like he was, um, in shock or anything, not like, I can't believe I just shot someone, it was more like, just tell my wife I shot somebody, like, like it was nothing. Can you describe what the guy was standing up was wearing? Yeah, jeans, um, an orange with gray trim jacket or fleece sweater type thing. Um, he had a haircut like mine, it was very uh, short. And that was pretty much it. Okay, and the person laying on the ground, could you describe what he was wearing? Um, looked like uh, long jean shorts, 
maybe down to his calf. Um, like a dark blue hoodie type sweater. I think he had a white t-shirt underneath. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay. Now, when you first saw the person laying on the ground, you said he was face down? Yes. Could you could tell anything other, like his hands positions or anything like that when you walked out there? I don't remember. Okay. So, right before all this started, you were in the back. Describe what draw your attention to the actions outside. Um, what caught my eye when I first came on the corner? No, no. When you were in the house, uh -huh. what made you hear the, what drew your attention to the activities outside? Um, well, we just heard um, some loud noises, like it was a dog barking. And um, I didn't hear anyone say anything recognizable at first. And uh, towards the end, I heard help. And... Uh, as soon as that gunshot went off and my wife says, oh my gosh, somebody's been shot, that's what drew me outside. That's what drew me outside. Um, that's pretty much it. I mean, that's what brought me out there. How long do you think the, the, when you first started hearing him, the person scream for help, how long was that? It couldn't even have been a minute. Okay. It was very quick. So you heard the you heard the sound of what you thought was right. It sounded like it started over here, and then it ended up over there. It was very quick, and before I knew it, we heard a gunshot. Okay. Did you after you went outside with your flashlight and looked around? Was there anything laying on the ground that you noticed out of the ordinary? No, along with just a kid laying there, I, saw, I noticed there was one, it, it looked like a, one of those technical flashlights, and then towards the corner on the sidewalk across from where that, that poop station is, was a, like a little flashlight. I don't know if it could have been like, it looked like a flashlight to me anyways. Yeah. So it looked like there were two flashlights on the ground. Questions? Just a few. You said when you first went outside, and you saw this this person on the ground. But you, do you remember um, the exact? You said he was face down, but do you remember his arms being underneath him or out to his sides? Do you remember the position of his arms or anything specific like that? No. Okay. And you said it was less than a minute of time between the time you first heard the commotion and you heard the shot. Yeah. Okay. It was less than a minute. And most of it, you said, was unrecognizable? Yeah. Yeah. And when, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The person that you encountered after the incident that you spoke to, have you ever seen him before? No. Ever spoken to him before? No. Okay. Okay, one last, couple more questions and then be done. When you went around there, was the guy standing up, did you see if he had moved the person laying on the ground or was he on top of him? It was, it was so quick that by the time I got outside, he was already standing up. Okay. And when Actually, let me, uh, there is something I have to show you, though, but okay. I'll, I'll, I'll wait or do it now. Go ahead. All right, hang on. Let me call you back, Jimmy, while I'm tired. I think like having some breaks, so we should so behave. Um, did you get? Did you get? No, I got something. Did you get? Did you get? No, I got something. Yeah. Did you drive like some water? Oh, no, thank you. Oh, that's new. You got it at the mall? These are people from FDLE and State Attorney's Office. Sorry. 
I don't know why I didn't think about it from just n until just now. Because I deleted it off my phone. But I did save it. <laughs> I don't mean to laugh, sorry. This was that was a flashlight. I didn't. I can't rotate it. I have to fix it. But that was the one flashlight that was there. It has the key laying down. I have another one. So there was his head facing over here, and there was his feet down there. And then this was the back of Zimmerman's head. He had a gray jacket with, with gray trim on. Orange jacket with gray trim. And he had jeans on. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I didn't remember until just now. I apologize. You, you took those photos yourself? Yeah. With your, your cell phone? Yeah. And you deleted them off your cell phone? I deleted them off my phone. But you saved them on your, your laptop? And I put them on my laptop, yeah. Do you get a copy of you know? uh I'll do it right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just for sake. Do you want to... I can email it to you right now? Yeah. Let me give you a card that has my email address on it. If you want to right there the bottom corner. If you just want to email them to my... Uh, okay. So you're the attorney of... Um, I'm an investigator from the state attorney's office here in San Juan County. Okay. That's the only... Are those the only two photos you took? Three photos. You took three photos? Three yes. photos. Okay, I'll get to say. All right. I'm going to go ahead and end it. Go ahead and end it. Take. Just before we, uh, before we end, has everything you just told us been uh, completely truthful? Yes. Okay, the time is approximately uh, 3.21, and that concludes this interview. Let me get my password. Oh, wait. Testing, one, two, three. Yes, it looks like it's all right. Okay. Um, sir, if I could have you state your name for the record, please. Okay. My name is Bernie DeLarion. I'm an assistant state attorney with Jacksonville, Florida. I've been assigned this case by Ms. Corey, who was assigned by the governor's office to uh, take over. And I know you've previously uh, made some statements to the police. I just want to briefly ask you some questions. I know you also talked to somebody from FDLA, et cetera. Uh, let me get you to raise your right hand first. You saw me swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but truth to help you guys. Yes. Thank you. Um, you at some point back on uh, that Sunday when obviously a young man was shot, uh, you were at your house, is that correct? Yes. And you heard something going on outside? Yes. Okay. Did you actually see what occurred? No. Okay. At some point did you end up uh, going outside? Yes. Okay. When you went outside, did you come into contact with a person uh, who ended up being arrested by the police? Yes. And did you determine later that that man was uh, Zimmerman, I believe his name is? Yes. Okay. Can you tell us when you came into contact with him how he was acting? He was acting like he had just gotten his butt beat. He was uh, a little bit out of breath, um, trying to c recompose himself because he had just, he was okay. trying to. Right. And what, what, did, what did he say? What, what did you say to him and what did he say to him? Um, are you okay? Do I need to call 911? He says, I just got off the phone with him. Okay. And did he say anything about calling him, uh, his wife or anything like that? After a short period of time, he did ask me to um, call his wife as he was getting um, handcuffed. Okay, and did he, did he, how did he say that? Um, as I was explaining to his wife what had happened, he just blurted out, just tell her I shot someone. Okay, and what was his demeanor? Was he crying, or what, how would you describe it? Uh, out of breath. Um, I think when he, was he, you know, he was, when he, when he was telling me, he was a little bit more just kind of like, like get to the point. Uh, like just a matter of fact, not a big deal? Yeah. Okay. Is that how you took it? Yes. Okay. So it was just like a matter of fact, like, you know, yeah, tell her I shot somebody. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, 
Thank you very much, sir. Has anybody threatened you to get you to make this statement? No. Has anybody made you any promise in order to get you to make this statement? No. Okay. And I know you previously talked to the police and all that, so I'm not going to belabor everything else in detail, but I just wanted to get that fact. I don't know if it was clear that I had asked you about that before. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. 911, do you need police, fire, or medical? Um, my brother said someone got shot behind our house. Okay, uh, what is the address out there? Okay, is your brother out there right now? No, he ran in the house. Okay. Do you know who was shot? I have no idea. I'm inside. Okay, is that the address where they're at or the address where you're at? It's behind our house. It's behind your house? Yeah. Okay, you didn't see anything else or hear anything else? No, I okay. wasn't outside. Okay. Did you hear the shot? I heard something and my brother ran in the house. Okay. And your brother didn't see anything else? My brother saw it. Okay. Is your brother there right now? He's next to me. Okay. Can you give him the phone? Yeah. Hello? Hello, sir. What exactly did you say? I saw... A man laying on the ground that needed help that was screaming, and then I was going to go over there to try to help him, but my dog got off the leash, so I went and got went and got my dog, and then I heard a loud sound, and then the screaming stopped. Okay, did you um, see the person get shot? No. Okay. Did you know the person that was shot, or did you see the person who had the gun? No, I just heard a loud gunshot okay. sound. And then the screen stuff. Uh, okay. We do have multiple officers in the area right now. Okay. All right. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye-bye. Right, this is Investigator Sir of the Sanford Police Department. Today's date is Monday, March the 5th, 2012. It's now 5 p.m. I'm okay. It's well. City of Sanford, Seminole County, Florida. Present in the room is Tiffany name, sir? Yes. Also present is Investigator Singleton. Yes, Investigator And me. Okay. You guys start all over again. Okay. On the Sunday before last 26th, at about 7 o'clock at night, right, more or less? 7.30, 7.15? I don't know, sir. Okay. So what you again? I'm going to get close to you because you speak kind of soft. I saw someone laying on the ground that looked like they couldn't get up and they were yelling for help. Was he white or black? I can't say. Okay. You see what it was work? Um, no. It looked like a red shirt. Okay. And you were outside? Yes. What were you doing outside? Walking, walking the dog. Okay. Um, you heard... Did you hear anything? Did you hear any yelling or any arguing or anything? No, I just heard um, someone yelling help. Okay. Could you tell who was yelling help? Was the person on the ground or anybody else? The person on the ground was yelling help. Okay. Was there anybody else besides the person on the ground there? Not that I saw. So you only saw one person? Yeah, I only saw, I only looked for a few seconds. Okay. You didn't see how this whole thing started or any chasing of anybody or anybody arguing or anything like that? I did not. Okay. Will you walk us through the whole thing that you might have, can you show us what, where you saw what you saw? Yes. Okay. Do you have any questions for me? No. You like sports? Yes. Okay. How far were you from this person that you saw you went from? Do you know? Go show us. You said you didn't see why he was yelling for No. You couldn't tell what was happening to him? I, when I saw him, I thought, like, since it was wet outside, I thought he had fallen, like, broken his leg or something. Okay. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and pause this thing. It's now 503. Investigators through the Sanford Police Department City's date is Thursday, March the 1st, 2012. Discussing case number 2012-501163. Speaking with a... Um, can you give me your name and your date of birth, please? 
on this on Sunday the 26th of this month. Were you at home? Yes. Okay, there was an incident that happened in the courtyard behind your house, correct? Correct. Okay, can you tell me exactly what you saw, ma'am? Uh, okay, first of all, I was in the kitchen um, making some coffee for me and my friend, okay. and I have my window half open, and I hear somebody crying, like a young voice crying. So by the time um, me and my friend, we hear like a shoot. Gunshot. Gunshot. Okay. But, um, I mean, I thought it probably would say something kids, you know, playing with something. So I just walked out of to my uh, porch and I saw the two guys. I mean, it was very dark. It was a night and you know, most of the houses have been turning on the light. So I saw two, 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 two persons, one landing on the floor. And the other one, the other one on top of him, making like a pressing. Like a what? Um, like either pressing on his back or... At that time, both of us were outside. We were unsure if he was checking for a pulse, if he was looking in his pocket. Uh, when I grabbed the phone to call 911, still was standing out there and saw the kids foot moving and it looked like the guy was standing over him like pressing on him is what she's trying to say. Okay, um, pressing in the sense of were they, was the guy on top on his feet or was he still laying down on the guy on the bottom? The guy that was shot was laying on the ground. We didn't see but at that time his face was down. It's planted in the ground. Okay. The guy was standing over him, one foot on each side of him, bending over with his hands on the kid's back. Okay, could you, okay, prior to all this, did anybody see, okay, when she says she's heard somebody crying, is it a sobbing cry, a, uh, a Like whining, um. Okay, like desperate, oh. uh, Okay, huh, okay. What's going on? Mm -hmm. And the guy, uh, the one who was on top of the, the other one, he, he looked at me, but he didn't say anything. It was dark, but he, he turned his face facing me and I repeat again what's wrong what's going on mm -hmm. and, it, and he didn't answer so at the third time I asked hey what's up what's going on right there he said oh, I just called the police so my friend by that time she already was I grabbed my phone and I was calling 911 at that time okay oh. could you recognize either one of the individuals involved <laughs> it was dark <laughs> It was too dark. If you, if you, I mean, I can, I can I didn't recognize the child that was, the kid that was laying on the ground because I saw him, yes, from the face down, but whenever the police rolled him over, mm -hmm. I know he had a shaved head. Um, skinny? Yeah, he was skinny. He was not very short, it didn't look like, from the distance. He had tan, like he was a black kid, but very light skin. He didn't look very dark, more like olive. Um, the guy that was standing over him was pretty medium, thick build, uh -huh. short haircut, dark hair. Um, and I would say that he was, uh, I mean, that little kid was so skinny compared to him. Exactly, yeah. <clears throat> That's the impression that we all got. Uh, um, as far as... And I can, I can tell you there was no fighting going on at the no. time that the gun went off. Because we were both in the kitchen making coffee, the window was open. There was no fighting, and the fight that happened started way down the sidewalk because the person on the very end of this block is the one who called the police originally because the fight broke out. Now the kid got shot way down here, you know, five doors down. And we don't hear just one shot. We did not hear two. Okay. Yes, we heard the one shot, so I'm assuming... Maybe the kid was already shot once and was crying and trying to get home, or I don't know. I know they were not physically fighting at the time that gun went off when we heard the shot and the kid hit the ground. Yes. Really? Okay. Um, is there any way I can get both of you to come down to the police station sometime tomorrow? Or sometime uh, the weekend is fine also. I mean, I work weekends also. 
Yeah. You don't have to schedule right now. I mean, you can talk about it tonight, but yeah, I think it's imperative that we sit down and talk in the control setting, and I basically videotape the whole thing also. What you're giving me is information that's um, <coughs> important. And, um, because if you're can, I, can I ask you something? Sure. Mm-hmm. I mean, that day, I was so scared. I've never been seeing such a thing in my life. Mm-hmm. And I was like, what the fuck is going on? The reason why he wasn't arrested is something that I can explain to you folks when you come down with I see you guys face to face. Um, right now, as it stands, the information that you've given me thus far is something that I have to really get really in depth with I, with both of you, basically. Because if you're telling me that he, he wasn't shot during the fight, then we definitely have to do a more um, in-depth uh, interview with both of you, if, if that's possible. I, I need cooperation is what I need, so I'm sure you guys are giving it, but... Um, it's something that basically yeah, it needs to be done at the police station, um, and that's why in, in, as soon as possible. Um, well, I think her main concern is the guy was released. He lives in this neighborhood. He has seen both of our people. He knows and, where we live. And I, I'll give you both my cell phone numbers, and I can guarantee you your complete safety. If I got a park in front of your house, if you feel unsafe, um, I'll do that. Your safety is the utmost concern to me. The person that we're talking about. Um, is not somebody who's going to do something like that. He is, um, well, like I said, I can tell you all about him when, but he, she has something to worry about. And double nothing because of the fact that, like I said, if I got to park myself in front of her house, make sure she feels safe, I'll do that. So, and uh, th- that's how important it is. And like I said, I would never, you know, put her in any kind of jeopardy. I understand she's nervous and apprehensive, but um, like I said. Well, I mean, both of us, both of us live here. Uh-huh. So it's not like, I mean, and the guy, we have no clue what, I, I could not pick him out on his face. No, nature, no. But you show me him from behind and I can tell you. Exactly. Uh, because if somebody they can pick up in front of my door and, and, and see me, and I don't, I, I, I cannot recognize him from that view. And that, won't, that, that won't be necessary as far as identifying him. What I need is basically, um... Uh, uh, I, I already know who is involved here. I know who was shot, and I know who did the shooting. And the reason why he wasn't arrested is because what he is telling us is the only thing we have to go off of. Okay, what you folks tell me, which I'm you know, unraveling little by little, is something different than what he's saying. Okay, he's not a uh, he's not a criminal per se. The person that did the shooting. Um, no, obviously. I mean, that can be the case. I mean, maybe somebody gets so mad and de- he didn't uh, think about the consequence. Exactly. And I get that clear. Mm-hmm. I think he has a temper and I think he got the crap beat out of them. He thought he could take this little 17 year old. And I think maybe he did in self defense, maybe shoot him once. But from what I'm being told, there were two guns, um, two fires. Two times it was shot, and the only one that we saw is the one that laid the kid out and killed him. <clears throat> okay, and like I said, I'll clarify all that for you also um, at the station. And what I will do is I'll exchange information with you, and um, as much as I can. But I also am very interested in find out and, and, and getting more into detail as far as why. Um, how, how it happened as far as them not fighting at the time that gun went off. Okay, if that can happen this weekend, like I said, anytime you guys say day or night, I mean, we can be at the police station and we can sit down in an inter- interview room, basically, and go over the whole thing. That would be very, very helpful. Okay, and no one is going to know that we are involved in the way? Well, we can discuss that also as far as conditions of anonymity. Um, all I need is basically direction. If I get direction, I can get the person involved in this room to give me the truth. That's basically what I need here. And anything more than that, I'll make it perfectly clear to the powers that be that you guys do not want to be involved any more than just giving me direction in the whole thing. Okay? Okay. All right. Okay, so let me know. You got my cell phone number. Um, call me tomorrow sometime and let me know when I can schedule that, okay? Okay, what's your name again? My name is Investigator Christopher Serino, S-E-R-I-N-O. I've been working for Sanford for less. Yeah, I actually, I think I have your number. I called him up a message on Tuesday or uh, 
Well, the other investigator officer had given me your number and said that you were the, the lead investigator on this. Yes, yeah, so I was out there earlier. I, that's how uh, I believe I gave um, um, or go to my uh, my business card with my name on it because I was out there basically door to door all the way down that row. So, but yeah, um, this weekend, tomorrow, anytime, just let me know. Okay. Okay, okay. Okay, ma'am, what's your name, though? What's the other name? Okay, you live where? Uh, here. Okay, good deal. All right, so thank you, ladies, and you guys have a good night, and if you have any problems at all, call me, and I'll be waiting here for tomorrow, okay? Okay, thank you. Okay, thanks a lot. Good night. Good night. That concludes that telephone interview. It's now 9.44. This investigator is from the Sanford Police Department. Today's date is Friday, March the 2nd, 2012. It's now 6.56 p.m. We're located at the Sanford Police Station, 815 West 13th Street, City of Sanford, Summer County, Florida. Present in the room is Investigator Doris Singleton. And state your name, ma'am. Are you relaxed? You okay? Okay. On um, the 26th of this month, which is last Sunday, something happened behind your residence, correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. In your own words, can you tell us what you know about it, or what you saw? Um, and when you start getting... Yes. Yeah. Um, I was in the kitchen uh, making coffee for me and my friend, okay. and the window I just having it halfway open. Okay. And I was hearing um, somebody running from the side, no, they're running now, crying. Really, I don't know if I'm walking or running. I hear it, it like a kid crying, like, <laughs> like that. And after that, I hear like a shotgun. So, but at that moment, even though my brain knows it was a shotgun, I maybe thought, oh, maybe those are kids, you know, they like to play with, um, Lone's board and scooter and all that stuff, and I think maybe it's that. Maybe it's some of the kids fall down or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I went out and get to my porch, and I saw this. It was a a guy laying on the floor. It was dark, so I see another one on top of him. And can I tell you? Yes, he was. I mean, I just can see this part, because there's my house is in that side, uh, facing to where the um, dogs can is. Okay. So he went like, open his legs on, on the impression, I mean, because you can tell when somebody is just like this, mm -hmm. on the impression, he was, his body, it was on the other person. Was the person on the ground face down or face up? At that moment, I cannot tell. Okay. Okay? At that moment, I can. So, and I saw the person on the ground move the leg. Reaction, moving. That you can see it just the movement because I say, once again, it was dark. So, I went outside and I asked the, whatever was happening, you know. I said, what's going on? Didn't answer. I said again. What's wrong right there? What's going on? So this guy, the one who was on top of it, looked at me and turned again. And went, is something wrong? What happened? And he turned again and he said, just call the police. But this time my friend just coming back, but she already grabbed the phone. So, and at that moment, I was like, the guy walked out from this person. I was continuing seeing it, even though, um, it was a friend of my, my friend, but he was outside, you know? Mm -hmm. And they say, come on, I'm inside. There was a shirt gun. What are you doing right there standing up outside? But I was like, my brain was like, cannot be possible. And I saw this guy walking, and he put his hand like this, walk, and go back next to the body again, and go back again, and they were like doing this. So then I suggest lies and somebody else going that way. At that point, I was like, okay, this is serious. Let's go inside. But apparently that when it was a police officer. So from there on, I just 
saw, because from my kitchen I was like, I mean, the police come, and that's where I realized that the person on the floor, it was facing down. That's everything. So. Did the man who was standing, do you remember what he was wearing? Excuse me? Do you remember anything about what the man standing yes. up was wearing? Okay, L let me see. I mean, once again, it was dark. If you just go that area, the if even if we turn on the lights, but the time it was just one or two on at that moment, mm -hmm. I saw like the guy was like just shaved kind of the one that was uh, um, and on top of this other kid, and he was wearing like 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 a um, oh, sure. okay. a. But I, I cannot remember the colors I have in between, or, or a square or something, in red, dark. That's what I've just seen from this okay. time. Did he say anything to you? At the third time that I asked, what's going on right there? He just say, just call the police. Okay. Did you see any him holding anything? No. I cannot tell for the distance, no. Okay. Was he white or black? Once again, if he's just saying, I mean, the only thing I can see is that here it was like pointing, good kind of cut, short. short, short. Okay. Uh huh. But uh, no, I mean, if you just put that man in front of me, I cannot even recognize him, to be honest. Did, he, did you see any injuries on him? Say what? Did you see him with any injuries? No, at the distance I couldn't see him with injuries, no. Okay, how close were you to him? From what day he was? From where he was standing there with the body. Okay. On the ground. This is this is the street. And where is your? Yeah, this is this would be the this would be the dog path. Okay. Okay. And this is retreat view circle, and these are where the house would sit. Yes. So where's your house? This is one of the house. The second one, mine, if I'm not wrong, is this one. Here is the dog. Um, the dog can. Okay, I know can. where that is. And you know every house having like a little patio. So exactly, I was here, and they both went over here. Okay. So that was my test. So if this were the sidewalk, were they, they weren't on the sidewalk? Or you said they were on the grass, they were on this side of the sidewalk? No. Your house or on this side? I mean, yes, if this side is the, I mean, let me, can I do it myself? Okay. I'm sorry. It's okay. If this is the sidewalk, this is the grass here. Okay. This is the grass here. This is the first and second house. By this porch, in front of the porch, that was the happening. Here is a tree. Okay. And if this is another house, this is mine. So you were looking this direction towards it? Yes. Okay. You were standing outside? That way. Mm -hmm. By my okay. porch. Did you see anybody else coming up? Uh, from this part later, that's what I'm saying, I mean, by the time that I went to the kitchen, walk over here, asked three times, then I saw somebody coming this way. Okay. Did you see anybody with any flashlights or anything? Nope. Okay. No. I mean, maybe the, at that moment, I mean, I can say it was policeman that when I say he was, the gu the the head, it was pointing that way, okay? And he went walk this way, walk back, but that was after I asked him three times what's going on right there. Did you hear anybody yelling for help? Did you hear the screaming for help? No. Okay. Did you, okay, the crying that you heard, mm -hmm. would you say grown man, little boy, little girl? The boys are here? What does it say? The voice, the crying that you heard. Yeah, crying. no, it was like, like, I mean, I was assuming there was a young, young voice, yes. There was a sobbing type cry. Like and what else, it's something else. I never hear two, I just hear one. Two uh, two shots. Okay, just no, one. Okay. Just one. Yeah. Who, who who heard two shots? I don't know. Okay. It's the people who were saying, "Oh, there was two shots. There was two shots." I like. 
I don't know. I just hear one. <coughs> okay. Prior to the crying, did you hear any other arguing? Any, no. any, any words spoken? Nothing? Nothing. Okay. And what I'm saying, I mean, from here, if they was coming, I mean, here, close, and I say, my window, it was this half open, and, but that moment, I never hear TV, actually, the TV wasn't on. I don't like TV. <laughs> so with my friend and I uh, talking, and she was moving some, some stuff from home. And I said, oh, let's make some coffee. And I was making my coffee. That's what I just hear. Somebody crying. And then, bah! And then, I was like, okay. That was a car? There was nothing. But you never heard any yelling for help? None of that? Nothing? No. Okay. When you came out, you said that you were the first one? You didn't see anybody else outside when you first stepped out? No. Then this besides, girl... Besides the two on the, on the ground, you didn't see anybody else? No. The girl from this house, she was trying to go out, and she was open her sliding doors in her porch. Mm -hmm. And and when they called me back, come on, this is shot. What are you doing? It's something right there. So I told her, come on. Okay, so she, she shot him, go back home. And apparently this girl go on the phone, oh, I don't know. Were your kids at home when this happened? Your, ch your children were they no. home? Okay. okay. No, they was, they, actually, they were in a way, because it was uh, having the weekend with the, my husband. Okay. I was trying to call him, told the whole day, but he didn't answer the phone. Okay, and you didn't recognize this guy in the jacket? No. You weren't close enough to see his face? You no. You don't even know if he was wearing it? No. Have you ever, um, did you know there was a neighborhood wash field? That's what I hear that day. But you've never met anybody? No, okay. never. I mean, that's what I'm saying. If you put that guy in front of me today, I don't know who is it. Mm -hmm. I mean, he can see me and say hi, and I'm like, hi. And I don't know who is that guy. Okay. I just saw, once again, it was so dark, and I just see the movement and the actions right there. That's everything I saw. Okay. I'm going to conclude this interview. It's now 7.09. Today's date is March 20th, 2012. The time is 5.53 Nextel time. I'm here with Jim Post of the State Attorney's Office, 18th Judicial Circuit. I'm here with mm -hmm. and myself, John Batchelor, Florida Department of Law Enforcement. The purpose and scope of our inquiry today is to conduct an independent follow-up with regards to the shooting investigation that has been conducted by the Sanford Police Department in your community. The inquiry is being conducted by agents of the Florida Department of Law Enforcement as well as investigators with the Office of the State Attorney. On February 26, an event occurred. Could you, uh, was you here that day? Yes, I was here. Okay. And are you? Yes. Okay. Could you walk us through anything that you might, any information that you may have from that day? Um, yep, sure. Um, at the time, we were watching TV. He, well, he was watching TV. I was sitting on the floor on the phone with IT on my work computer, and I thought I heard something outside. It kind of sounded like screaming. At first, I didn't worry about it because that time of day it's not uncommon to still hear kids screaming and playing outside but then I thought I was hearing what sounded like help but not quite the end of help just the first half of help and so you know I asked him to pause the TV um, and we were listening and it sounded like some male was definitely yelling help and it kind of sounded like they were running towards us but my perception of where I'm hearing something from is awful. Um, so at that point, he got up and he went over by the back patio window, kind of opened the blinds. It was pretty dark outside, so he didn't see a whole bunch, so he opened the window some. I was still sitting right here in front of the TV. So it, yep, right there, and it's on the right-hand side is where it opens from, closest to the TV. 
So we had the back patio light on. He opens it just enough to stick his head outside, and he yelled something along the lines of, hey, stop it. And then he said he was calling 911. I told him to hurry up and get his butt back inside and close the door and lock it and call 911. Um, and at that point, I started, because I wasn't walking yet, so I was crawling, trying to get up the stairs into the stairwell, because I didn't want to mess with crutches at that point. And he got on the phone with 911, and I went up the stairs. And on my way crawling towards the stairs, I heard what I thought was a rock or something being thrown at our window. So I thought they were coming after us. But apparently, that was the gunshot that I heard. I've never heard one before. So that's what I thought it was. So we were hiding up in the stairwell on the stairs where we felt it was safest from whatever was going to happen. And I called the neighbors next door and turned out they were already on the phone with 911 too. And then went all the way into the bedroom upstairs to look out the window. And um, he said, oh my God, someone's laying in the grass. It was something along those lines, and I, but then the next thing I knew, he said that the police were here. And once he said the police were here, I felt it was safe to come back down. But, I mean, that was all I heard. I heard some sc screams for help, help. It was clearly male. I have no idea how old that person was. I couldn't, I couldn't tell. I didn't hear any other words besides help. I didn't actually look outside until afterwards when they were doing CPR. So that was the first time I looked out the window. <coughs> and that was, that was it. After that, the police were here and we just, you know, sat around, closed our blinds so that we didn't have to see what was going on and talk to the police every time they came to the door, and that was it. Okay. In your statement that you just provided, you indicated kind of sounded like screaming. Mm-hmm. Yeah, at first I couldn't tell if it was just kids horsing around outside or not, so, but then it sounded like the words were forming help. So that's when I told to pause the TV and listen. Could you hear any other words? No. In your statement just now, you indicated you thought they were running towards you. Why did you think that? It sounded like it was getting louder. What was getting louder? The screams for help. So you felt that they were coming towards you because the sound was getting louder? Yeah. Did you hear any other sounds? No. Unfortunately, I couldn't hear too much. Once I realized it was actually someone, you know, saying <coughs> help and just getting up to go look outside, I still had the IT guy on the phone, so I wasn't hearing a lot besides that. You indicated that you called the neighbors next door? Yeah. Did you speak to them? Yeah, the next door. Did you personally speak to, to them? Yes, I was speaking with was the one that was on the phone, 911. Okay. And then and, and what was said? Oh, gosh. Um, let's see. I asked if, if they knew, you know, what was going on, if they were home. Um, and he said that I was on the phone with 911. And that they think someone had been shot. By then, I had already been upstairs in the hallway and I'd already heard what, at the time, I thought was a rock hit the window. Okay, so your conversation, as you indicated in your statement with the next door neighbors, mm -hmm. was subsequent to what you heard, the rock sound? Or yes, that. yes, it was after that. You indicated it was clearly a male? Yes. What makes you think that it was clearly a male? If it was a girl, she would have been awfully manly. <laughs> so a deeper voice or just a, a lower tone? 
Just just a lower toned voice. I couldn't I couldn't really tell age or anything, but it definitely sounded male. A girl is usually more of a high pitched shrieking. From the time that you initially heard, as you described, the sound like screaming mm -hmm. to the time that you heard the rock, as you indicated on the door sound, mm -hmm. do you know about how long that would have been? I would say maybe a minute. It was not long. It was maybe 30 seconds before we were pausing the TV and he was looking outside and then he closed the door and maybe 30 seconds after that I hadn't even crawled all the way to the stairs and I I heard what sounded like something hit the window so I would I would imagine a minute okay you indicated at the end uh, when you felt it was safe you looked out once I knew that cops were everywhere yes how did you know the cops were everywhere because he was upstairs looking outside the window. Okay. And he told you? Yeah, and he told me that. He said the cops are here. You indicated someone was doing CPR? It definitely looked like CPR. That looked like there were four or five people kneeling around the body. They looked like they were either cops or whatever they're called that drive the ambulances or maybe a mix. But they definitely looked like they were professionals and they were in uniform. Okay. You referring to as the body, was that the first time you saw this person or the body? Mm hmm Can you yeah. describe what you saw? How the person was laying or what the person was wearing? Uh, <clears throat> as far as what they were wearing, I don't remember at all. I remember he was laying kind of at an angle like this with his feet closer to the window and his head closer to the sidewalk, kind of at a diagonal. And he was like right on the corner. It was almost like right past the grill that we have on our back patio. Was his, was he, what position was he in? He was lying flat on his back. And just so I'm clear, you said head and feet. Can you describe what direction? Yeah, the. Him? The head was at a diagonal towards a combination of the sidewalk and the neighbor's house to the left, okay. with the feet being closer to our TV-ish area. Okay. At any time did you look out during the noise? No. And at no time could you hear any words? being said other than other than what sounded like help now as you indicated help <clears throat> do you know either um, either person that was involved no, in this I don't know either person I understand that George Zimmerman is head of neighborhood watch and everything but we've never been to an HOA meeting uh, we just got the people installed so I have a strict I don't answer the door policy, <laughs> and so, yeah, I just kind of stay inside, keep to myself, so even if one of them had knocked on the front door, I'd have never answered. Okay. How long have you lived here? Uh, three years in May. I think that was all. Okay. This is going to conclude the interview at 6.04 p.m. next all time. Uh, good morning, police, fire, medical. Yes, um, I live at 32 and 21 receipt view circle, and I'm looking out my back town home and someone's screaming help, and I, I don't know, I heard like a bang. Now, you said you live at 32-31 retreat view? Uh, 3031 retreat view circle, just uh, 30, the town home. Just for 31 retreat view? Uh, yes, and I'm looking out my window like my backyard, and someone's yelling and screaming, help. And I heard, I don't, like a pop noise, okay. and they're both still out there right now. I don't know what's going on. Well, I can tell you right now, you're not the only person that's calling. We already have one officer on scene, another on the way. Oh, good. However, oh, my God, I see the person right now. I, I see him, I like, walk, walking. 
Uh, there's a man coming out. There's people coming out with flashlights. Oh, my God. I don't know what he did to this person. Was it a male? I can't see. There's a man was walking a out with a flashlight right now. That was uh, making the noise. Pardon? Was it a male or a, free, or a female voice that was screaming? I, I guess a man. I don't know. I, the man is up right now. Someone's coming over. I'm glad other people called. All right, we're, we should be out there right I, now I can, around... I, I can open my window and hear it if you want me to. You can still hear it? You can still hear it? I'm looking out my window. Somebody's over there taking a flashlight. I don't know what's happening. Someone's on the ground. You see someone laying on the ground? I don't know if someone's been shot. I don't know what's going on. Okay, well, just calm down. Stay on the line with me. Like I said, we have an officer on scene, and we have other officers on the way. Oh, my God, they better hurry up. I don't know if someone's like dead on the ground or something. Oh, my God. Are they laying down someone's on... over here with are they, someone. Are they laying down on retreat view? Um, well, I see. I look out my back window, and that's like um, a sidewalk and grass and stuff. Some, something's really bad, I guess. But there's a man who out here with a flashlight with a man is who's person, a person wrestling. Is this person laying down in the street? Um, no, see, it's the back of, you can see from my back window, it's only like a sidewalk in a back area. Okay. There's people coming over. So is the person that you see laying down, laying down on the street or in the grass? No, on the grass. Oh, my God. People are coming. I think there's another gentleman with a flashlight. I don't know. It's the police or not. Oh my God! He shot. He shot the person. He just said he shot the person. Who's saying they shot who? Uh, there's people out there. Um, a guy is raising his hands up. He's saying he shot a person. I think it's a police officer. Let's take him right now. Arrest. Up. Oh my God! Why? Why are we going to be killed? It looks like our officer is there. He has somebody at gunpoint. Yes. They're gonna. They're gonna handle the situation from here. Oh, oh my God! It's going to be shot. <laughs> it's probably going to be best if you stay inside your home for the time being, okay? I know, but I, I can't believe someone is killed. He was saying help. Why didn't we, someone come out and help him? Listen, we don't know if they've been killed, okay? We know they've been, probably... He just killed. said he shot him. Yes, the person is dead laying on the grass. Just because he's laying on oh the ground. Oh, my God. Just because he's laying on the ground doesn't mean he's passed. We have an ambulance on the way as well. We're going to probably pick him up and take him to the hospital. Why did this... I didn't see because it was too dark, and I just heard people screaming, help me, help me, and this person shot him. He was like wrestling with him, you know what I mean, on the ground. From what I could see, it was very dark. All right. The police, I think it's a police officer that's there. I mean, the man didn't try to run away or anything. And can I get your name, please? Uh, Jane, sir, Jane, but I don't want to be a witness or anything. That's okay. I'll leave you as anonymous. I'm just scared. I mean, no, I can't. I can't even believe that I. It, this is on. This is of a person. Oh my God! I hope it's a young boy or something. I, I can't imagine. I've never seen anyone kill. Oh. Right. This is like a nice neighborhood. This isn't like you know. Oh my God! I don't want. I'm too scared to live here. Okay, Jane. Well, you don't have to worry right now. We have many officers on the way, and I think about two officers on scene at least right now. So we are on scene, okay? Oh, my God. To see someone killed laying in the grass. Oh, my God. I want to know what happened. Why would, a per why would this man just shoot him? Once the incident calms down a little bit, you can probably try to ask one of the officers what's going on. But in the meantime, it's probably... Oh, my God. There comes there. another, I think, another police officer. It's right outside my window. I mean, it's like two feet away. I mean, five, ten feet out my window. Oh, my God. Why would somebody kill someone like that? Now, of course, we're not going to know the details. Oh, I can't look. I mean, the officer is shining the light on the person. He killed someone. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Did you hear or see anything else suspicious before you heard? heard no, I, I was just watching. I was watching my TV, and this is my back window, and then I, you know, I heard people talking out there, and I was kind of like, oh, gosh, where are they, you know, pouring rain? Why would they be outside? I figure walking their dog or something. And then I, and then I heard more talking voices, and I, I didn't open my window. 
and then I just I looked like I thought, oh, are those two men talking to each other, or they looked like they were wrestling each other, and then I then I heard the man saying, help, help. I mean, I would have I would have helped if I could have. <laughs> He's walking, the police officer is bringing the person away that shot him. Alright, Jane, we'll stay inside your house for the time being. Once the scene calms down a little bit, you may... Oh, God. I mean, they're looking at the person that's dead. I just can't Oh, God. Jane, if Sorry. It's, Jane, if it's going to make you, if it's gonna make you emotional, you may want to just step away from the window for the time being. Okay. Alright. Okay. Oh my god, I don't know who to tell. I'm so Do you have any... Oh if you don't feel like staying alone there, do you have any relatives that you can call that can come over? No, I don't have any family. No friends? Nothing like that that you can go to? No, not, not really, no. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I'm a normal adult person. I used to be a teacher and stuff. Oh, oh god. I'm sorry, I don't... I'm not going to think of someone in the car. I'm sorry. I don't know what to do. That's okay. Well, <sighs> like I said, right now, the best thing to do is to probably just stay inside. And okay. If it's going to make you emotional, look out the window, then you should probably just yeah, no, I'm not walk, gonna... walk away for now. I just can't believe it. I mean, I feel like, you know, I... From what I can see... I wish I could have done something for the person. From, but, what I, you know. from what I can see, we possibly have the person that's responsible, so you don't have to worry about that for now. Yes, I know, but I... When someone yells for help, don't you feel like you, you wish you could help them, you know? I mean, I don't have a gun or anything, but, you know. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. It's, I, it's okay. I mean, just remember. I'm never, I'm, I can't believe I even, would even imagine anything like this. Where I live, you know. Remember, oh, hindsight's um, twenty twenty. The whole thing happened too quickly. I mean, you weren't the yeah. only one that heard. Like I said earlier, I remember a lot of other people called about it in your neighborhood. So really, I, get, I mean, the people, the people that like are back there. I mean, their their porches are right there. You, you did. So, I mean, they probably they were probably like three feet. They could have ran out and helped the person. You know. Well, he, honestly, calling 911 was the best way to help this man, especially to get the ambulance rolling out there as fast as we could. Okay, so people called even before I did? Yeah, we got a bunch of calls all at once. So trust me, a oh. lot of people in your area called. We had an ambulance rolling almost right away, along with uh, police okay. on the way as well. And right now, I can tell you, the officers might be out there for a while since they're investigating a serious crime. Should I see? And I mean, I shouldn't go down there and, and, and say anything. Well, <laughs> for now, you might want to just stay in your house, wait for things to calm down a little bit. It's possible okay. they might have an investigator go door to door to see if um, anyone else might have heard or seen anything else out of the ordinary. Um, okay. So, of course, if you hear a knock at your door and it's an officer, you probably should answer and talk to them. It might make you feel a little better as well because they can tell you exactly what's going on in the details and whether or not you should be working. Okay, I guess about there's a lot of, um, I hear a lot of cars. <laughs> yeah, there's probably going to be, right now. It's probably going to be a lot of sirens, but trust me, the sirens, oh. the sirens will be over soon, and they're probably going to take this guy to the hospital if, if they oh, feel... Oh, God, I just heard him say something. Oh, all the cars are outside my house right now, in the front. Sorry, I'm just shaking. That's okay. I don't know what, I've never, I guess... Sorry, I just closed my mind. I guess I'm, maybe I could think of someone to call, a friend or something, in their home. Yeah, if you, if you have a friend or someone you can call and talk to and that can, you know, pass the time okay. with, I think that would be a really good idea. But of course, right. you know, make sure you listen to your door because if one of those officers comes up, you Sorry, know. I just can't even believe, you know, I just can't believe any, I mean, I was just, sorry, I just, wow. Well, it's okay. This isn't something people are dealing with every day. It's okay to be yeah. this way. Well, maybe somebody, if you don't mind saying, maybe somebody could call me. You know, like someone, somebody, you know, someone that could say hi to me. You know, I've never seen trauma like this. It's almost like a movie. <laughs> No. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just, I don't know why, I'm just, I'm shaking. I can't stop shaking. <laughs> well, it's, 
it's normal after something like this, so don't feel Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, I better hang up. Oh, my God, I can't, I'm sorry. I, I can't even hold on to the phone with my one hand. It's shaking. All right, well, <laughs> listen, um, it, I think you have the right idea. Maybe call a friend, you know, talk to them a while, pass the time. How okay. Do you, if, you feel like you, if you feel like anything's wrong, like, uh, if you start feeling a little anxious, or I'm not sure if you have any... Yeah, I feel, I don't know, it's just feel, I feel the Like, I'm not sure if you have any pre-existing medical conditions, but if you're feeling a little off, you know, feel free to call us back. We can always have an ambulance check you out. You know, the EMTs can just come out there and make sure everything's all right. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, you feel like I'm shaking. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay, I'm just shaking. Sorry. Like I said, this is... I mean, if somebody wants to call me... That's okay. I I guess. I mean, I don't know. It's just like something like trauma that I can maybe talk to someone later. Um, we we can probably possibly set that up. Um, and we we do have someone that's called a vic victims advocate that normally responds to people who are involved in these kinds of incidences. But um, okay. Like I can see if we can make someone res uh, get someone to respond out there for you. Um, do you mind holding on for just a second? Okay. Okay. So could you call me back? I, I just, I don't know who I could call. I'm just trying to think of a friend or someone. I'm not going to put it's you, on, a, I'm not going to put you on hold per se, but I'm got to, oh. I got to go away from the phone for just a second, all right? Cause I need to okay. Actually get someone. Sorry, to I'm just very. No, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I think what would be best is if we were to have an officer meet with you, and then you can speak with the officer about the incident, and then um, okay. you know, if it's necessary, we could also get the victim's advocate to speak to you as well if we if we page him out there. So um, I I know you live on um, on uh, Retreat View Circle, but what's your house number? Um, thirty twenty one. Three zero two one. Oh, God. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know any of the circumstance. I'm just like, it just, you know, I, if someone was getting hurt, I just can't believe somebody would shoot someone. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> do you want my phone number? Or do you have it? Oh, um, yeah, go ahead and confirm your phone number. Oh, okay. Four seven. Oh, I feel so bad. Seven eight 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 nine three zero. Okay, I caught it. Four zero seven and the eight nine three zero. But what is the the? Four seven seven eight eight. Seven eight eight. Okay, that's what I didn't catch. Eight nine three zero. Okay, I got the rest. Uh, I got your phone oh, number uh, and Jane. Just go ahead. Go ahead and call. You know, a friend. Try to calm down a little bit. But stay by your okay. door because if someone comes up, um, you know, you, you don't answer it, they're probably going to think you're not home. So be okay. sure you're by your door, or you can at least All right. you can hear someone knock or ring the door. Oh my door. God! And they'll okay. They'll announce themselves, so you don't have to worry about that as uh, as well. All right. Now again, if you're okay, I'm going to try to hang up. If you're feeling a little woozy, anything like that, give us a call back. We'll have the EMTs come check you out. But um, okay. in the meantime, we'll have an officer come out there and meet with you. Uh, all right. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. This is Best Again, Center of the Sanford Police Department. Today's date is Sunday, February 26, 2012. It is now 8.55 p.m. I'm located at Sanford, Summer County, Florida. Present is Stitch Name. Also present through his officer, Michael Wagner, Sanford Police Department. This evening, you saw something that happened out here where you heard something. Can you tell me what you saw exactly what you heard exactly? Yes, sir. Um, I thought I heard, like, uh, loud voices outside, but okay. a lot of people walk their dogs back there, okay. which is the back of my house. I was upstairs uh, in my bedroom reading and watching television. Okay. And um, I just thought, oh, gosh, what are people doing out there in the pouring rain, you know? yelling I'm in my 90 already <laughs> um, and then I think I didn't hear noise for or any voices for a while maybe 10 minutes or so and then I heard the loud voices again and then I just kind of thought oh brother who's out there talking that loud and then I I looked out my window but I couldn't see anything because I had my bedroom light on and you can't see anything when the lights on <laughs> so I shut my light off I think I opened the window and I th 
Okay, that I heard the loud voices, but when I looked, it looked like there was two men on the ground. Okay. Um, you know, I don't know who two men were, so I, for some reason in my head, all I could think is like a, a heavier man um, on top, on top, but I don't can't say for can't sure. Say for sure. Um, and then, uh, as I heard that, I thought, oh my God, so there were two men on the ground, and then I heard someone desperately saying, help, help, and I just said, oh my God, this is, this is real, this is something bad happening. Uh, sorry, I'll, I don't think I'll ever forget those yes. Um, then I think I grabbed my phone at, at that point. I thought, okay, this is serious, you know, I called 911. And um, I do, I remember hearing a pop noise, you know, that's the only way I could describe it because I don't know what a gun sounds like. And I thought to myself, I think I heard it more than once though, the pop noise, because I just said, is it like like a gun? Because I thought guns are real loud or something and powerful. It just sounded like a pop. Then I thought to myself, oh my God, this is really happening. And I know I was calling 911 uh, at that point. And I don't know whether I stepped away from the window calling 911 mm -hmm. or still was at the window. I think I might have been still at the window, you know, calling 911 and panicking. And that's when I, all I remember seeing is uh, a man, like a larger man, okay. up, uh, up, like standing maybe like a couple feet from where I saw just a person's body laying on the ground. Mm -hmm. Which doesn't look from where I was. Did you, did you see any faces of anybody? Faces, no, not at all the person that was on that ground. They were ground. white or black or, well, you know, they're two males, right, essentially? I'm thinking, yes. Okay. Um, I would, you, when they were arguing, did you hear the context, what they were arguing about, what they might have been saying to each other, or was it just kind of no, crazy yelling I think back and it, forth? Um, I think at that point, I, it, was, it, was, it was yelling, uh -huh. and then it seemed like, um, you know, like, like, not like having a friendly conversation, louder voices. Okay. Um, and the only thing I could say is it, it, I did see that man that walked, I guess, away. Would you recognize him by any chance? No, he was. No, who he is? No. To me, only I could see from the window, it looked like a, like a larger Hispanic man. Okay, so a silhouette. Okay. Thank you so much for your time. I'm going to conclude this interview. It's now 9 p.m. And do you need police fire medical? Um, this is 911, correct? Correct. Do you need police, fire, or medical? Oh, I'm sorry, police or medical. I don't know, ma'am. Um, I'm at, and someone's yelling two doors down from me, screaming, hollering, help, help, help. And there's an elderly man that lives down there. I don't know what happened. And then I, I thought I heard like a gunshot. I'm inside, so I don't know. It would be so probably emergency. I mean, um, okay. How many shots did you hear? One. How long ago was this shot? Just like. I, I just, when I heard that, I picked up the phone right now and called you. So before calling 911? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you said, is it coming from No, you? I live, I live, in, okay, and I met my back, uh, inside, by my back, sliding back door, and there's somebody out in the back porch, I mean, two doors down, there's an elderly man that lives here. Somebody's walking around with a flashlight, I don't know who it is, maybe the police are already here, I don't know, because... Someone's out there with a flashlight, but I did hear something. Uh, yes, they actually should have units that are there. Hold on one second. Oh, my God. Are you near Twin Tree? Excuse me? Are you near Twin Tree? Oh, uh, that's the other street over. I'm and on that's Retreat in that same area, correct? Yeah, it's Retreat to Twin Lakes, right? It's okay. across from Bentley Elementary School. And the screaming, was it a male or a female that you heard? I, it sounded to me like a male, okay, and what I know of this neighborhood, because I've been here four years, there, there's an elderly man that lives like one, two, three, four, da four doors down um, north of me, so and I'm inside. Like coming a, from Twin Trees, not, or, or you think it's coming from your area, not Twin Trees? I, I really don't know, because I'm not outside, man, but I know I'm standing at my back, sliding by store. There's someone out there right now. I don't see anything but like a flashlight shining around. But I did hear someone yelling, help, 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 and something like that, or, oh, my gosh, or something, and, you know, like moaning and moaning, and then I heard a boom, and I picked up the phone and I called. Okay. So did you see or hear anything else, like a vehicle pulling away or anything? No, ma'am, because I'm in the back. In the back, it's like there's just a walkway. There's no, I mean, it, it, there could have been somebody in the front in a car. I don't know, because I was in the back here. I did not hear any kind of vehicle, okay. no. And what was your name? My name. 
Boy, that was scary. But your the, and your phone number? Yes, ma'am. There's still somebody back there with flashlights walking around. I can't see it who it is. It is. Officers, I'm showing there should be one on scene. Okay, yeah. Okay, that's because I, all I can see is like light, you know, shining back and forth and back and forth. But I don't see a person, you know, walking or anything. I just see a light. So. Yeah, I oh have several officers that are showing that they're there. So it should be the officers. Uh, Okay. All right. Um, all right. Thank you. No problem, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Alrighty. Bye. Bye. This investigator is with the Sanford Police Department. Today's date is Saturday, March the t um yeah March the tenth, two thousand and twelve. The time is now one thirty in the afternoon. I'm located at. I'm interviewing. Um, Okay, I'm much date of birth. Okay, were you home on the evening of February 26th? Not the whole time. I had just come in. I came in about 7 o'clock or so, and I was unloading my car, and that's why I was getting ready to take my dog out the back because it was sprinkling, and I just had not taken out my neighbor's hat, and that's how I was going to the door. That's you No, know, I was not home, apparently, when it happened. Okay. So what exactly did you see exactly what happened that evening? Okay, when I came in, like I said, my dog had to go out. I came over here to the door. I was going to take her right out the door, it's like west door here, mm -hmm. and just let her do a potty. Okay. And when I opened it all up, I mean, you know, it's like it happened right there. And the gentleman that was over there with that black um, the gorillas. gorillas. Okay. Okay. As far as I can remember, I think that was his place. Yeah, it wasn't that one, it was that one. And um, then I. I was like, and he's talking to somebody, and I went back further this way to see, because I'm like, whoa, and my dog, of course, is barking, and then I see, apparently, the guy, the gentleman, the young boy, laying on the ground there. And okay, so this is after um, everything had occurred, correct? Yeah, apparently, because he was laying on the ground, and he was like, um, 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 and then the gentleman over there, I don't know his name, whatever, I mean, I've seen him, I've talked to him, you know, to say hi, but... You know, I don't know his name. I don't know if I... I believe his name is... Okay. He by himself there. I don't... I truthfully don't know that part. Okay. Like I said, you know, they... But anyway, and then, um... The kid was laying in the ground. I thought at first, truthfully, there's a gentleman that lives... One, two, three... The second one is just like from my house, like this townhouse unit, and he's an elderly gentleman, okay? okay. And it's like right, basically behind that, okay? And I thought it was him, and he was like, was having a heart attack or something, okay? Because okay. I could, you know, it was like, going, oh, you know, help me, help me, or something like that. So that's why I was like, oh my gosh, is that him? And I can't think of his name right now, but anyway, so, but then when the guy over there, who lives there, I guess his name is, he said, okay, um, because he could hear him more, because he was in his backyard, apparently. And he goes, okay, I'm going to call 911. And then when he said 911, I pulled her, she was like right there at the outside, you know, because she had to go to the bathroom, whatever. But I pulled her back in. When I heard 911, I pulled her back in and shut the door, put the alarm on, and I have a little alarm thing on that thing. And um, I'm like, oh, you're going to wait, <laughs> like that. So, and then I'm thinking, oh my gosh, what's going on? And so I went upstairs and up there in my back um, bedroom, bathroom, there's a window. And I pulled it up, okay? Because I thought, I wonder what's going on. And so when I pulled it up, the window, now, in this part, I truthfully do not remember because it happened so boom fast. If it was when I pulled it up or when I was, it, it was right about the same time because I don't think it was when he said 911. But then I did hear a gunshot. What well, sounded like a pop gun to me more so because when I hear, when I think of a gunshot, like you see on TV, you think, you know, boom. It was more like a, like you have like a cork like in, I don't know. I don't know about guns. It was like a pop sound. Yeah, it was more like a, a pop sound. Say, yeah. right. And so I was like, oh my gosh. And that's when I, well, I must have had the phone, my cell phone on me, because I always take my cell phone when I go out. And I had it on me when I was going upstairs anyway. And because, you know, when I was going to take her out, I had it in my pocket, because I take it with me all the time. So I don't, like I said, I don't remember if it was, I had opened the door, the window up there, and I heard it then, for, or right when I opened it, or when I was standing there and I heard the kid moaning and going, but I didn't see anybody but that gentleman over the door and 
the kid laying on the ground. You didn't see any kind of fighting. You didn't see. I did not. I did not. I did not. I must have come in after the fact because, I mean, I've been thinking about this because it's been a mess around here. You know, everybody's been talking about this and this and this. The only thing I can, in my mind, think that he was probably telling him, you know, that he was he was hurt because he was moaning. The kid was moaning and groaning and whatever. Well, on the ground, know. correct? Right. right. Yeah. When he was laying on the ground. This would have been, is it could have was black, white, or Hispanic? I couldn't tell anything. It was rain. It was like sprinkling a little bit. It was like about 7, 10, 7, 15, something like that. Mm -hmm. It was dark. And like I said, it's not right here. It was yeah, about, right yeah, about, there. Say about 70, 80 feet from Yeah, more or less. It's yeah, it's, it was behind my other neighbor's um, house, right behind her house. But... So I did not know, like I said, I thought at first it was the, the guy that lived over, who is an elderly gentleman, and I thought, oh my God, he's having a heart attack or something, and he's going out the back, his back door, trying to get somebody to help him or call somebody or something like that. That's my first thing was. And then when I heard the pop, like, that's when I called 911. Okay. And then I, the lady, the lady on the dispatch, whatever, she was like, well, do you need police, fire, rescue, or whatever? And I'm like, I don't know what I need. I just said, I heard a gunshot. Yeah, yeah I, heard, I heard that recording. Right. It was, it was and a little bit aggravating. I, uh, yeah, and I, I'm like, what did you say? I said, I don't know what you, I just, I just said, I, I heard a gunshot. I said, somebody's here, somebody's hurt, something, something's wrong, something's going on. You know, I, and I don't know, I, I may have been, I don't think I was rude to her, but I was like, I don't know. I just I know we need help here. Something's going on. Okay. Yeah, it's not something you do every day. You call and say right. Stuff, I so. mean, and I never heard that like that because, like I said, when you hear it on TV, you know, you hear a kaboom. Well, I, burns, yeah. yeah, you hear. It sounds like a pop. You know, like a somebody had like a cork, but I didn't see it. I did not see it. Okay, and I did not see anybody. But I, like I said, I would assume it was a kid that was laying there. And I saw the guy sticking his head out the sliding glass door. And um, then as I was talking to the lady, I went back to the window. I guess I was walking in my bathroom. I was looking out, whatever. And then you could see the flashlights of the police, you know, like shining all around. And she says, oh, I know. She says, and then she asked for my address and my name and everything. And I told her, I said, I think they're here now. I said, because I see flashlights. And I said, and then you could see the paramedics coming up. And there was a lady paramedic. And she got down on the ground. And I think she was doing CPR on the guy, on the kid, and I think a man was doing, like, mouth to mouth, I don't know, I because you couldn't see it that well, okay, mm -hmm. but there were two, like, working on him, okay, and they were working a long time on him, and then the more people came on, and then you hear the, the sirens, and you hear people, you know, everything coming on, and I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, so somebody, and then I saw the police come, and I saw them put like the crime scene and they marked it around and they wrapped it around the our back pole, not my pole, but the lady next door and around like a, a you know, like a square, I guess, a rectangle, or, you know, that way. And um, from that point, she says, well, I, I guess I'd already hung up with the dispatcher. And she said, because I said, you know, they're already here, and I'm like, oh my God, what's going on? And I didn't go out. I watched. I truthfully did. I watched from upstairs, and I'm thinking, oh my God, you know, I hope he's okay. And then I don't know if I heard somebody say something like, he's gone, or something like that. Or, but one of either the the girl or the guy who was working on him, one of them said, keep going, keep trying, keep trying. That's what I remember that. And I'm thinking, oh my God. And it was, and then after that, it was a while later. I don't know how the time was because I didn't have a you know, clock up there or anything. I wasn't paying attention to the time. And then I guess it was, I don't know who came out and they had, um, I guess they covered him. And then from that point, I waited a little bit longer because, and I shut upstairs and I came downstairs. I thought, oh my dog's got to go out. Everybody was out front. Okay, so I went out front, and uh, we bought, I walked down to my neighbors down there, and um, you know we're all we were all talking and just you know saying what's going on. And then there was a news guy there, and he tried to interview me, and everybody, <laughs> there's my friends around here, they're going they're like this, like you know, <laughs> don't say much because you don't know who this guy is. So I didn't say anything to him because he had, then he asked me, said, would you be interviewed? And I said, and he had like a little um, thing on his pocket thing like you know 
And then I noticed it was like a news thing, and they're not supposed to be in here. Okay. Okay. And I'm like, no, sir, I'm sorry. I'm not. I said, I don't know what happened. I said, I did not see it, what happened. I said, I just heard something. And, and then um, the guy that used to be our HOA president lived, I was right at his driveway. He's like, and I'm like, okay. So I did, because I didn't. I did not see anything happen. I heard it. I heard the guy say 911. I saw, like, it, it was the kid crying out. He's hurt, whatever. I saw that part. I saw it to the point where they basically said, you know, he was gone, or I don't know if they said that, but, you know, they brought the cover to cover him. And that's when I, I came down here and I could, and then I went out the front way. And then, I don't know, I took my dog for a walk and I came inside. So, and they, they were out there a long time and stuff, but I, I couldn't, I kept watching. Oh, you're holding up as far as, I mean, you have anxiety over Oh, yeah, big time. I mean, thank God I got a security system here, and um, it's just me and my puppy dog. And uh, even though she's 14 years old, she can still bark and stuff. And well, she's watching over you. She's, <laughs> she's watching everything I'm doing. That's it. Yeah, and, um, but she's like, um, you know, I, I've been used to be, you know, people before this had said to me, you know, don't go walking out at night. So, I mean, not that I go out late unless she would get sick or something, but, you know, I'd be out there at 10 o'clock or 9 just before I go to bed, you know, take her to go potty or whatever. And now I'm not, unless God forbid she's sick. I go out before it's dark. I am not, I'm, it's, it's real spooky around here right now. And the first couple of days it was really, like, everybody's watching everybody else. And so, yeah. What you can say for certain is that, based on what you've told me here, is that at the time, okay, how long did it take you to get from down here to upstairs when you opened the window and heard the pop? Would you say in seconds or minutes or? Well, I made sure this was shut and locked. Like I said, I have a little little thingy on this window here. And I made sure that was only because, you know, if somebody was back here, it's one of these little, you know, these little is that somebody a, okay. okay. So that, and then I, see, so yeah, you can just beep like that. Okay. okay. But then I did have an alarm system, and I made sure the front door was up, or locked, I'm sure of that. But I did turn on the alarm system on that, because if I had, it would have gone off when I opened the window. Okay. Upstairs. But, you know, probably, I don't know, I just, like that, 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 and then she followed me upstairs, and it's the bedroom right there and you could look out there so maybe a minute or two i mean i went right up there a minute minute and a half perhaps uh, oh. trying to picture it yeah i mean i mean and i didn't sit down here and wait because i was concerned because i was thinking oh my god what's just going on but i didn't want to go out there i really you know i didn't want to be out there and the gentleman had said you know i'm going to call 911 and then by the time i did get upstairs then i saw the lights and, you know like flashlights flashing around and stuff like that and but I did not see anyone. Now, I watched the news today, and I've been watching it when it comes on about all this. Like Could you do something a little bit different? Could I walk you up to point A to point B and time that? The reason being is that... I'm going to go ahead and pause this interview for a second. It's okay. now... It's 40. This is Investigator Serena. We're still on tape with me here. The time is now 1.44 in the afternoon. She's going to reenact the time that she went ahead and secured her back door, went upside to the time she heard the popping noise that you heard. Okay, we're ready. Okay. I was up here, I got here, I listened and I heard what he said when he said 911. It went like that, locked it, went like that, came over here, put this on, it goes deep. The same pace? Okay. Yep. And I went over here and make sure this door was locked. Okay, which is not now, but it's, you just, it was. You just took a visual peek. This. Yeah, I just I just looked at it because I could tell that it's blocked, and I knew that one wasn't on because if that one was on, it would my window when it goes up, it would be okay. So I didn't. And walking up the stairs. Turn up. Second floor. Is he moving kind of fast? Okay. And I'm back to my okay. And I came here, and I got this, and I went here, here. Like that, and I could see out there. And did you, what did you hear the pop? Right before you opened the window? Or? Well, no, but not before I opened it. I opened it like this, and he's still there, and he's laying there. And then I'm, as I'm, I had the phone here, and then was talking on the phone to dispatcher, and that girl was saying, you know, do you want police fire rescue? I'm like, will you just get somebody out here? And then I heard the pop. And then I came back in here because I'm like, 
where did that pop go? I okay. mean, was it him and him in here? And I said, I just heard a shot. What I think is a shot, because I don't know. Okay. And at that point, then she kept on asking me my address and all this other stuff. And then she says, oh, I know. She says, many people have called in. And then I said, okay. But she still asked me a couple questions. And then after I hung up with her, I went back to the window. Okay. And um, <clears throat> basically, I watched. I did. Because I watched the CPR. Um, yeah, the lady. I think it was the lady that was doing the CPR. And I think the guy was doing not some, I don't know. But he was laying back there, and that was it. And then the I saw the lights shining on the back windows back there, or the buildings. And I, I guess that's when she was telling me to, because I had come back in here. I did stand here and say, I hear what I think is a gunshot. Okay. okay. I went in here and said that. Okay. Okay, because I didn't know where it was. I didn't know if it was right here, and they're going to shoot me up this way. So that's why I went back in there. And then she, she got all the information, and I said, oh, I see lights now. I said, the cops are coming up this way now, and all this, and then we hung up. And then I did stand here. I had this light off in here, because mm -hmm. it was dark. And I watched, and I just like, and then I saw the crime, um, I guess the police department do the um, the yellow tape. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my gosh! And then I went, I just said I couldn't see anymore. I mean, and then the people down there, I saw a lot of people looking out there, you know, just like coming, not really coming out, but just looking and lights coming on and. Okay. That's it. Okay, Miss Elman. Do I use I timed about a minute. You're about right, about 60 seconds. Yeah, so. I just wanted to make sure my door down stairs was closed, and the front door was locked, but I knew if I put on the alarm, it wouldn't let me open this window. Okay. So that's why I didn't do that part. Anyway. Okay, well, I appreciate you walking me through that. There's nothing, I mean, like I said, I did not see the shot. I only heard the kid, like I said, I thought it was a man. And I went, you know, and when that guy said, I'm going to call 911, I'm like, whoa. You know, so I'm like, that's when I closed the door. The, 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 the calling out for help, how long do you think that lasted for? A matter of seconds. I mean, I know it's kind of specific, but you know how many times he called for help or with the words help used or it was just the moment? It was very mumbled. It was very mumbled okay. and garbled because I'm sure, I, like I, what I've heard afterwards that, there was, they were fighting from the neighbors. I've heard different stories, I've heard so many different stories. But what I heard afterwards, when I went outside, when I saw my neighbors and friends out there, you know, I went outside, and they said there was an altercation and that somebody, I don't know who was beating up who. I don't know, because I did not see George at all. Like I said, I didn't know him until he came on the TV. I did not, I, he could have walked up to the door and I wouldn't have known him. I, have met, I, I might have, I probably have seen him at the HOA meetings, but I didn't, I couldn't picture George. I couldn't picture him. No. And I did not see anybody on the kid, fight with the kid. All I saw was a body laying on the ground there. And that's when I saw, like I said, I thought it was the elderly gentleman that was down that way. And he wasn't here that night. Because I talked to him the next day and I said, you're okay. And I said, and he goes, what are you talking about? And then I said, and he said, yeah, I just heard about what happened. He said, yeah, he was out of town or something overnight, so. Yeah, I heard you referencing him a lot on your phone call. Yeah. Look, okay, I appreciate your time. Is there anything else you want to add to the whole thing, or is that basically? What? Is there anything else you want to add, or? That's it. I mean, like I said, I did not see it happen. I only heard something. I called. It's been spooky around here. I've been here four years, and you know, a lot of us are saying, you know, when we gotta move now, or what? You know, they need to beef up security, and you know, we've been trying for it. I was one with um, Morgan Stern, Officer Morgan Stern, to get the, um, the speed limit signs put up. <laughs> they don't do any good. I'm not against him. I'm just saying they don't do any good because nobody looks at them. They said, I don't know where they're at. Well, they're kind of small. but And I've been pushing them to get speed bumps. They won't get speed bumps because they say they don't have money and the HOA does whatever. So anyway, so no, there's nothing more. Like I said, I did not see it happen. Okay. Only thing I saw is like what I told you, but I saw the police or the, I guess paramedics when they were trying to revive him. And that's, and then the, the guy wrapping the tape around the pillar things around here. And then I did, I guess I did wait up there, or maybe I had come down, so I really don't remember that part, but I do remember when they said, or, or it was like, you know, he's gone. 
and they, they, they covered them or something like that. So I don't know if I was upstairs. But I think I was down here. But you can't really see that much from down here. But I didn't go out in the back. So. I'm looking through the city. It's now 1.50. This investigator serving the Sanford Police Department today's date is March the 2nd. It's a Friday, 2012. The time is now 11.32 in the morning. We're located at the Sanford Police Station, 815 West 13th Street, City of Sanford, Seminole County, Florida. Present in the room is investigator Doris Singleton and Okay. On the 26th of February, there was an incident behind your house, correct? Yes. At about 7 p.m.? Uh, 7, 7, 10, 7, 15 p.m., yes. Can you tell us your own words what exactly you saw, heard, or any information you can give us? Uh, yeah, me and we were uh, laying on the sofa watching TV about that time. Okay. Um, we had the sliding glass door wide open. We have a back porch that is screened in that is completely locked. We have three locks on the door, so you can't really open the back door too easily. Um, all of a sudden, uh, kind of sounded like to the back left of the unit, uh, and it was raining outside, but we heard kind of a scuffle or kind of just ruffling around in the bushes. Um, at the time, we thought it was just a couple of drunk kids kind of just messing around. Uh, we kind of got up. We were about to just tell them to, you know, hey, shut up. Um, but then from there, we can kind of hear the tone of the voice kind of was a little more serious. Um, probably about 20 seconds later, you started to hear more of a ah, ah, ah kind of tone in the voice, and you can hear how serious the voice was. And at that point, uh, me and I made it to the back of the townhome um, because our sofas are more right to where the, uh, the sliding glass door is. We made it back to the kitchen, um, and at that point, it started turning into more of a help, and you can just hear the distress in the voice. Um, in my mind, I was thinking it was somebody getting roughed up or getting jumped by a bunch of people and somebody was just, you know, one person was yelling help and it sounded to me like it was a couple people roughing up one person. So that's what I was thinking. I was making it to the kitchen trying to grab a weapon or a knife um, and, and contemplating in my head if I was going to run outside or what I was going to do. Um, after about 20 helps, at that point you just heard a pop. And, uh, and then from there, you know, I guess both of us kind of just, you know, our minds kind of just, you know, went a little nuts. And we kind of just took it upstairs, uh, ran upstairs. I was already on the phone with the cops uh, right from the get-go when we kind of started hearing the, before the help, it was kind of with a ha-ha. She was already trying to call the cops. Uh, so we went upstairs uh, until we kind of heard people in the background. At that point, I, I think I heard, you know, somebody saying, oh, I've got a gun, I've got a gun. I, you know, take my gun away from me. I don't know if it was a cop who was confronting him at that point or if it was a neighbor. Um, and then from there, that's, that's pretty much it. And then the cops showed up, and uh, we went outside to you know, see exactly what happened. But we definitely knew it was a gunshot. But I, but I guess I couldn't tell who was saying the helps. Um, you know, it's, it's hard to tell who, which person was, was saying help or where that was coming from. And when you went upstairs, you didn't look out. Uh, didn't look out, no. Um, because what, how, it, how it, uh, in that whole back area, especially in our house, we were kind of the only ones that have the porch light on. Mm -hmm. So on the first floor, you can't even look out. Like we've, you know, we all the time we'll hear people, hear people out there. We'll go out there with a flashlight and kind of look. That's the only way to kind of look out there because of our back porch light. Mm -hmm. And we've got blinds that go over the, the screen. Nice so you can't, you, you got to actually lift open the blinds, those wooden blinds, and kind of take a flashlight. But, you know, when you're hearing help and you're hearing a bunch of people, you know, you don't know what's going on, uh, especially with the, you know, the string of bur burglaries we had in the neighborhood. You know, we didn't want to, you know, open up a, a blind and somebody's out there with a knife or a gun. Um, what bushes are you talking about, the ones that were up? Not the bushes. No, no, our, uh, our, uh, our blinds on no, the back. when you were talking about... You were hearing the stuff when they were in the bushes? Not bushes, but grass. Okay. Yeah, ruffling in the grass. Okay. And so we couldn't tell how far away it started. We were trying to, you know, figure out how it started, but also the rain probably muffled the sound, so we couldn't, you know, it could have been right there. You know, and then we started hearing the ha and the, the help. You know, you can definitely hear that, but we couldn't hear the confrontation or the talk. So when you were downstairs, you never poked your head up to see anything? or? Uh, well, we were about to, and then we can started to hear the distress in the voice. You know, right at the, when we started hearing ruffling around, we just thought it was a bunch of drunk kids. We were about to just go out there and just tell them to shut up. Uh -huh. um, but when you started hearing the distress in the voice, you knew it was a little more serious. Uh, so we didn't go out there and look. Okay. At that point, I'm trying to think, what do I do? Do I go out there and help this person? 
or am I going to get jumped by the people I think that are out there? It sounds like one, two years Right. It sounded, to me, it sounded like more than one person <coughs> at first. And that even after the shooting, it sounded to me that it's one, per, one person got you know, shot and it was a bunch of people. That's, that's what was going on in my mind at the time. Okay. Yeah. Where did the sounds initially come from? If you're looking out your back patio? To me, the sounds initially came from the left hand side. If you're looking out the back patio, it came to the left. So kind of where the, where the sidewalk, where the sidewalk is, is like a T, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's where it sounded like. That's where we both, we, I, thought it, I thought it came from. Okay. All right. Good. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and go to the center. So now 11.38. Today's date is March 19th, 2012. The time is approximately 1.26 p.m. next tell time. I am here with... Jim Post, an investigator with the State Attorney's Office, 18th Judicial Circuit. My name is John Batchelor. I'm a special agent with the Florida Department of Law Enforcement. And I'm here with the purpose and scope of our inquiry today is to co conduct an independent follow-up with regards to the shooting investigation that has been conducted by the Sanford Police Department within your community. This inquiry is being conducted by agents of the Florida Department of Law Enforcement, along with investigators of the Office of State Attorney's Office. Okay. I'm going to hand you a copy titled Narrative Report by the Sanford Police Department. I want you to look at it, okay. indicate if this is yours, and if that is your signature on the bottom. All right. Yes, that is correct. And that is your signature on the bottom? Yes, it is. And it is dated February 26th? Uh, I believe is the date. Oh, yes, it is. Okay. Yep. All right, good. All right, I'm going to leave that right there for you. That is the statement that you provided the Sanford Police Department regarding the events that occurred out in the front of your or behind your apartment. Yes, it is. Is that correct? Yep. Okay. Can you go ahead and explain? Uh, Tell us about those events. Uh, from start to finish? Sure. Um, yeah, about 7 p.m. that evening, um, we were both laying on the sofa just watching TV. It was raining outside. Uh, it just got dark. <clears throat> All of a sudden, we heard kind of in the distance to the left back side of our, our townhome here, uh, we heard kind of a scuffle in the grass. Um, at that point, you hear a, a, a sound kind of a ah, 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 like somebody in distress. And at that point, it, it turned into more helps. Um, at first, you know, in my head, I was thinking it was somebody getting jumped um, in the backyard. But you can hear the distress in the voice, and we knew it was a lot more serious. So I got on the phone with 911 right, off, right, right away. Uh, I went to the kitchen uh, contemplating on what I need to do to get outside, so I went to the knife drawer trying to find a knife or something to use as a weapon to go outside. Um, and then at that point when I was in the kitchen, that's when you heard the pop sound and was on the phone with 911, and then we immediately made it upstairs after that and uh, waited for uh, noises outside till we can hear cops outside the, the home. Um, but uh, yeah, as I was mentioned before, the, we heard helps probably about 20 times. Once we heard the pop, um, we didn't hear any more helps after that. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. We just waited for law enforcement. Once we heard uh, people outside, we then went outside to, to see what was going on. At any time from the time you heard the unknown sound to where it then became help right did you look out the window we could not see out the window we have a back porch light and we also have uh, blinds that go over our screen porch there um, it was also raining outside and when it's dark time it gets dark out there but when it's raining and uh, it, it's completely dark you can't even you have to, even a flashlight looking out that screen is, is hard to see out there 
So you would literally have to walk around the, out the front because our whole back area is locked off. So you would have to walk around the entire front area to uh, get to that back porch. From the time that you heard, as you described, the scuffle uh -huh. to the sound, as you described, of distress and then help help, do you know how long that was before you called 911 or your, or your uh, they called 911? I could not exactly say, but I can, I, I can guess that it was maybe, you know, by the time she called 911 from the scuffle, 15 seconds. Afterwards, when you indicated in your statement, you went outside. Was law enforcement already here? Yeah, law. Yes, law enforcement was here. Um. <clears throat> From the reports that you may have seen, did you know any one of the individuals? From the reports of the other reports? Maybe media or the paper, have you run into any of the two individuals? Uh, have I run into the media? From what you may have seen in the news media of okay. those who were involved, okay. did you know either of the persons involved? The only other person I knew was my next door neighbor. Um, but the other ones, I'm still not sure which, who's who. But yeah, the only one I really know is my next door neighbor. Okay, so your accounts as to the media and the things that you've been seeing, you don't recognize? I them don't, right? Yeah, the women who are on TV, I don't know them at all. Um, the only one I know is next door. Would you raise your right hand, please? Do you swear that the testimony that you just provided is the truth? Yes, I do. This concludes the interview at 1. 32 p.m. Today's date is March 19th, 2012. The time is approximately 2.02 p.m. next tell time. Present is Investigator Jim Post with the State Attorney's Office, 18th Judicial Circuit. Myself, John Batchelor, an agent with the Florida Department of Law Enforcement. The purpose and scope of our inquiry today is to conduct an independent follow-up with regards to the shooting investigation that's been conducted by the Sanford Police Department within your community. Mm -hmm. This inquiry is being conducted by agents of the Florida Department of Law Enforcement as well as investigators with the Office of the State Attorney. Okay. Are you aware of a homeowners meeting on September 22nd, 2011, uh, 2011 specific yes. to a crime watch? Uh, neighborhood Crime Watch program? Correct. That was my first act as president. We started that. Okay. Could you uh, tell us a little bit about that and beyond? Okay. Well, the first I even knew about it was I was getting calls. I, like I said, I just became president. They said, this guy's walking around trying to get signatures. I go, what guy and what kind of signatures are you trying to get? That's when I met George Zimmerman. That's who it was. He was going around trying to get people interested in joining the neighborhood watch. So then I met him, and we, uh, he told me that it was coming through the Sanford police. They were, you know, they, anybody could go there and start a, a neighborhood watch. So that's how this all started. So then we had him down there. I can't remember her last name, but she's in charge of neighborhood watch. She came up to the meeting. George was there. We were, I was there. And we had the neighbors there, and that's how it pretty much started. How long have you been there? Since September. You indicated uh, residents came to you regarding someone walking around? Yeah. They like call, I started getting calls about this guy walking around trying to get people's uh, names and, you know, find if they're interested. I had no idea who he was at that time. About when was that? Right before that meeting. Maybe a week before that, week and a half before that. At the meeting, who invited Sanford Police Department to the meeting to go over the Crime Watch program? 
Uh, I think I did. And George. It was both of us. And how many people do you think were in attendance at the meeting? I would say close to 50. Do you have a list? No, I don't. How many board members? I'm thinking I was the only board member there. I'm pretty sure I was the only one there. I don't recall seeing the other two ladies there. As a result of the meeting, what if any responsibilities was given to George Zimmerman? George was supposed to be the committee chairman. We have like committees. Mm -hmm. We put him in uh, put him in charge. We put him in charge of the committee, so he was going to run it in conjunction with who's with the Sanford Police, because that's what she does. So this whole time, I'm thinking they're in contact with each other, and they were sending me emails and other people. We had a whole list. They sent the emails out if they, anything suspicious was getting reported or any burglaries or anything. We try to keep an open communication with that. You say we formed a committee. Are you referring to the, the members? The board. The, the board? board formed a committee, and we put George Zimmerman in charge of that committee. Who was the board comprised of? Uh, myself. Uh, what the heck's the last name? I'll tell you in a second. What the I can't think of his last name. Oh, God. And the third one. name will come to me eventually. I That's okay. We can okay. go back. We can go back. Okay. <clears throat> Do you have anything? When you, when you were notified about George going around attempting to get signatures, mm -hmm. did you have contact with George about that prior to setting up the, the meeting? No. No? No. He was doing that on his own before. I, I, I didn't know anything about it, and I started getting phone calls about this guy walking around. I checked in, and I said, well, this is a guy who wants to start the neighborhood watch. Okay. Right. Did he provide you with any background as to him and, and his reason for being or wanting to be? No. Did you know anything? No, sir. I thought this is how we preached at every meeting. How it was set up, it's probably in the minute has that you know, you watch, you don't do any actions on your own, you go, you get away from the situation, you call the police, that's it. There was never anything, we never said anything else other than that. That was it. Has there been any, uh, have you received as the homeowner president any uh, complaints regarding Mr. Zimmerman's actions as the committee chairman no. or crime watch? No. Has there been any complaints at any of the meetings? No. Everyone seemed to come and think he was doing a good job. This concludes the interview. Would you would raise your right hand? Mm -hmm. Do you swear the testimony you provided is the truth? Yes. This concludes the interview at 2.08 p.m. Today's date is March 22nd. The time is approximately 9.20 a.m. Um, the person being interviewed is, is that correct? Correct. And the person conducting the interview is Investigator Vaudry of the uh, State Attorney's Office. The interview is taking place at the uh, State Attorney's Office. Would you just state your full name for the record, please? Okay. Would you raise your right hand for me, please? You solemnly swear or affirm that the statement you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay, let me first uh, start by asking you, do you know a gentleman by the name of George Zimmerman? Yes. And how do you know George Zimmerman? We used to work together. Correct. And at what time period did, were you employed by? Approximately 2008 for about a year, year and a half maximum, probably mid-2009, uh, mid I would say. Okay, so do you, do you remember your employment dates that you were there? No, but I can look it up. Better. Okay, that's okay. So you say from maybe the beginning of 2008 until mid 
2009? March or April of 2009. I was there for like a year and a few months. Okay. And at that time, was George Zimmerman employed there? No, he was employed the first few months. Okay, uh, the first uh, few When months. I started there, he was already an employee there. Okay. And you had uh, some issues with him while you were employed there? Yes. yes okay. I did. Can you describe those issues for me? Um, there was multiple occasions. Uh, I was new to that environment, and a lot of people did not really uh, like me when I first got in for many reasons. Um, so the floor was very slow, and uh, I got in with some experience, so I did well right away. Um, of course, the fact that I'm Middle Eastern, that's, that's normal. I'm used to that. So a lot of uh, that, that environment in there was very close. They were, you know, friends together. Um, didn't welcome me uh, very well. All the employees over there um, had their own little groups. All right. And uh, he wasn't in. He was probably there like a few months before I was. But he managed to be to get in that group. And um, when he noticed that other employees didn't like me when I was uh, doing, you know, when I started there, he chose me as that target to start okay. to and gain their trust, that they gain to be in their group and to be. You know, cool within within the guys. He chose me because I was the new guy, and didn't really like me. So he chose me to be to, be, to bully me, and he he started out with a stupid incident. Okay. So you described just described him as a bully. It, yes. Okay. Can again, again, can you describe some of those instances where you felt like he was bullying you? May, there, there was a lot of incidents, but the major incident that he just didn't stop and he kept going and going and going at it. Uh, one day I was leaving and again being a yellow tag, um, they have a mentor program where somebody else would teach you how to do your job pretty much because that's how they do their training. Okay, you mentioned a yellow tag. A yellow tag is a person who's newly employed. Correct. To Correct. Okay. Yes. So, um, my mentor um, uh, pretty much told me that George has uh, already, you know, he, he was new not too long ago, but now he caught on to it really fast, so if you have any questions, you just ask me or ask George. That's what my mentor told me previously. So I, I trusted this George. He looked like a very nice guy. People liked him a lot over there. He's got great one face that I didn't see the other face till later on. And he gave me directions how to, um, or, or how to, uh, when we lock up, we put two chairs in every office and we turn on, uh, you have uh, this section to turn on all these uh, TV, all the uh, computer screens and all these cubicles. Put the two seats in every office and then, you know, make sure there's no trash. So I went ahead and did that. Being a new guy, I went out and he's like, oh, did you take the trash out in all these six offices? I'm like, no, I didn't. He's like, oh, you're supposed to take the trash out in your offices. I'm like, that doesn't make sense. No, you know what? I'm just not going to do that. Next day, he grabbed every employee in the place, explained to him how a fucking moron I am of listening to him and, and doing exactly what he told me. Oh, I told him to do this, and he went ahead and did it. And I told him to take out the trash, and he took out the trash. So he, he told you to perform a, a, a task or a job assignment that you really weren't supposed to do. Exactly. It and was he like thought a it was practical a, joke. Exactly. It okay. was a joke. But he didn't, he didn't laugh him in my face. He was laughing with, with, with every employee. I mean, he left. He went to the service department, talked to God knows how many people right. about it individually because these people are busy. You know, mm -hmm. every, every manager, every everybody in the store were just laughing at this joke. And then the funniest thing is, or the, to them, it was annoying me. But in these stories, I was portrayed like the, um, I don't know if you ever watched comedy, um, this guy is called Ahmed the Terrorist. No. Okay, so it's this little uh, guy, he's got this weird voice and some, um, that was me in the story. So the story turned my action to, no, I kill you. Okay. And he kept going and going and going at it. I tried to ignore it. It was like middle school, high school humor, but it was going on and on for days and days. You can't walk into the uh, lunchroom without somebody saying uh, something within the that the, these lines of uh, that uh, comedian or that comedy show that okay. I was telling you about. And he, he, again, you, you handed me a, a letter here. I'm going to show it to you. Um, it's a letter dated um, Tuesday, July 8th, 2008. Correct. And it's a letter to... Correct. And with your name printed, it's a typewritten letter. Yes. 
Um, do you recognize this letter? Yes, I typed this letter. You you authored this letter? Yes. Okay. Would you mind just uh, initialing and dating today's date? Sure. Today is. Today is the twenty uh, second. Twenty second, two thousand twelve. Okay. And, and I and handed this to Human Resources. Uh, the person that was responsible Human Resources back then, her name was. Uh, her name. Got on top of my head. That's okay, just, but you 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 submitted this letter to yes. as a complaint against George Zimmerman. Yes, at first what I, before I did this, I went to a manager and I complained to him, and he's like, oh, he's just playing with you. No, he's not playing with me. It's it's been taking me. It's been going on for so many days that I had violent thoughts against him. I don't care at that point if it would cost me my job because I, that was extremely like middle school kind of. Uh, uh, or high school kind of uh, bullying that was just going on and on and on. And it was hard enough for me to fit in in this environment. And this guy's making it harder and harder. Right. I mean, it, it, just so many incidents about, oh, I'll be walking by and he, he'll be with his friends and he'll say in very loud, in very loud noise, saying, oh, loud like voice, he'll say, oh, you know how, you know, yellow tag stupid guys are. They're just stupid. They're just, he said this term so many times. That's why I wrote it down. Oh. Okay, you can read it. Yeah, a fucking moron. Okay, so he would refer to you as a fucking moron yeah. because you were, you, yes. you were the new guy. Yes. Yeah. So he started letting, leading these uh, comedy shows in the lunchroom. And uh, he'll have all the employees in there and he'll start telling the story or anything I did with any customer. You know, if he heard it, he'll, again, my voice in, that, in this story will be like that Ahmad the terrorist. And the terms would be all including bombing, I'll kill you, I'll kill your family, uh, you know, all the jokes about Middle Eastern stuff. And then other guys were approaching me, especially older men in that place. Be like, Omar, you know, don't listen to these guys. They're, they're idiots, they're young, they're stupid, you're such a nice guy, please don't get that to influence you, just let you know that we like you, you're a good guy. And I heard that from a couple uh, of, of employees that approached me and told me that to point them like, what's going on in the lunchroom? Okay, so when he would uh, relate these stories to other employees, would he use that Middle Eastern accent? And yes. Use these terms Terrorists. Of, about terrorists? And did you feel that was uh, some form of racism or uh, not, yeah, some yes, bias yes, towards you? Okay. Yes, yes. I, I, more than that, I think it was more because I was an easy target for him, for him to be, to belong to this group. Okay. That was more important than anything else. I mean, uh, be honest with you. I mean, I, if this was all Middle Eastern environment, he would be with us making fun of the new Asian guy. Okay, so you don't feel like he singled you out. It was more like he was trying to fit in with the clique. Exactly. So you were the new guy. The new guy. Just exactly. The yes. Make himself look good. Yes. Yes. Okay. That's why you know, as you see in my letter, that I pretty much. <laughs> Indicate that this is high school like humor, it, right? You know, it's Just more immature. Exactly, it was immature so immature. Behavior. It was that I, I I had to lay down the 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 all the you know cost benefits of really beating this guy up <laughs> to teach him a lesson, <laughs> and then at the end after this took on good period of time. If I it's been four years, but I'm pretty sure it was longer than two weeks of anger that I you know took in my heart that I had to go home think about it you <laughs> have your bottles of wine to think about what I'm gonna do and then that was the first approach I did and I wasn't very satisfied with the results they sat down with him they had a talk with him um, you say they, is this, uh, yes a, man, a couple of managers sat down with him. they sat down with me first asked me to bring this letter the same letter you have in front of me and I hand him this letter and then they asked me the story again. I told them the story and all the incidents. And they were asking me, oh, don't you think he was just playing with you? And I'm like, no, I know if somebody's playing with me. You know, if somebody's playing with me, when we walk back, let's say, in the hallway, he won't give you that dirty look like, I hate you. You know, if you're joking with me, you go by me and say, hi, man, what's going on? Hey. Right. I, when 9-11 happened, I was in Evansville, Indiana. So I, I and my tolerance as far as jokes or, or big humor, mm -hmm. as far as that, it's very high. Trust me. Um... But that's it. In the, in the, in the, in the, okay. In the Did uh, at any point during your uh, interactions with George, did he ever um, threaten you? No. With any violence? Did he ever um, put his hands on you in any violent manner? Um, no. He, 
No, he did not. No, he's, it was, it was more, what you what you described and what you've written is, but is more like even what how you described just this immature, you know, yes, behavior, yes, but it had some racial overtone yes. to it because yes. of your heritage. Yes, it would have again. It would have been anything that these other employees didn't like or if it didn't fit in, in like my friends were asking me what do you think about this case i don't know if i'm supposed to even say this or not but my input on it if this if the victim was say 30 years old and he was 250 pounds he wouldn't approach them that's the kind of guy he is he approached me he picked on me a few months after a few months after i got hired there was a guy who just came back from the military and they hired him he, he never messed with him he was because the guys liked him he was the coolest guy in the, in, the, in the clique. But no, this new Middle Eastern got no blacks. I outsold most of the floor within a very short period of time. And that was a reason or part of why you know, I wasn't very welcome in, in, that, in that area. A year later, till I made, you know, I was friends with everybody in there. And he Once was he had left. Yeah, he was fine. I was so happy. I threw a party in my house. Did you really? Yeah, it was very uncomfortable to work around. It was just un very uncomfortable. I can't say a word in a meeting without him uh, throwing a word um, in, that, in the same accent of that uh, Ahmed the terrorist. Say, okay. um, you know, I'll say an opinion or something and he'll say, oh no! And that's the same accent and the guys will laugh because this is such an insider joke. I don't even, I can't say anything anymore. I'll be just sitting in any meeting. I don't want to say nothing. I don't want anybody to comment on me because I'm this close to snap. Okay. Um, and you said you, you did, in fact, submit this? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, is there anything else you could think of that you that might be important that we would want to know? No, if you have any questions for me. I, don't um, I can't think good many right now and I do have your your phone number correct okay oh the um, in, I don't know if he ever looked in his file or what I mean he was fired for calling the hotline so many times what hotline the uh, headquarter the H HR that's why they got rid of him and he complained about the H and every manager and every employee in the store okay so many times they went back and uh, Complain, complain to the point the HR said we haven't had so many calls from from a whole you know, so he had store. A, he had a history of Complaining? Absolutely. That's why filing I let him complaints. Go. Yeah, please look into this. Do you remember what type of com what was he complaining about? A lot of things about management and how things are run in the store, and he's explaining to HR how things should be run differently. And they're asking him from what experience. He says that I have a lot of experience in insurance. I have my own company, and I was a uh, agent for uh, I forgot the name of the company. He, he had his own company, whatever. But he was keep telling HR that things can be run better if this goes this way, or if this manager switches his department. Did you get the impression that he was the kind of person who liked to be in control, like to run things, run things his way? That's what managers talked about him after they fired him. They said, you know, he complained about everybody. You know, he didn't. He called about the GM, God knows how many times to HR. He was just on it and on it and on it to the end. HR, I think, had to do something with it, calling the store and telling them to go because this guy is nothing but trouble. Okay. But extremely professional and in, in your face. I mean, again, when he went back to management and he was, after I handed over this letter, and he gave his point of view about it, he gave his point of view in such a relaxed, easy way that I actually doubted myself after all these really? weeks of, you know, being very upset. He's such a convincing guy that I, to the point that I'm like, no, seriously, this guy, maybe he, maybe I misunderstood him. Maybe he was... Maybe he's just a young guy. Maybe I blew this out of proportion. I'm here just to make money and go home. I, I don't care if I make friends or not in there. You know, it would be nice to have friends in a new environment, at least not enemies. Right, right. You know, I want to make friends, just not have any enemies. Okay. Um, if we had any more questions for you, is it okay if we called you and, sure. and talked? Okay. Um, do you have anything, any questions you want to ask me? No. Okay. Um, has everything you just told me been completely truthful? Yes. Okay, the time is approximately 9.36, and that concludes this interview.